All right. Welcome, welcome, folks. I'll be getting this stage set up in just a moment. If you don't mind, just give me just a moment. I got to walk down a nice large set of steps. And I know that I've told you guys, always be careful when you're walking down the steps on Clubhouse. So I have to follow my own advice. And uh, meanwhile, I'm going to be setting the stage. We're going to have my co-host Diamond Diva come in tonight. We've got a lot of special co-hosts tonight, folks. So just to give you some heads up, you guys already know that I only have moderator badges only for people who are actually doing the hard work. All, all the green badge stuff is really for the administrative stuff. Everybody on the on the stage is a gold badge mod squad. So we're going to have a few people on here because of to make this room work. But please don't mind the green badge. It means nothing. We're all we're all equal in this room. So I'm going to be setting the stage up in just a moment. I'm going to move everybody up. So thank you, folks, for being here. Okay, and I'll and I'll be right back. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we got. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be inviting you guys up. Diamonds uh, coming in the room pretty soon. She's my co-host. We got uh, actually we got another special co-host because he's a good friend of um, Ryan Blair, uh, Mike Mike Alden. He should be joining us in a bit as well. And then we have Ryan Blair's uh, top um, uh, executive. She's going to be here as well. You guys probably know her on Clubhouse, Jackie. So. She was in the um, she was she was in the uh, actual profile for the for the room itself. So while I get this set up, folks, because it takes a lot to get this set up, we got No here. No, No is always my um, trusted moderator. She does the late show after Diamond. Welcome, No. No, if you want to introduce yourself, and I want to be inviting people up to the stage. Sure. Hi, everyone. It's so great to be here with you. I always so look forward to Friday nights and spending time in this incredible room with Dr. Finance. Uh, my name is Noah Crane. I'm the author of the book, The Grass is Green is Where I Am, which talks about no comparison, no competition, and no scarcity, living in our own love and light and sharing our unique gifts with the world. And I'm all about helping pe uh, people uh, manifest a life that they love uh, through gratitude, through love and through growing and transforming. And I'm launching my 3G Effect jewelry um, this year. So I'm very excited to spread the love and light in the world and to help others uh, manifest a the life they love. And I'm grateful to be here with you, Dr. Finance and everyone. I love everybody that's in this room. So welcome everyone. Wow, thank you, No, appreciate that. Appreciate you being here, appreciate your support. So folks, we're just transitioning. We had a little room earlier, was playing the podcast interview. Yesterday with Ryan Blair, what an incredible, incredible interview. Over two hours. Ryan is just such an amazing person. He's a number one New York Times bestseller and uh, also an extremely successful entrepreneur with an incredible story that's hard to top. Came from nothing in the gangs of LA and then wound up uh, eventually having over a billion dollars, I think billions in sales. We're going to find out a little bit more tonight. I also want to introduce Jackie. Jackie Minsky is one of his executives. So, Jackie. How are you? Welcome to the stage. And uh, yeah, if you, if you want to give us a little little intro um, about yourself and and tell us about your maybe your affiliation with Ryan as well. Welcome, Thank Jackie. you so much. Thank you so much for having me. We're excited. Ryan will be here at thirty minutes, like so soon. I'm Jackie Minsky. I'm Ryan's publicist. Um, I'm in PR, marketing, and communications. I also have my own podcast, um, so you know I'm familiar with this industry. And thank you for having Ryan on your show. And I'm just excited to be here. Thank you. Appreciate that, Jackie. All right. So, so folks, we're going to have a few moderators here tonight. Just, just to let you know, I, I never really do the moderating thing, only for the speaker themselves and occasionally a, um, you know, a co-host. Of course, my permanent co-host, I have Diamond Diva as well. Um, but just to let you know, if, if any moderators are, are up to the stage, remember, don't do not invite anyone. Just ask me first. I'm the only one who does the inviting. So you guys, don't, you don't have to worry about it. Any, everybody on stage has a gold badge. Gold, they're all the gold badge mod squad folks. So definitely give everybody on stage a follow. They've been hand selected. We're going to have an incredible room, but I want you to get to know these gold badge mod squads. So with that said, um, let's start at the top here. we got Tracy here. Tracy, you want to give a 30 second intro? How are you, Tracy? Hey, Dr. Finance. Hi, everyone. Hi, Noah. Hi, Jackie. I'm Tracy from the East Coast of Australia. Um, I am in the spirituality space. Uh, I help entrepreneurs with their um, intuitive intelligence, tapping into it and um, 
really using it as rocket fuel for their for their business and their in their endeavors. Um, and I'm always excited to be here. I've just been listening to the Entrepreneur Club, Dr. Finance. You saw me there and um, listening to Ryan's interview on your podcast. And I never knew who Ryan was until now. And oh my God, what a guy. Like, I, I think I might be a little bit obsessed. So I'm going to go and get his books and have a read because he just seems really down to earth. And as always, Dr. Finance, you bring the magic on a Saturday morning here in Australia. It's 10.25 in the morning. So thanks for having me, Dr. Finance. Awesome. Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate you being here. All right, folks. So we're in the finance club. Definitely give the finance club a follow. Hit that greenhouse at the top and click follow how to be a rock star entrepreneur. Now, let me tell you why I titled it this way, because one of uh, Ryan Blair's books it has the title rock star in it, rock bottom to rock star. And it's true. You'll see. You'll see. You'll get to know Ryan. He's an incredible guy. I'm going to post the link to the, um, the podcast interview at the top of the stage in just a bit. Folks who were in the other room, um, we cut off halfway. So if you want to finish the rest of the interview, uh, you can click that link. But thank you, folks. All right. Thank you, Tracy. Welcome again. And Fred, welcome, Fred. How are you, sir? Hello, Dr. Finance. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Fred. You Hello, okay, everyone. Fred. Yeah. yeah. My name is Fred Moskowitz. I'm known as the alternative investment expert. And I'm the author of The Little Green Book of Node Investing. And in case you're wondering what that might be, what is node investing? It's, it's a form of real estate investing, but you're investing, instead of buying the property, you're investing in the debt on that property, buying the note and the mortgage. And so when you do that, you are able to step into the shoes of the bank and you become the one receiving the monthly payments instead of the one making them. And uh, it, it's, it's something that a lot of people are familiar with from the perspective of being the borrower on a note, but individual investors can also own them as, as an investment. And uh, it's, it's a great strategy. I love that. And I love teaching folks about uh, the benefits of alternative investments of all kinds, which generate in, uh, cash flow and income for you. So this way you, you own an investment and you get paid while you wait. And it's a great strategy. It's a great strategy. I, I love talking about that. So pleased to be here tonight, Dr. Finance. You always bring top-notch talent and speakers to the room every Friday. And uh, really looking forward to getting into the discussion tonight. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate that. Welcome to the stage. Incredible. I didn't know about that, that uh, investment that you're doing and this new business. This is really cool. So thank you. Thank you, folks. Definitely give Fred a follow, everyone, and uh, follow uh, the, the, everyone else on stage as well. we got the Gold Badge Mod Squad. I want to welcome my other co-host here, Diamond Diva. Welcome, Diamond. How are you? She's my main co-host, folks. And by the way, um, she also has a room on Wednesday, which I support. So if you like what you see on Friday, we got the biggest entrepreneur rooms, the most popular, the oldest on Clubhouse, been going almost a year in about two, two or three months. Uh, Diamond has the Wednesday night room. So you got two options every week. You can get, you can go to the Wednesday night room. Diamond does the mindset stuff where you can come here. We can learn about, uh, entrepreneur. We hit it from a different angle. So really you get a full range of education between the two rooms. Welcome Diamond. How are you? This is Diamond, and I'm doing amazing, Dr. Finance. And, you know, I just have to say this first. Thank you so much for all of your support um, on the Wednesday night rooms. And for giving me the opportunity to support you on Fridays. Um, I have to echo Fred's sentiments. I mean, this truly is the best room on Fridays. Every single week, we have the best guests, the best speakers, and just the best vibrations in this room always positive energy always something useful we can use in our lives and i'm just really excited to uh, have ryan come in today and give us the gems on how to be a rock star entrepreneur but before i do my introduction i really want to highlight some great things that dr finance has going on as well guys if you haven't clicked on that greenhouse at the top yet make sure you join the finance club it's growing 
week by week. And don't forget to invite some members as well that you think can benefit from being in that space. And I will tell you that Dr. Finance has been working tirelessly day and night to continue to bring you nothing but the best. So not gonna spoil who's coming, but just know we got some big names that are gonna be dropping those gems. So take the time to join that club so you're here and you don't miss a minute. And while you're at it, tap in with Dr. Finance on his profile here and give him a follow. You wanna ring that bell and set it to always. Cause if you notice we're opening multiple rooms and so you wanna be at all the rooms that he opens. And the best way is to click that greenhouse and give him a follow and make sure you set his bell to always so you can always be notified when he opens up the space. But you don't wanna stop there. You also wanna connect with Dr. Finance on his Instagram and his Twitter. Both are linked on his bio here on Clubhouse. And there's two other places that you have to tap in today. One of which is linked at the top the Dr. Finance Live podcast. And for those of you who are in that pre-room earlier today, you got to hear some of the podcasts uh, with Ryan Blair, which I think was absolutely incredible. So if you did not get to be in that room or you just want to see the video and the audio at the same time, then this is going to be a great opportunity. So if you click on that link, you will be tapped in to Dr. Finance's YouTube channel. And I have to say, he has over six thousand oh excuse me million let me get this right million views on his podcast i mean it's incredible and it's probably higher than that i mean i need to get the updated stats right dr finance because the growth has been exponential and not only does he have that but he has his podcast link there as well so when you subscribe make sure you're subscribing not just to the youtube channel but also to his podcast everywhere that his podcast is available so that you can support all the great things that he is doing. So just want to give you those flowers. Um, also connect with him on his Facebook. He has over half a million there. Um, last time I checked, I think it was like 600,000. I mean, it's just incredible. And you can see why, because of all the value that he brings here today. So I just want to give you all of that love and, and those flowers here for those who may not know all the great things um, that Dr. Finance has going on. And those are just some great ways that you can tap in and be a part of his world. And for those of you who don't know me, I am Diamond Diva, founder and CEO of Diamond Diva Entertainment and the Abundance Mastermind. Mindset is my jam. I'm a mindset coach with background and expert coach, NLP and timeline therapy. And I absolutely love to empower entrepreneurs to develop a success mindset in order to achieve their goals. And being in this room, supporting this space is very much in alignment with my why, with my vision and my mission. And I'm just really grateful um, to support this space because one of the things you're going to find, and I've seen this across the board, every single success story we've heard in this room is because of their mindset. At some point in their lives, they made a decision to move forward despite the odds no matter what they ran into along the way and i'm telling you mindset truly is the foundation for all the things that you want to achieve in your life and so just grateful to be here if anyone wants to connect with me more about mindset or the other things i do read my bio i have a load of information there about all those great things and if you head to my instagram and dm the word mindset I also has some free resources i can share with you as well and the last thing i'm going to say is this for now because i will be participating tonight in the room this is my motto in life and i really want you all to you know take this and maybe even apply it to yours as well i know there's a lot of people going through some incredible things particularly in the last couple of years and this motto this mantra if you will has been something that's really helped me to have the right mindset and keep on going and that is if you believe it, if you take massive action, you can achieve it. Thank you so much, Dr. Finance. This is Diamond, and I'm complete. Over to you. Wow, thank you so much, Diamond. Appreciate that. And and, and yes, so normally, uh, you know, so busy today, Diamond. Normally, we chat for like an hour on Fridays and catch up and stuff. We we didn't even get that meeting today. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. I know you were listening to the podcast earlier. Ryan is just unbelievable, and you know, thank you for the for the awesome uh, awesome spill as well. I, I I have yeah, I have about I just reached over eight hundred thousand. I know you were asking me for the numbers, eight hundred thousand yes! followers on on, on uh, not Clubhouse, yeah, uh, Facebook, Facebook, yeah. So 
getting there. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. And, you know, I have to say it because I know Dr. Finance is not going to share those numbers, but it just really speaks volumes to the impact that you are making, Dr. Finance. So anytime you can send me those updated stats, I'm going to share them because it really is remarkable the work you're doing. So congratulations. That's incredible. Thank you, Diamond. And folks, you, you know, I don't, I don't, I, of course I'm a numbers guy, but the reality is I like to focus on regular people. I don't, I don't care. Like if you have two followers, um, you, some of you on stage have seen me. I followed you when you had two followers, brought you up to the stage. I, I don't, I don't pay too much attention to that, but in this business, it's, it is necessary for some reason. So um, with that said, thank you, Diamond. I want to introduce everyone, folks. We got Ryan Blair come tonight. We're going to have a great stage. And I want to make sure we get everyone to ask uh, questions on stage because you're going to love this guy. He's incredible. Number one New York Times bestseller, among so many other things, billions in sales and in, 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 uh, businesses and just an incredible guy. At 44 years old, he accomplished all those things coming from zero, gang life. So wait till, wait till you uh, get, get to hear about him. Well, let's introduce a few more people. We were at Roland. Before we get to, before we get to Roland, folks, um, just remember to hit that plus sign, ping in all your friends. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on with Clubhouse. People can't find the calendars these days. Uh, what I found is to hit the always button, as Diamond was saying, for myself or Diamond, because she's my main co-host here, and you will always be able to get into these rooms, okay? So hit the hit the always button on the follow, and that'll fix the calendar spot. And also, if you hit the bell next to every room, it'll show up the top of your calendar at the top, so you'll make sure you get in there. Roland, how are you, sir? Welcome to the stage. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Finance. Uh, thank you so much for having me up on stage. It's such a great room. I always love this one on Fridays. And uh, today's topic, man, Ryan's such a, an amazing guy and uh, his story is so inspiring. So I'm so happy to be here and uh, really looking forward to what's gonna happen here in this room. Uh, I'm Roland. I'm in Texas. I'm in funding and uh, I work with real estate investors. So uh, if you want to check me out, I have my 10K card, Roland10K.com. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. Welcome to the stage. Appreciate that. Glad to have you here. Roland was, was sitting like a trooper on the last interview. It was a listen only room, but Roland was there. Listen, it was a great conversation. Sometimes I like to be in those listen only rooms. So thank you, Roland, for your support. Folks, just wanted, yes, Diamond was hinting, I forgot to say. So we do got some amazing, amazing other superstars coming out. I'll, I'll just give you a sample. I don't want to run through the whole thing, but, you know, like next week, we, we actually did, I did an audible. We got Alex Stern showing up next week. Okay, Alex Stern's going to do next Friday. Um, it was going to be Glenn Lundy. We, we might move Glenn Lundy to another week. Glenn is awesome. He's going to be on the podcast next Thursday. So I want to give it a little more, more time and figure out a better schedule for that. But we got Alex Stern coming next Friday. He's He was the uh, co-founder of constant contact they wound up selling it for a billion dollars so uh yeah i mean just just an amazing guy he's coming next next friday we have marie diamond on the way we got john david Mann, my friend who's got five-time new york times bestseller he wrote co-wrote the book called the go-giver and his new book out is called the go-giver marriage he did it with his wife folks so i know go-giver changed a lot of your lives so um whoever read read that book this is like the fifth or sixth book so and then um, one other one. So we got Kevin Harrington's coming on my podcast in March, and he might stop by for the clubhouse that night. Um, we, uh, Dan Clark may, may be on. I'm working on that, and um, you know, a few few other ones. But off the top of my head, they're they're the main ones. And of course, oh, Rex Sykes is coming at the end of uh, February. Rex Sykes was one of the original hypnotherapist entrepreneurs out there. So a lot of really cool stuff in the background. The top motivational speakers in the world. Oh, Les Brown's daughter might be on as well. Um, Dr. Otis. So really cool stuff in the works, folks. And a lot of things that I can't tell you right now because they're just really big and I have to confirm it first. So once I get that underway, I'll, I'll let you know. Well, let's let's learn about our next guest as well. We got Katya here. W welcome, Katya. How are you? Hi, Dr. Finance. Thank you. I'm great. Here is half past midnight, but Tracy, I think, from Australia is beating me. <laughs> so, but I wouldn't just, I, I just wanted to be here. I will sleep some other time. And I want to thank you. You lead so inspirational rooms. And the pre-show that we've been before, I was surprised that, um, ah, that Ryan is actually 
uh, a son of Croatian immigrants. Well, I'm Croatian too, living in Italy, right, Europe. So I'm so excited to hear the story because everyone, every guest that you bring are so valuable and so inspirational. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate that. Welcome to the stage. I didn't know that either. So maybe, uh, maybe he can clarify that later. I, I know his grandparents were Mormons, so he had he had a spiritual upbringing that way. But I didn't know that. So yeah, we can find out about that. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate that. Welcome to the stage. And folks, before we move on to Deborah, I just want to ask a quick request, folks. If you can hit that share button at the bottom left, so they have a new system here in Clubhouse which helps build the room. It's those arrows that look like they're going in a circle. So I already hit it. You hit share, you hit share on Clubhouse. And then, you know, just put, type in a few things like, hey, come check out our cool room over here or, or whatnot. And uh, I see that, let's see, Tracy has already shared this room. Professor Agostinelli has already shared it. And Katya has, has shared it. Um, so if you guys can, can sh click that share button, folks, help us build the stage. This, th this room deserves to have several hundred people at any moment. We're definitely several thousand because the, the incredible value of Ryan Blair's wisdom is amazing across the board from you're talking about from entrepreneurship, from academia, wait till you hear how he explains his story of, of edu the educational system and uh, from gang life to how to be a billionaire, you know, like everything you could think of he covers and, and spirituality. So really cool stuff. Thank you, Kadia and Deborah. Welcome, Deborah. How are you? Hello, I am well, Mr. Rock, Dr. Rockstar Finance. I want to thank you. You do this for us. I am so grateful and appreciative that every Friday night there is more than learning. This is truly an event and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. My name is Deborah and I am in the health and wellness space. I get you to your 10x body and mind and I absolutely love it because everybody deserves to be a rock star and I want to bring the rock star out in everyone I meet. Thank you Dr. Finance. I am so excited for tonight. Thank you Deborah. Appreciate you always being here and supporting. Always appreciate you. Thank you. Welcome again. All right. So we got some amazing people been, been coming into the room. Um, just real quick, we got D, we got Professor T, we got Mac Type, we got Darlene Featree, Mary Kim, we got Curtis, the fastest running man in the world. We got Stacy here. Stacy, I'm so glad you, you you came. She's one of the top publicists. Uh, well, uh, yeah, publicists in New York. You know, marketer. She does all that great stuff, folks. And Pamela, we got John the Bomb here, incredible, one of the top also uh, finance guys here on the Clubhouse. And we got Frankie as well. Frankie is now co-author with the 13 Steps to Riches book, amazing entrepreneur as well. We got David, we got Joanne, we got Gospel, and we got Ha here as well. Welcome, Ha, how are you? Also another amazing uh, entrepreneur as well. If you read her bio, check her out. Everyone, just click the follow on the amazing gold badge mod squad we're assembling here. And folks, I already did two and a half almost hours of interviewing Ryan yesterday, and I could have went for like another two and a half, another 10 hours, really. The guy's amazing. I'd love to just hang out with him one day um, in the Hollywood Hills. Uh, it's way better than the cold Philadelphia right now. But, you know, I'm going to just ask him a few questions. I want I want you guys to, to to ask more questions. So I'm going to flip the ratio tonight. And so just stay tuned. And I want to get as many people on stage to ask him a question. And uh, so so stay tuned with that, folks. All right, let's get let's get another um, introduction. Let's say 30 seconds or less. Welcome. D, how are you, D? Hi, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Finance. Hi, Noah, Jackie, Diamond Diva. Hi, everyone. I am Dee. I am a realtor from Texas. I'm also uh, in the health and wellness space. Um, I enjoy being here every Friday, learning and growing as an entrepreneur and as a human being. I'm excited to listen to Ryan Blair, the number one New York Times bestselling author about the rock star opportunities that are available to each of us with the right mindset, it can be accomplished. I am a rock star. Woo! I'm D and I'm complete. Thank you, D. And as you're talking, you know, I did, I titled this earlier. So, and, and this is the title was based off of Ryan's book, 
how to um, uh, from rock bottom to rock star. Uh, but the more I think about it, this title, it's going to be an interesting night. Sometimes the titles direct who comes in the room. So if you really want to be a rock star entrepreneur, folks, we're going to learn it tonight. This is the, not this isn't a better person to really learn how to do that. So Ryan Blair. So all right, thank you. Appreciate that, D. Welcome to stage. We got Professor T up next. Welcome, Professor T. How are you? Hello, everybody. This is Prof T from Philly, where it's chilly and it's snowing, and I'm at a friend's house. And we are listening intently. We were on the call at quarter to five, five o'clock. Oh my goodness, we were listening to your caller. It was listening only, but Ryan Blair was phenomenal. And we are overlooking a lake that's frozen over with the snow falling. What a beautiful sight. Uh, my name is Teresa Agostinelli from the Philadelphia area. I'm a John C. Maxwell certified coach, leadership trainer. I am also a licensed clinical psychotherapist. And I am a professor at a local university here in the Philadelphia area. And Dr. Finance, thank you so much for allowing me on your stage, your prestigious stage. The guests you have, I just learned so much. I love being here. Shout out to all my Philly peeps. And Noah, beautiful Noah, always a pleasure to be in any room with you. And Diamond, so thank you for having me. My goal is to help women ditch their nine to five, become an entrepreneur like I did way back when I left the corporate world in the mental health. And instead of making billions and millions of dollars for institutions and insurance companies, I decided that I could help people on my own terms. And that's what I do. And I help others to do that 90 days or less. Thank you, Dr. Finance. Always a pleasure to be on your stage. Happy to be here. Back to you, sir. Thank you, Professor T. Awesome. Nice to have Philly people here as well. And but Folks, this is a global stage. It's, it's, it's funny when you get to see the community that we've been building over the past, let's say, nine, 10 plus months in this Friday night room. Uh, you know, you'll see that people are literally from almost every continent. We even had I thought about it the other day. We even did have people from Antarctica here. I mean, there's only like 2000 people that live in Antarctica. They're all scientists. And I think we had one or two there. Oh, and Ivan Meisner, the founder of BNI, um, he wasn't officially here, but he was here in spirit when he went to Antarctica a few months ago. So. Um, well, thank you. Appreciate that, Professor T. And we got Mac tight up next. So let's keep these um, intros about 20, 30 seconds. Ryan will be here probably about 15 minutes or so. So welcome, Mac tight. How are you? Hey, doing wonderful. Thanks again, Dr. Finance, for allowing me to speak on the stage. Me, myself, Mac J, CEO of Mac Tight Entertainment, as well as Mac Tight Radio, host of the Ready to Learn show and podcast. Just looking forward to another fantastic Friday night. Dr. Finance. Um, looking forward to learning and um, enjoying the conversation and discussion. Thanks for having me again. Thanks, Mac Type. Appreciate that. Folks, I'm getting some, and welcome to the stage, Mac Type. Appreciate you being here. Get some DMs in the background. Uh, some are pinging and some are having issues with pinging. Um, some have tapped out with pinging. So um, the other option is to do the share button, which is at the bottom where the two arrows are. So if you hit that, um, I can see right now that Fred has actually shared the room with, with us. Thank you, Fred. Noah, appreciate that. And Stacy has actually shared as well. Thank you, Stacy. Deborah, we got Mary. Kim Farkas has shared. Thank you. And Roland and Diamond, Darlene and David. Thank you, guys. And Pamela, Frankie, awesome. Curtis Mitchell shared the room. Dee Medrano, Mac Tite has shared the room. Tracy, Professor T, and um, Katja. So, folks, if you could hit that share button at the bottom, and that'll help build the stage up. For us when ryan gets here thank you appreciate that and also hit follow everybody on stage and hit that ping button as well all right so we got darlene up next welcome darlene how are you hello hello that is such an awesome 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 room with so many incredible speakers that show up here so i've made it a point to be here on friday nights too it's darlene from florida bipolar state and be sure to follow all these rock stars. Thank you for having me up. Back to you, Dr. Fiance. Thank you, darling. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stage. All right. We got Fitri up next. So, Fitri, welcome. How's Ireland treating you? Uh, not too good. <laughs> Winter in here now. So, <laughs> cold and windy. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Finance. Always looking forward to this room. Um, uh, about me a little bit is I have a startup that building a platform for people that want to in have investment in the precious metal 
in the form of jewelry and accessories. So that's me. I building that from in Dublin, Ireland. Thank you so much, Doctor Doctor Finance. Thank you, Fiji. Welcome to the stage. Yeah, folks. I think um, what's also going on. We have a northeastern. They call it on the east coast of the United States, and I believe uh, the west coast of Europe as well. They uh, basically the way the clouds are working. There's going to be a huge snowstorm coming today and tomorrow. So. Let's let's stay home, get some hot chocolate, warm up, and and listen to the stage. Or right? at least we got clubhouse. We're all stuck inside over here. So I, you know, as Feature just said, it's cold in Ireland. They got storms over there. Well, same thing in Philly. I'm sure New York and all all those places. So great, we got clubhouse. We're all good. All right, thank you, Keith, uh, Keith Feature, and welcome to the stage. And we got Mary Kim up next. Welcome, Mary Kim. How are you? I am great. Thank you. How is everybody? I'm super excited for this room. I am Mary Kim Farkas. I am a mommy to a rock star, eight-year-old boy with Down syndrome, CEO and co-founder of the Keeksy, which is an innovative pacifier cover and the only one that covers pacifiers attached to a small stuffed animal. Also a multi-abuse champion, and I love real stories with real people. So thank you, Dr. Finance, for having this uh, room tonight. I can't wait. This is Mary Kim Farkas. Wow. Thank you, Mary Kay. Kim, appreciate you being here. And uh, yes, wait, wait till you hear an incredible story that um, that uh, Ryan Blair has as well. Mary Kay, I'm sorry. Did you say that one of your kids had uh, something something wrong with them? or? Oh, um, well, he's a child with Down syndrome. So, you know, he's a little delayed on some things, but he's he's totally a rock star. He's amazing. <laughs> oh, okay. and, um, yeah. So, no, the, re the reason I asked you, Ryan oh. uh, also had, had a, a kid with autism and he, and he beat it. So um, you're going to hear that incredible story as well. So, oh, awesome. Cannot wait. Thank yeah, you. Th thank you, Mary Kim. Welcome, welcome to the stage. All right. All right. We got my friend Stacy Ross Cohen here, one of the top uh, publicists in New York. Welcome. How are you? Stacey? I am great. I am great. Thank you, Dr. Finance. And thank you for always bringing so much value. It's um, I'm so looking forward to t tonight's conversation. And, you know, thank you for your great plug. Um, Stacy Ross Cohen, founder, CEO of a full service PR marketing firm in, in New York. And, um, and uh, just also an update for you, Dr. Finance, that um, I have uh, my personal, my book on personal branding is going to be out this year in the fall. So I'm um, very excited. And, and I, I actually, I owe it to you because you definitely activated uh, me to just continue writing. So thank you for that inspiration and uh, back to you, Dr. Finance. Wow, thank you, Stacy. First of all, congratulations. Okay, folks, Stacy Ross Cohen came to me a few months ago. We became good friends. We met up in New York at there was a big uh, we had a mastermind, and we started talking. And she told me about the book, and she wanted some information about how to write a book. And next thing you know, she's in this Thirteen Steps to Riches book. But we have a mutual friend for many years, and so she was kind of dragging her feet. I'm like, Stacy, you just got to do it. The the solution to your problem is just right. And once she started writing for this, this 13 Steps to Riches book, it ignited the passion to her to finally realize her dream of finishing her book. So this is huge, folks. Definitely give Stacy a follow and check out that book. And 100 percent. The, the full manuscript is due March 15th. So <laughs> and I I have faith in you. You're going to do it. That's that's incredible. And you're saying it was the writing, right? The, the actual routine of getting the habit of writing that yes it, yes, right? yes yes That's yes awesome. and it's just, you know it's it's just again you really did um activate me and and bring the passion back to um to continue on so thank you thank you thank you stacy appreciate that welcome to the stage again and uh yeah yeah folks so we got ryan blair in the house Definitely give him a follow. And we got incredible, look at this lineup. Wow, Lindsey Brooks. Folks, I got to jump the line for a second. I had, haven't had Lindsey on the room in a, in a while. Lindsey is an incredible entrepreneur. I just want to say welcome to Lindsey because uh, I haven't seen her in a while. We used to, she was part of the longest running room, which this room originated with many, many months ago. Welcome, Lindsey. How are you? You want to tell us a little about yourself? And, and glad to see you here. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. I just figured I'd pop in, say hi. Somebody pinged me. I think it was Nune pinged me. 
and maybe you did too. I don't know. But uh, yeah, good to see you. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm getting a little bit of the red bar of death right now. But you sound great. Um, You're good. Okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just nice to see familiar faces and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm Lindsay Brooks. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I'd love just kind of hearing about entrepreneurs and seeing what I can do to help, of course. That's why I love Clubhouse. It's a still an awesome forum for meeting amazing people and, you know, coming up with ideas and solving problems. Um, that's a lot of what I like about it. Um, but as far as me, um, mainly I look for products, product companies that are scaling. Um, and I work with them to, to help them scale more. To, I purchase companies. I work, you know, with consumer products. Uh, I launched a lot of like infomercials. You might know me from like ShamWow, Slapchop, Sticky, Smooth Away, many of the big ones that you have seen, you know, in Walmart and on TV late at night, stuff like that. But mostly we sell now in the e-commerce space. Uh, we do TikTok, we do Facebook, and we sell to 120 countries, 80,000 stores worldwide. And um, I'm always looking for, you know, new concepts and love to love to give value. I have a accelerator too uh, for startups. And yeah, you can... Uh, you know, you can follow me here on Clubhouse and I have an Instagram too. I just was getting over COVID. Like, I feel like everybody is though. So I don't even want to say it, but <laughs> I still feel like I'm trying to figure out who I am. It really kicked my ass. I don't know if anybody else had that happen, but uh, glad to be okay now. So that's that. Well, thank you, Lindsay. Appreciate it. And, and glad to have you here. So Lindsay, we're, we're running these rooms um, about two and a half months ago. I started opening up my own clubs. And, uh, you know, we got Diamond Divas help me out every Friday night and we have a nice crew. And so basically a lot of the, the older community um, from the, the previous clubs have basically transitioned here on Friday night. So any Friday night you want to come in here, the main guest speaker, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we usually run the room from like 6 to 12 at night Eastern time. So definitely always invited. And we got an incredible person that, Lindsay, I think you're going to be uh, you're going to really like Ryan Blair. He's the number one New York Times bestselling author, and he, he, he went from nothing to billions in sales. So really cool. Welcome again, Lindsay. Appreciate you being here. And uh, we're going to introduce a few more people, and then we're going to try to get everybody introduced on stage. We've got a gold badge mod squad. Let's um, tweak it down to maybe 20 seconds each person. I want to welcome. we got uh, Pamela up next, and then Ryan Blair is coming pretty soon. So, folks, help us hit that share button at the bottom and the ping button as well. And uh, also follow everybody on stage. So, so welcome, Pamela. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Dr. Finance. Thank you so much for having me up. Always great room and great guest on here. So grateful for you. Everything real estate, that's me. Uh, I'm a real estate agent, do video marketing for real estate agent. Just launched my real estate course. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I've been a rock star entrepreneur since 2000. So it's in my blood. And again, thank you so much for having me up. I love you guys. And I pass the mic. All right. Thank you so much. Sorry, I got, I got stuck in pause right there. But welcome again, Pamela. Always a pleasure having you here. Welcome to the stage. And then we got John the Bomb up next. Welcome, John. How are you, sir? You want to give us a quick intro? Oh, hey, hey. I was in the back channel. Dr. Finance, as always, what a great room uh yeah look Lindsay. when you bring Lindsay into the room then then you know that uh you're attracting the big big stars so i love it i love it you got a lot of great people on stage a lot of great friends that we've created over the months uh look i'm in the business capital uh, so i help conventional uh sba practice finance and equipment finance and then i take those same ceos and founders and help them retire better so from business capital to personal finance, great to be in the room. Excited to hear Ryan Blair and uh, you know learn a little bit more. Thanks so much, Doctor Finance. Thanks, John. Appreciate that, folks. Give uh, John the bomb a follow. So, John, yeah, you're really gonna like Ryan. Ryan, uh, he's, he's about 44 years old and has already accomplished so much. I mean, just an incredible guy. I mean, at 24 years old, he already sold, had his first major sale of his business. He wound up selling one of his other major, one of his biggest uh, businesses. He wound up selling for almost 800 million so you're going to hear this incredible story and he, he applied the same like determination to books he actually became the number one new york times bestseller um so thanks john welcome to the stage we got frankie up next welcome frankie how are you hey dr finance i'm doing well hi everyone uh, my name is frankie and i volunteer teaching financial literacy uh, primarily at the high school level 
Uh, I've been able to meet Dr. Finance and Fred and some really other, some really great people on the stage here through our contributions to a best-selling book series that has a modern take on Napoleon Hill's 13 Steps to Riches. So thank you, everyone. I look forward to learning from you all. Wow, thank you, Frankie. Appreciate that. And yes, Frankie is a co-author in the 13 Steps to Riches book. We have all the top celebrities in there from um, my mentor, Sharon Lecter, all the way to uh, Kevin Harrington. He has the last episode or the last book in the series of 13. He's the uh, sh original shark from Shark Tank. So welcome again, Frank. And we got Davey up, David up next. Welcome, David. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Uh, I appreciate you bringing me up, Dr. Finance. And I was in the room earlier listening to Ryan's story. And... It's amazing. I didn't know until I was listening to that podcast how similar his story and mine is. Um, I went through a lot of the same thing, started running the streets when I was 12, started my first company at 18, and uh, haven't looked back since. But um, I'm definitely going to have to listen to the rest of that podcast, and I, I can't wait to hear what he's got to say. Wow. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, David. And I appreciate you st sticking through that interview as well. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the full interview is all the way at the top. So we've probably got about another hour left. I would start from the beginning. He really went into his story in depth from the beginning, from childhood. I mean, it's just some crazy stuff. And he's got this documentary we're going to talk about that, that I, I watched the whole thing. It was just just incredible. So thank you, David. Welcome to stage. And folks, let's, let's figure out 20 seconds for the intros because Ryan is coming pretty soon. I just want to get everybody to say hi on stage. We got Joanne up next. Welcome, Joanne. You want to say hi? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm super excited. I'm in the real estate space and just looking to grow. not another person i'm a different person after every friday just because of dr finance just because of everything he puts together everyone knows everyone kind of knows but i'm just super excited i'm super excited to hear okay you th more. thank you thank you joanne appreciate that you're kind of in the matrix sounds like a, a rap remix at the moment but i i, I do want to welcome you to the stage <laughs> welcome joanne how are you thank you for being here um all right so we, we got ryan here um Okay, so folks, what I'm going to do is I just want to get everyone to come off the mic and just say hi real quick. So, and then we're going to start with Ryan because Ryan is very punctual. So, um, I do want to do want to welcome. We got an incredible rock star gold badge mod squad here. So, I do want to at least get everyone to come in and say hello. So, if you can just come off and just say hi real quick. Let's see, we were at Gospel. So, so Gospel, I'm just going to call your name. Just say, just say hi, and we'll, we'll go from there. And folks, I want to, you know, have a lot of time for you guys to ask questions. So that's why let, let's let's stick to a good schedule. Welcome, Gospel. How are you? Want to say hi? If I, if I call your name twice, no worries, folks. I'll just skip over and we'll we'll come back. Nune, welcome, Nune. Welcome, Ryan. I yield my my time. All right, yeah. So that's that's a good way to do it. Just say welcome, Ryan. All right, Cass. Welcome, Cass. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing great. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Tracy. Welcome, Tracy. How are you? Tracy with an I. <laughs> yeah, Tracy with an I. Hi. Hi, Dr. Finance. Hi, Ryan. Looking forward to this. Thank you. All right. Welcome, Tracy. Folks, if you ever want flowers, you're in Toronto. She's got the best flower shop in Toronto. Welcome, Tracy. We got Roland up next. Welcome, Roland. Hi, Dr. Anthony. Hi, Hi Roland. Welcome, sir. And of course, Lindsay Brooks, you know, she's in commercial queen here. Welcome again, Lindsay. And then we got Phil. Phil's from the awesome island of, uh, I believe, Bali. And incredible. Koh Samui. Phil. Phil on the, good morning. Phil on the beach in Koh Samui in Thailand. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> I'm living vicariously through you, Phil. That, that's incredible. We're in snowstorm Philadelphia. <laughs> well, welcome, Phil. All right. Welcome, Michelle. How are you, Michelle? I'm going to say welcome to Ryan. Hey, yeah. Happy Friday, everyone. Really excited to be here and hear the rest of your story, Ryan. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. And then uh, we got Jennifer after. And then we're going to introduce Ryan in just a little bit, folks. Just want to get a hello from everyone on stage. We've got our assembling our rock star gold badge mod squad. Jennifer, you want to say hi? And So just go in order. Go ahead, Jennifer. 
Hi, thank you so much. This is Jennifer. I'm so excited to hear you tonight, uh, Ryan. Welcome to Clubhouse. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, Dan. Welcome, Dan. How are you? Hey, buddy. Um, nice to meet you, Ryan. I just ate White Castle, so I'm going to be silent for the next 68 hours. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank Might you, Dan. Might be a little welcome. gassy, too. <laughs> All right, welcome, Dan. All right, we got Mirza here. He's another successful entrepreneur. Welcome, Mirza. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I never knew Ryan has a book. You know, I'm going to buy it uh, from uh, New York City from the middle of storm. And uh, Dr. Finance, thanks for pinging in and welcoming as always. Look forward to that. Can't wait to have your book in my hand. You know, I look forward to the noodles and nuggets and meat and potatoes because I'm a tech entrepreneur myself. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Merz. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to learn all about Ryan's books. He's got incredible two books today we're going to talk about. And then we got uh, John the Bomb. Again, we welcome John. And then Sir Jude. Welcome, Sir Jude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. And welcome, Ryan. Good to be here once again. All right. Welcome, Sir Jude. We got Roland, Sergio, and Rex. So good, Roland. Thank you, Dr. Anthony. Over to Sergio. Awesome. Welcome, Serge. Sergio, my uh, good friend, Toronto director. Welcome, Sergio. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Dr. Finance. Honored to be here and so excited to hear uh, Ryan's story. Thanks always for the space. Thanks, Sergio. Appreciate that. All right. Welcome. And we got my other good friend, Rex Sykes here. He's one of the top hypnotherapists. The original came, went back as far as the 70s, folks. One of the first guys to do it. He's coming on at the end of this month, uh, February. So welcome, Rex. How are you, sir? I'm fantastic. It's great to be here with you and Ryan and, and so many other good friends and people. I'm looking forward to the evening and um, much love and peace and blessings to all. All right. Thank you, Rex. All right. One, one more introduction I'd like to do, and then we're going to start with Ryan. OK, so we got Mike Alden over here. Mike's a good friend, mutual friend of uh, myself and uh, Ryan as well. So welcome, Mike. How are you, sir? Thanks for joining us. And if you want to also add any, uh, you know, warm introduction for Ryan as well. You're more than welcome to. Well, you know, I I'm driving right now. I'm on the highway. I'm literally pulling over because I just, you know, my reception gets a little spotty as I'm heading home. But I just want to thank you for, for inviting me and, and being here. And, you know, to be around Ryan, which I have uh, in the past, and I've, you know, become good friends with Ryan. He is just truly, uh, at his very core, just an amazing human being. His, his skills as it relates to his entrepreneurship are also amazing, but he's just a great human being. And I've learned so much uh, from him and I continue to learn from him. So I'm just happy to be here. I am, I'm, my, my reception's a little bit spotty here and there, but I'm going to be here listening and thanks for doing this. And Ryan, as always, brother, I know you're going to bring, bring it. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate that. All right, folks, you're in the Finance Club, folks. Everyone give the Finance uh, Club a follow by hitting that greenhouse at the top. We're going to do a quick reset in the room, then we're going to introduce our superstar today. So hit that uh, greenhouse and hit follow. You want to hit the bell so you're always in these rooms. Every Friday night, we've been doing it for about eight, nine months now. This room was the beginning, was the birth, came from the birth of the longest-running room on Clubhouse, which impacted over millions of people. It happened one day, and I believe Ryan was probably there that, that first night where we had 12 people there, turned it into 500 people, and they decided to go for the longest running room. It's been going ever since. This is the same basic community that stemmed from that. So the title of this room is How to Be a Rockstar Entrepreneur. We got Ryan Blair here. here. <laughs> Ryan Blair here. He's a number one New York Times bestselling author and an incredible guy. I mean, he, he came from nothing pretty much, and he went and became a highly successful entrepreneur with billions in sales. Um, and on top of that, he's also a, a very, very big with spiritual. I found out he's got a lot, a lot of things going on with spirituality and mentoring people. So we're going to learn about Ryan today. Um, hit that plus sign at the bottom, pinging all your friends and folks, if you ran out of pings, make sure you share the room. Okay. So you do that by hitting the, the share button at the bottom. I see right now that we got the last ones that started sharing was Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing the room and Jennifer and Joanna shared. Nune is shared, Rachel is shared. Come on, folks, hit that share button. We got one of the top stars here on Clubhouse, Fred Moskowitz and Noah and Stacey, et cetera. So, folks, hit that share button, hit that ping button, and follow everyone on stage. We got the Gold Badge Mod Squad. They're going to be asking questions. So we're going to start with – I just want to ask Ryan a couple simple questions first, but I want to save most of this time for all you guys for your questions. So before we go any further, if everyone can come off the microphone and give Ryan a, a round – 
of applause. A warm round of applause. Welcome, Brian. Woo! Yay! Welcome. Woo! Thank you. I'm blushing. <laughs> Welcome, Ryan. How are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you. And everyone, thank you for the warm welcome. It's an honor to be among such esteemed colleagues on this stage here. So it's a pleasure. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate you being here. Ryan, before we get started, um, typical of uh, the stage, what I, what I usually do is I, I ask a few questions, depending on the nature of it. Sometimes I ask a little more than a few, but today I'm only going to ask maybe two or three because I really do want a lot of the the gold badge mod squad on stage to ask questions folks if you want to hear the interview i pinned the link to the top it's two and a half hours i asked ryan plenty of questions so i'm going to save today for you guys but if you want to watch the full interview i mean ryan really goes into the story and i appreciate him for holding no bars there i mean he really wanted to educate you guys on a story to empower everyone so check it out um ryan can you give a quick 30 second uh snapshot little profile and then we'll, we'll get into your story yeah, well, I'm an entrepreneur and an author uh, and a father. Probably the most important thing that I can share with you is I have a 12-year-old boy that's it's my pride and joy. I love uh, being a father, and I fashion myself as a father in everything I do, whether it be the companies I lead or invest in and so forth. So that's my number one priority. And I have a startup that I'm building right now with 13 team members and growing, and it's a humbling experience to be building a startup again. I've built many startups throughout my career the most uh, successful of which I built into a 600 plus million dollar a year company that generated 100 million a year in profits. And I ended up exiting that business in a 700 plus million dollar transaction. I've been a venture capitalist, a uh, small one. I had a $20 million private fund that I invested in some notable startups in and also had some notable uh, failed investments as well. So I've had some experience on both sides of the boardroom table and that's pretty much about it. I've been an entrepreneur for 25 years. And most important thing I'll share with you is, you know, we all talk about nine figure this or 10 figure that, you know, I, I really look at it as I've had about $2 billion in cash in my hands that I've been able to experiment with throughout my journey as an entrepreneur. And through those experiments, I've gained some key insights that I'm happy to share with you here tonight. Thank you. Appreciate that, Ryan. All right, Ryan, so we're not going to get in-depth with your story. I mean, folks, if you want to check out the full story for Ryan, I mean, his actual, I mean, starting from his childhood and all the experiences he went through, uh, definitely I'll, I'll put this link up. I have the link at the top. I'm only going to keep it up here for another minute because I want to put Ryan's link up for a little bit, and then I'll, I'll put this link back up later. So uh, check that out, bookmark it, subscribe, and you can hear the whole interview. So, But for now, can, can you give maybe, I don't know, uh, three to five minutes summary of your story, like the full length story, and then we'll get into some questions as well. Yeah, absolutely. And one of my, my, well, my first book was called Nothing to Lose, Everything to Gain. And the subtitle is How I Went from Gang Member to Multimillionaire. So that should explain to you some of the pieces of my story. I was raised first in the middle class. My parents got addicted to alcohol and drugs, and I lost my father at an early age, and I wound up in poverty, and I was forced into a gang after my sister's best friend was murdered in a drive-by shooting. And next thing you know, I'm a 13-year-old boy. I'm involved in a gang-related, uh, or a gang and gang-related activities uh, from 13 to about 17. Then by the grace of God, a mentor came into my life and he was a real estate entrepreneur. At first I was his apprentice. He would have me filing eviction notices and, and clearing houses and doing all kinds of his odds and ends jobs. And I learned entrepreneurship from him. And I made the decision after witnessing him in the wealthy class, I made the decision that I wanted to skip poverty and, and the middle class and go into the wealthy class. And, you know, so I, I set my sights as an entrepreneur very early at 19 years old. And this is in the mid 90s and started innovating in the technology space. I launched my first company when I was 20 years old. It was called 24-7 Tech. From there, I started a company called Sky Pipeline. Uh, which provided the first broadband wireless uh, services in the state of California. I exited that business at 25. And then from there, I went to found uh, a social network called Path Connect and emerged that with a company called Visalis and then sold that to a company called Blythe. Uh, and I've invested in a number of prominent companies as a result of you know some of my good fortune in, in the uh, entrepreneurial space. Was that two minutes or less? No, that, that, that's really good. Um... Before we get into the success part of you, so, there's, so Ryan has two like major, 
I would say themes of his life. So one, <laughs> well, maybe three or a minimum, right? So he, he came from all three, he got to experience all three major income classes. And so I think a good, good way to, to really explain your story without going in depth as we did with the interview on the podcast, Ryan, is maybe can you give maybe one or two major um, events that happened in each one of those classes? So you started out middle class, you know, and then eventually you had to start all over again. Um, and then, you know, you rose from that point. So maybe start with, with child, just give one major, major event from each, each income class you experienced and just some thoughts on that as well. Yeah. Well, in the middle class, which is where I, I spent the first 13 years of my life. And, you know, I, the major event was having the house, uh, repossessed, um, or foreclosed on, I should say, and the cars repossessed and having that, that status stripped away from me and realizing, you know, that there was a, a difference in classes in the world. I didn't quite have an understanding of that until I went from the middle uh, to, you know, abject poverty. In abject poverty, though, I learned entrepreneurship because I had no choice, at least in my perception, I had no choice but to figure out how to hustle to survive. And so I did all kinds of things to make money because my mother, you know, she was making just, just a little over minimum wage. And so we didn't have very much at all growing up. And it was a struggle for her to be able to take care of me. And she also battled, you know, her alcohol addiction at the time. And so I had to do anything I could to make money. And when you get involved in a gang, it really is just an illegal way of entrepreneurship. It's very similar to legal entrepreneurship. In fact, it's more difficult to do illegal entrepreneurship than it is to do legal entrepreneurship. So when I got into, when I was exposed, I should say, to the wealthy class, I didn't see much of a difference between poverty and the wealthy. The working wealthy class that I was exposed to, they worked really hard. They hustled. They just didn't have to worry about going to prison, getting shot, having you know a massive betrayal from you know their 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 friends and family members. They didn't have to worry about a lot of the the basic survival things that we had to worry about in gang life. And so I thought that it was just much easier to you know be an entrepreneur and to have you know, ambition and goals as an entrepreneur that were significant. And, you know, I chose to, to pursue the wealthy class immediately upon understanding it and learning it. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. So basically folks, Ryan got to experience all the different classes. He started out middle class, as he said, and then eventually at 13, Ryan, uh, what happened? If you want to tell us that event that led to the gang life. So R Ryan actually entered real gangs in Los Angeles and became a gang member. Um, you know, th this is this is an incredible story because he goes through through a metamorphosis. And I, I'd like for him to share with you because I believe there's a lot of people out there that would resonate with this story. Well, you know, my dad got so addicted to methamphetamines that he just became extremely violent. And there was a uh, an unfortunate incident that happened in our house. Our house was robbed and my dad had a gun collection and uh, someone came in and stole all the guns and my dad blamed me and I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it. And I tried to tell him I, I was innocent of this and he just, he didn't believe it. And he threatened to kill me. And I believed, you know, that he was serious about that if I didn't return the guns. So I had no choice but to flee. And I lived for a little over a year in a lice infected, rat infected, tool shed at the back of my sister's house. And she had fled my dad as well. And she lived in poverty because that's all she could afford. And basically all of my siblings fled my dad as his violence continued to elevate as a result of his addictions. And so as a result of that, you know, I, I got to basically be on my own in the eighth grade. And, you know, and, and it was a really traumatic experience you know, having your own father, you know, want to kill you. Thank you, Ryan. So, uh, Ryan, you were basically in gangs for about four years in L.A. And, um, you know, there's a lot of stories I'm sure you can share. But at, at the end of what was the turning point that basically shifted you into a level where you wanted to make yourself better? Realize well, there, that this life's not working. Yeah, there was two there was two major turning points. And one I didn't mention in our interview. So I'm glad to give some fresh content here. One was uh, I was being arraigned for a two, uh, 211, which is basically armed robbery. And I was being arraigned for that. And uh, I was facing four years. 
And I was, I didn't want to go to prison for four years as a juvenile. Had I gotten four years, I would have then been transferred to prison at which point I would have been forced to become a professional criminal because of my associations and affiliations. There's no way that I wouldn't have become a full, you know, full force criminal in the prison system, maybe never even get out. And so as a result of that, I had no choice but to write my, write the judge a letter begging for leniency. This was my only choice. I had a public defender. They weren't going to petition for leniency. They were just trying to convince me to, you know, take a deal. And so I, I decided I was going to write the judge a letter. I wasn't, you know, very skilled as a writer. I wasn't uh, trained as a writer by any means, but I happened to have 23 days in solitary confinement in juvenile detention. And all I did was write this letter, draft it. I would show it to my guards. They would help me spell check it. I'd write it again. I wrote it in pencil and I have some drafts of this letter. When I presented it to the judge, he read it. And at first he didn't want to, but something took him over. And I have to tell you, along with the writing, there was a lot of prayer involved. Something took him over and he looked at me after reading it and he said, son, you should be writing in college, not in prison. And he granted me leniency. And from that moment on, I knew that I was going to become a, a writer. It was like my soul knew it. And I made a decision that I was going to change. And I started changing when I was released. I started changing you know, certain things, who I hung out with, what I did, what I didn't do. And then shortly after that, a mentor came into my life that was introduced to me by my mother, another miracle. And he had an interest in my mother. And she said, if you want to date me, you have to go through my son. I was very protective of her. And so I built a relationship with this man. He began mentoring me. And that was uh, you know, what led me out of the neighborhood that I lived in and into a whole nother neighborhood and a whole nother way of being, you know, the, the working entrepreneurial class way of being. And it was, you know, quite a journey. And that happened in succession pretty quickly from me being released to me getting a mentor. And it had to do with a whole lot of prayer. Thank you, Ryan. Folks, please give Ryan a follow. If Ryan rarely comes and does these interviews on Clubhouse. Uh, the guy who runs an extremely successful company. If you can give him a follow. Also, I want to introduce his link up top. Thank you, Jackie. Please let me know if this is the correct link. And Jackie, you want to tell us a little about this link real quick, this altercall.com? Sure. Thank you so much. And this link is for tomorrow. We're actually hosting a free event. If you guys want to hear sound meditation, do some breath work with Ryan, we're hosting a free event tomorrow. So just click the link at the top. It is the correct one. Thank you. So if you click it and register, then we'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time and 1 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, Jackie. Appreciate that. There's the link, folks. All right. So so Ryan, continuing on with the story. So so basically, you know, you, you, you met your, your, your stepdad, he helped you to transition. You want to tell us a little bit about um, that transition and how you eventually became an entrepreneur the first time you became a, an entrepreneur? Well, one of the legal, yeah, <laughs> yeah le legally, um, well, it, you know, it wasn't transition, it wasn't easy to leave my old comfort zone. You know, you, surprisingly, he offered my mom and I an opportunity to move you know, into his home. And, and, you know, my mom said she wouldn't leave without me. So I had no choice. This was my mother's Cinderella story. And I didn't want to mess that up. So I begrudgingly agreed to move into this new neighborhood where these rich people lived that I didn't like very much. I didn't, I didn't think very highly of rich people. You know, being poor, we were taught, you know, that they were different. And, you know, I didn't have much, um, uh, you know, uh, appreciation for for the rich kids that, you know, were in, in surrounding my neighborhood. Uh, and so next thing you know, I'm on the other side of the tracks, literally living on a on an island in a gated community with, you know, boats in my backyard and, you know, a beautiful lake and a maid and, you know, marble floors and a gigantic bird atrium. And just, you know, overnight, I went from living in a little one bedroom shack with my mother to living in a beautiful mansion in a whole nother neighborhood. And so it was a total identity transition. You know, I have tattoos. I covered up my tattoos. I was afraid of people finding out, you know, where I lived. I drove this beat up 1978 Toyota Corolla station wagon. And like, literally I drive it on the island and go through this gated community. And they would just think I was the help because, you know, that's the kind of cars that the, the people who serve that community would drive, not members of it. And I got to witness my mentor, and he later became my stepfather. 
I got to witness him work. And I'll, I would never forget, you know, when, one day I asked him, like, how many homes do you own? And he said, I own 60 homes. And I thought to myself, how does a person own 60 homes? Like, it was crazy because the American dream was to own a single home. And, you know, that was something that my family did, but then we lost. So this man owned 60 homes. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? And I, I just was a student and I was a sponge. I would ask him question after question. He would feed me personal growth tapes from, you know, uh, Lead the Field by Earl Nightingale to How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie to Tony Robbins. I mean, he would feed me all of these books. And I was, you know, like a starving kid. I was so hungry to read. The education system had never inspired me. I was kicked out of high school. I was never identified as having any talents or gifts academically. And so all of a sudden, this man is feeding me a new way of living, a new way of being, being, and I just absorbed it. And I became a student. He insisted I go to college, which I did, and got uh, my uh, high school diploma in adult education. I would later uh, go on to a, a four-year, well, first I went to community college, and then I went on to a four-year. And during the four-year uh, um, stint at the university, I got a job as an engineer working at a company, and that company took off. And so I got to be a part of that company's growth, you know, from a very um, small level. I think I was like employee 15 and we grew to about 80 employees and I was very close to the CEO of that company. And so I got to witness many different functions of the company and contribute to the building of this company in many different ways. I was in the IT area of the company and then I got the idea that I would spin out a division of it, which was their data center. And I would take an expense of theirs, turn it into an asset and then market that asset to the local community, providing data center services to the community. This was in 1999, right before Y2K. So the, my business, 24-7 Tech, took off. Um, and then I uh, 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 came across a wireless innovation and decided that I was going to, to sell my interest in 24-7 to my partners that I started the company with and pursue Sky Pipeline as a CEO for the first time. I raised venture capital for that, funded that, and and exited that a little bit later. I kind of, I think I went past the part of the story that you wanted me to go to, Anthony. But that's kind of the journey in a nutshell. No, that that's okay, Ryan. That's perfect because, folks, if you want to hear the whole story, Ryan, would you agree to check out that interview from yesterday? Yeah, I've probably done a thousand interviews in my day. I've I've been blessed to have you know uh, shared my story. You know, since my book has been out over ten years, I've shared it a lot. And, you know, Anthony asked me some questions that no one else ever has. And as a person who's done a lot of interviews, those are the best. It's the best when someone does the homework like you do, Tony, ask, you know, straight up questions. You know, you, you, you weren't afraid to ask the tough questions. And we went to some places that I haven't gone to in a long time. And it was a, it was a great journey uh, to be interviewed by you, my friend. Thank you, Ryan. I'm honored because, you know, the, the people that actually interview you is incredible. I mean, folks, Ryan has appeared on Dr. Phil, CNBC, MSNBC, Bloomberg, CNN, Fox. I mean, just the list is, is endless. So I, I'm really honored to hear that, uh, Ryan. So, folks, if you want to hear the rest of the interview, it's Dr. Finest Live podcast. I'll post the link later. Um, we're going to leave the link for Ryan's um, altar call at the top right now. But I want to just get a couple more key pieces of the story before we get to the questions, because I want you to understand Ryan a little bit better. So he is a number one New York Times bestselling author. So, Ryan, you want to talk about your, your books real quick? How did how did you become a number one New York Times bestselling author? Uh, and as we called it, the Royal Flush, because his first book actually had Wall Street Journal best number one bestseller, USA Today and so on. So go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I take writing seriously. I really. My mother had just fallen down a flight of stairs as a result of alcohol, um, and she was in a coma for two years. And as I was going through the publishing process and the writing process, and a few other very emotional events had occurred. My son was diagnosed with autism, and he was only two, and so there was a lot of very traumatic signs of autism going on at that time in my life. Um, my mentor and stepfather had died tragically in my arms, and my mother had fallen down flight of stairs and was in a coma and had a severe brain trauma and injury. And it was very uh, painful to see the type of agony that she was in. 
And so I, I made a commitment that I was going to become a number one New York Times bestselling author, and I was going to do it for my mother. I was going to make her proud. I never thought that she would wake up from the coma. She was in it for two years, and she did get to wake up from the coma, and I did become a New York Times bestselling author. But the reason why I became that was because it was, it was a soul thing. I was going to do this no matter what. And I put all of my energy, all of my focus. And because I was dealing with so much trauma in my life, I had to compartmentalize and I kind of shut down everything else but achieving this goal. And by the grace of God, I was able to do that. Wow. Thank you so much, Ryan. Appreciate that. That is incredible. So, so folks, um, he's a number one New York Times bestselling author, but he's got two books, okay? So the first book was called Nothing to Lose, but the second book was called Rock Bottom the Rock Star. And Ryan, I hope you don't mind, I, I named the title of this room after you, How to Be a Rock Star Entrepreneur. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So folks, he also has a documentary. You want to tell us about the Nothing to Lose documentary that had my emotions going all over the place, folks? I, 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 first of all, I want to bet at least half of the people in this room, if you check out that, that documentary, if you don't have one tear by the end of that episode, then something's wrong. So 50% of this room, I guarantee will be, will be tearing. <laughs> That's <more>. awesome. <laughs> Good, Ryan. You know, I, well, you know, as an artist, uh, all we really want to do is invoke emotion in people and, and get people to change their state. And so, you know, Tony, when you shared with me that, you know, that you, uh, you got, you got very I didn't sentimental say I and connected I said to the doctor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you shared that, I didn't want, I didn't want to, you know, sell you out yeah. like that. But when you, when you shared that with me, made my day. It, the documentary is called Nothing to Lose the Documentary, and it's on YouTube. And I had cameras following me when my mother found that, fell down that flight of stairs. And as my book became number one, another amazing event that occurred was my company became number one in its marketplace. And you know, had a, you know, a very significant uh, uh, level of success. So we chronic, we documented that journey and I share what I was going through and there's some behind the scenes and intimate looks at, you know, how I balance the, the duality of success and tragedy in my family simultaneously. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that folks. The, the title of the documentary is nothing to lose. And Ryan has spent hundreds of thousands to make that movie. And he actually um, is giving it away for free on YouTube. So, uh, you know, it's a free documentary. Just type in nothing to lose. You'll check it out. Ryan Blair. All right. So a um, couple more questions. Then I'm going to move into the next segment because I want to I want everyone to get to to get to ask at least a question. Um, what some of the things that I wanted to talk about. So you sold your your biggest company. You sold Vassalis for seven hundred and ninety two point four million dollars. Not bad from a guy who who basically was living in a shack at uh, 13 years old. Ryan, how, how's it feel to sell your company for that kind of value? Um, you know, at the time when I sold it, I was so competitive and so uh, status driven that, you know, I was kind of mad that it wasn't a billion. And I, you know, I, you know, I, I was proud of what I was able to do. And I knew, I, I knew that it was an accomplishment, but I, I really didn't fully appreciate the accomplishment because I was so, driven by, you know, status seeking and wanting to, you know, one up the last accomplishment that the moment that I sold it, I, you know, I think I might have celebrated for a day, and then was just completely empty with the fact that now I had to pick another mountain to climb, because I, you know, sold it. So that was, you know, I, I got to tell you, I've, I've had many chapters in this, this life's journey. And that was a, you know, a, a very meaningful chapter where I learned that status seeking and you know, seeking the trophies and the awards and the acclaim, all of that is, is you know, is it's very emptying. Um, and that you know, that that I w I'm glad that I went through that. But that period of time, I look back and I realize that you know, I I just put my head down. I achieved these goals, and I really didn't uh, celebrate them very much at all. Thank you, Ryan. It's two things that I I didn't. We didn't really expand on yesterday, and then um, then we'll we'll turn it over. So you talked about you you went bankrupt. We didn't really get into that. So can you tell us about that? Because right now we're in the what I call the great pandemic depression, and people are pretty much losing their minds, let alone their businesses. Here in Philadelphia right now, uh, they just made the COVID uh, law, and I'm not political, um, where you need a COVID card to get into business. But I will speak from it. 
from a financial standpoint, they're basically these businesses are being strangled right now. So I, I guarantee within the next two months, 90% of the, I'd say at least 60% of the restaurants, and we got a huge culinary city here in Philadelphia, you're going to be out. This is going to be the knockout punch on top of everything. Because without a COVID card, you got one person in a group, the whole group can't come in. So, you know, a lot of people are losing their business. They're losing everything. And they're going to go bankrupt. So what? how how do you overcome bankruptcy? How, how do you come back from that? And you did it in, in large numbers, millions, yeah. I believe, right? Yeah. Um, no, well, you know, so after I sold 24-7 tech, I'm sorry, Sky Pipeline, the venture capitalist, you know, got the majority of that deal. I, I was not wise to the ways of the VC. So they, they outmaneuvered me in a number of different ways. And although I did all the work and, you know, and they put up the money and they figured out how to maximize their gain. And I got, you know, I got uh, some, you know, a decent little payday, but it wasn't nearly the $25 million at the deal, you know, uh, of the deal. Um, and, you know, then after that, I started living like a rock star and started, you know, spending my money like crazy. And, my ego got, you know, completely uh, crazy. Um, I, I did what a lot of poor people do when they come into money, and that is they just spend it and they blow it. Uh, that, you know, that has to do with self sabotage behavior, unworthiness, um, ego, and a variety of other negative attributes that I had never healed, that were present from, you know, my early childhood and and the way I was raised, and you know, I never actually addressed those things as a young man. And so I declared bankruptcy when I was like 27 or something like that. And at that time, they were right about to change the bankruptcy laws that were much less favorable to the consumer. And so I took advantage of favorable bankruptcy laws, filed bankruptcy, and had to start over. I will tell you that when you do that, there is so much shame that is unnecessary, so much guilt that is unnecessary. So for any of you that are experiencing the potential of that, you know, just don't listen to what other people think. The laws are made, you know, for a reason. Utilize the laws to your fullest advantage and don't listen to anybody trying to shame you or guilt you if you have to, you know, declare bankruptcy because that's the only way that you can reset yourself in order to, you know, reestablish yourself and rebuild yourself. That was, that was the only way that I could see to do that at the time. Now, in retrospect, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have had to do it. it. I didn't have a huge sum of money that I had to declare bankruptcy on. I just thought that was the only way that I could reestablish myself at the time. But, you know, in, in hindsight, I wouldn't have had to have done it had, you know, I know what I know now skill wise. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. And, and one other one other thing in regards to uh, billion, you also had said that you had a billion dollar lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> Can you expand on that for a second? Because I was trying to wrap my head around it since yesterday, and I'm just like, wow, I just that's crazy. Yeah. When when um when you know it's it's funny. When when I woke up one day to a lawsuit, the first one that was really big was like 240 million. And I was like, wow, somebody wants to take 240 million out of my pocket. Like I was like, I never believed in a million years that I'd ever be in a position or anyone thought that it was even probable to sue me for $240 million. So I kind of laughed at it and, you know, and I, I've been blessed to have always uh, invested wisely in, in insurance and in great team members and insurance uh, providers and great attorneys. And, you know, and so I, I did have a lot of lawsuits piled up against me because of the way I sold to the public company and some of the things that happened with our stock, we got a class action lawsuit. And because of the industry that I was in, we got another class action lawsuit and then a variety of other lawsuits because of some things that I did personally that I shouldn't have done. You know, I, I made a lot of mistakes, rookie mistakes, running a large company. And in retrospect, now I, I'd run a, I run a much tighter ship than I did before. But, you know, I, I, I had some, some ego uh, and got myself into some lawsuits that I shouldn't have as a result of, you know, some, some ego that, that got the best of me as I was scaling and building this, you know, this company from, you know, from really, you know, near bankruptcy when the recession hit in 2008 to literally a few years later, I'm, you know, worth 600 plus million dollars and exiting the company with a hundred million a year in profit. I made a lot of mistakes along the way in that journey. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. And I'm going to add a bonus question because I feel that you're one of the few people at your status that are brave enough to answer it. You've already done this yesterday. 
And I really believe that it needs to be understood by the masses because regular people, they're lucky if they ever came into a million dollars, let alone billions in sales the way you have. First of all, can we can we bring up the, the discussion of billionaire? Can you define billionaire and just talk about what we talked about yesterday, basically? I want everyone to hear this, that just because someone says they're a billionaire, you got to look a little closer. You know, how you define a billionaire really can change the way your status it can you can you can act like a billionaire but when you define it properly it can all that can go away well you know for one i'll i'll just share with you that most people that are billionaires in this day and age are billionaires on paper and that can be easily fabricated you know if if you buy a single share of my company alter call at and i have 100 million shares outstanding and you buy it for ten dollars a share and i own 100 percent of the company i'm technically a billionaire and I could easily manipulate that and go let Forbes know. And, you know, and, and, you know, there's, there is some sophistication in the manipulation. It's not too, totally easy, but a lot of it is just simply paper. And so people are walking around with billionaire claims and status and it's in paper. And we've seen it with the Kardashians and a variety of these venture funded companies and people that are illiquid, but technically according to their paper net worth, they're billionaires. I am not a billionaire. I, I I'm not just to let everybody know that. Um, but I know a lot of people that have that title on paper and their liquid net worth is, is you know, nowhere near a billion dollars. Now, there are some people that have a liquid net worth of a billion dollars, and that's a whole different level of, of accomplishment and lifestyle and, and you know, and, and, and financial security and means and capacity for creation and so forth when you have a billion dollars liquid than when you just have it as a title. Now... In this day and age, people, you know, they, they, they value you based on these titles, 10-figure entrepreneur, nine-figure entrepreneur. We've all seen it. A lot of times, a lot of this stuff is, is fabricated or it's exaggerated. And so you do have to have some caution and you do have to realize that a lot of this stuff is, is you know, it's, it's, it's manipulated. And I'll even tell you, having invested in some uh, unicorn venture, you know, funded companies, many of these companies are manipulated to that unicorn status as well. And the way we do that as, as VCs is, you know, we get to mark our investment up every time we write an investment, uh, a check at a, a new level of investment. So I have a vested interest in raising the value of your business if I'm your investor. And so a lot of these uh, VC funded rounds are not really creating billion dollars in true value they're just creating billion dollar rounds and they're pricing it at a billion dollars they have down round protect protection so in the event that the company doesn't achieve plan you know their true cost is far less than what they most recently paid uh, if the company does achieve plan you know because their money was able to be leveraged into billions in value then you know then you know they, they paid an adequate price or or even got a good price but a lot of this stuff that you see in the venture funded world, you know, minting billionaires left and right. A lot of that is completely manipulated and it's not truly a billion dollars in value. It's just a billion, a billion dollars in perceived value. Ryan, first of all, I, I want to give you an applause for, for saying that. Okay. Cause we've had, you know, we've got a lot of people come through clubhouse over the past year, some change millions actually through th this, this community. And many of them are billionaires they say they're billionaires and i'm not singling out any of them but there are plenty of them out there as you noted and you are folks he could easily say he's a billionaire because he has a billion in sales he doesn't have to clarify right but he's clarifying that you can disguise that title so you know if you have a net worth okay of a billion dollars which means after all your debt from minus your assets uh, to me i think that's the most safest definition to have but to have a billions in sales, you had a billions in sales, that doesn't mean you're worth a billion. And Ryan is coming out and saying it. So folks, I appreciate that, uh, uh, Ryan, and, and the honesty there, because it needs to be clarified, because it's not even about the billionaire thing, it's about like, there are people, as you said, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, I'm sorry, eight, nine figure entrepreneurs, you're saying they're nine figure entrepreneurs, nine figure in what? Like <laughs> nine figure in sales, nine, nine figure in net worth? What are you a nine figure entrepreneur in, right? Yeah, well, and the other thing is, is, you know, 
a real estate agent who has sold nine figures in real estate could claim to be a nine figure entrepreneur. And, you know, and they have done nine figures in real estate and I'm not you know, saying anything negative about that, but that doesn't mean that they created a product that generated nine figures. And you also have to look at another key measurement, you know, and that's profitability. There are some models, you know, that are highly conducive to top line revenue numbers. You know, you know, you're selling large volume, but you're not generating a significant amount of profit. And so you do have to understand both the top line and the bottom line to get the whole picture of the entrepreneur. In the case of the real estate agent who, you know, has done nine figures in, in real estate sales, you know, their profitability is 2% on that, right? That's what they take home generally on their real estate sales. So, you know, although they've done a hundred million in real estate sales, they've really only put 2 million in their pocket. So they're really a, you know, a, a seven figure entrepreneur that can now claim to be a nine figure entrepreneur. That's incredible. Thank you, Ryan. All right, folks. So, folks, we're going to move into our next segment now. We're going to get our gold badge mod squad. Everybody on stage here has been hand selected to be here um, to ask questions to Ryan. Before we do that, we're going to we're going to do a quick reset. So, thanks again, Ryan. Ryan has his um, link at the top. This is for an event that's happening tomorrow. If you want to learn more about it, just click that link. You're in the finance club. But I'm going to have Diamond tell you about it. Diamond, are, are you available? My my. Top co-host Diamond. She has one of the best rooms here. She's one of the top entrepreneurs uh, and top uh, hosts on Clubhouse. Welcome, Diamond. How are you? This is Diamond, and thank you so much, Doctor Finance. And did you want me to do the reset? Are you ready for the question and answer? Oh yes. The, yeah. Let's do some resetting just to get everybody. We got a lot of new faces that came in the room. Just want to let them know what's going on. And uh, yeah. Absolutely, so Dr. Reset. Finance. Well, thank you so much, everyone, and welcome to the Finance Club. Click on that greenhouse and join the club today. Diamond, are you there? Yes, I have the red bar. I apologize if you can't hear me. Um, but yes, we are in How to Be a Rock Star Entrepreneur with Dr. Finance and Ryan Blair interview today. Make sure you're clicking on that greenhouse and join the club today. And while you're at it, please take a look at all of our moderators and speakers on the panel today. Give Ryan Blair, our special guest, a follow. He is in the second row in the second position. Make sure you're tapping in with him today and giving him a follow and ringing his bell and send it to always. So you can always be notified when he's in this room and gracing us with his presence. Also, take the time to connect with Dr. Finance, the curator of this space and the founder of this club. Make sure to ring his bell and send it to always so you can always be notified when he's hosting this room and all the amazing rooms that he hosts throughout the week as well. But don't stop on Clubhouse. Make sure you're connecting with him and Ryan on their Instagram and their Twitter and taking the time to read their bio and all the great things that they are sharing with us today. We also encourage you to connect with Noah and Jackie and Mike on the moderator panel today. They're absolute legends as well. Hand selected to support the room and all the great things that Dr. Finance has brought to us today. So make sure you're giving both of them a follow, ringing their bells, and setting it to always. But we want to also encourage you to connect with our gold badge mod squad. We have nothing but the best here on the stage. Hand selected. Bye. Dr. Finance himself to bring you nothing but value. So make sure you're tapping in, which are their profiles, giving them a follow, ringing their bells, sending to always, and connecting with them on their social medias. We also want you to tap on that lower right-hand corner. Let's invite some more guests into the room. We're going to the next phase of our amazing interview today with Ryan Blair, the question and answer portion. So we'd love for you to bring in some more guests who could use this message today. So tap on that plus sign, invite some more friends in, as well as use the new share button. So if you have the updated version of Clubhouse in the lower left-hand corner, you will see two arrows pointing in opposite directions. That allows you to share on Clubhouse and leave a comment in the hallway for everyone to see so they can join us. It also allows you to share on Twitter and Facebook and through Messenger. And you have a link that is applied everywhere that links are accepted. And there's one more thing I want to highlight before I turn it back over to Dr. Finance. If you PTR, there's a wonderful link at the top of the room. It's called the Advanced Activation, altercall.com. This is a special offer for Ryan Blair and the team where you can attend a workshop that he is hosting on January 29th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I personally am looking forward to it. It looks absolutely 
incredible. So thank you so much for the opportunity to connect. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, there's a disturbance behind me. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have to disconnect right now, Dr. Finance, but you all tap into the wonderful, <laughs> wonderful interview here today. This is Diamond and I'm complete. All right, thank you, Diamond, appreciate that. All right, folks, welcome, welcome. This is, uh, as Diamond said, the Finance Club, how to be a rock star entrepreneur. Why would I name it such a title? Well, uh, Ryan Blair on top of the stage, stage here, he's our main guest speaker, number one New York Times bestselling author of Nothing to Lose, also had a second book, From Rock Bottom to Rock Star. He came from L.A. gangs, folks, and rose to have over billions in sales. So we're getting to know Ryan. We're moving into the next segment. But before we do that, folks, I just want to let everyone know, if you can, uh, hit that plus sign, pinging your friends. But also, I want, I want you to click that share button to the left. You see those arrows? If you click that share button, that's how Clubhouse, they have their, they made some changes a few weeks ago, and, it, and it's really leaving a lot of people out there in the metaverse. We don't want them in the metaverse. We want them here, right? So click that. And I see already that Dr. Roshanek has has uh, shared this room. Appreciate that. Michelle has shared. Thank you, Michelle. Ryan Blair shared it. Wow. Come join us. Noah Crane has, has shared. Mario has shared. Lorna, Lorna uh, Ari has shared. Shauna, Shauna has shared. Curtis and, and another 60 plus people here has shared. Look at that. We got some more shares coming in, folks. Share it. Let's build this room and honor Ryan. He's got an incredible incredible story i also want to welcome we got noah jackie and diamond helping us co-host today along with mike alden as well we got ryan blair and i got alex stern in the house folks alec is going to be uh our um he's, he's going to be our main speaker next week alec is a good friend of mine alec actually has also uh, he's also a highly successful entrepreneur so so ryan i want to introduce you to alec in a little bit i think you guys can really do some business behind scenes both of you guys are rock stars um, I also want to introduce, uh, welcome Tracy. I want to welcome Fred. We got Roland Kacha. Folks, this is a million dollar stage, okay? It's a million plus dollar stage. We got Deborah here. We got D. We got Professor T. We got Darlene. We got Feature. You got Mary Kim. Curtis is on the fastest running room and uh, fastest running person in the world, okay? Folks, do you know that? Ryan, look at this unbelievable stage. You got the fastest running room in here, Curtis Mitchell on stage. We got Stacy Ross Cohen, the number one publicist in New York. Okay, Vinny, we got Vinny Cool here. We got we got Pamela and Tracy and Lauren and Frankie, David. We got Lindsay Brooks. She's an infomercial queen. I mean, she, she was on earlier. Incredible. Phil. We got Michelle, Jennifer, Dan. We got Sir Jude, Roland, Sergio, top director in Hollywood. We got Rex. Oh my God, dude, one of the top hypnotists out there. America's super mom. We got Ari. You got Edna. We got Angel, we got Shauna and Wendy and Georgina, Kamakaiism, REI, Elizabeth, Anita, Judah's one of the top interviewers out there. She's on the other line. Gary and Sally Cologne. Oh, welcome, Sally. How are you, Sally? Producer, director. Nice to see you. We got Denise and David and then Dr. Roshnik. We have an all-star stage here, folks, and we're moving into the next segment. We're going to take some questions. So uh, just hold tight, folks, and stay tuned. You're, you're going to be amazed at what Ryan Blair has to say. So how to be a rock star entrepreneur. All right, folks, can you all come off your mic real quick? And let's give a round of applause again for Ryan as we move into this next segment. Okay. Yeah. Folks, actually, one more thing. I, I want you to come off, come off your mic and just say, welcome, Ryan. I want to give Ryan a warm welcome. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. All right, Ryan, you ready for the next segment? Ryan, it's going to be really fascinating. Okay. First of all, let's get a question from each of our, um, we got our, our, our panel here. Well, um, I would like to get a question from Alec. Alec, if, you, if you're interested, first of all, introduce, I want to introduce you to Ryan. So Alec Stern, he is America's, um, one of the top success entrepreneurs, American startup success entrepreneur. He's the co-founder of Constant Contact. I'm probably sure you heard that, Ryan. Startup to IPO to a $1.1 billion acquisition incredible background uh and that's why i love this stage this, this is great we have so many amazing people here and, and alec ryan is a number one new york best best-selling author of uh, nothing to lose five he actually have five awards on the same book top wall street journal number one uh number one usa today etc so ryan has uh, over billions in sales sold his one of his last companies for almost 800 million ryan meet alec alec meet ryan Hey there. Nice to meet you, Alec. You as well. 
I'm a big fan of your work. I'm familiar with your product. I've used it in a number of different uh, ventures that I've been a part of. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, The company sold, but it's still near and dear to my heart. Yeah. All right, Alec, you want to maybe ask the first question just to keep the flow going? We're going to have one question per person. So go ahead, Alec. Yeah, so so I, I'm very familiar with with Ryan and um, from rock bottom to rock star. I love that, um, and and obviously the the story behind it. And you talk about not uh, cele- uh, not celebrating, but you know uh, it's really about the the hard work. And I guess I just wonder uh, when when you get to an obstacle or a stuck point, you know how 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 do you uh, what's your process to address those? Well, now I I really embrace challenges. I see them as an opportunity for learning. And I do my best to transmute anything that's negative into positive. And when you learn the lesson that it's intended to teach you, it becomes positive. And one of the principles that I use now with my new startup, which is, you know, a brand new experiment in how to run a startup, doing it, you know, using my spiritual faith and values to lead it. Now I really uh, view the business as building me. I don't, I'm not building the business, the business is building me. And I try to take that philosophy into the culture and so every person sees that the business is building them. And so we address obstacles and challenges and confront things that, you know, are, are you know, going on within the culture of but the company that we need to address. Rise, and mine, I don't. Oops. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, got a hot mic there. Sorry about that's that. Right. Yeah. So we, we address our challenges uh, much more openly and, and much more um, transparently because that's that's what we're here for. We're here for the challenges. And when we learn and extract the, the lesson the challenge is intended to teach us, that lesson goes away and then a new lesson comes. But if we don't extract the lesson from the challenge, the challenge will just continue to repeat itself and continue to show up until it's learned. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, it does. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I, the other thing I would just, you know, plus one that, but I would also just add that, that, you know, these obstacles weigh on us and they, you know, they get heavier and heavier, heavier if we don't deal with them. And I think the key thing is that we're not the first one to experience it. And so go seek counsel, you know, from some, someone else successful at knocking it down or failed or could break it up into small pieces to have small wins. Um, because the bottom line is you, as you're progressing, you know, uh, the, the, you knock down that obstacle, the one behind it's bigger. And guess what? The one behind that one's bigger. And you got to form that, uh, uh, develop that muscle memory to, to, to knock those down so you can not plateau or take your bat and ball and go home. Yeah, I, I, entrepreneurs are problem solvers. We're solving a problem in the marketplace and we have to solve plenty of problems on the inside of our walls to solve the problem in the marketplace. So you have to be a problem solver and you can't run from problems. You have to address them. You have to confront them. And, and that's really the sport of entrepreneurship is simply solving problems first for the marketplace And then you got to solve, solve a whole lot of those problems to be able to build a company that scales and becomes a solution for the marketplace. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome question, Alan. And folks, uh, and Ryan, hopefully you'll be there. So we we run these rooms every Friday night. A guest speaker usually comes on usually about seven to 9 PM Eastern time, but they go from about six to 12 roughly every week. Uh, Alec is coming on next week, so I think that would be cool if you if you wanted to come here. You're always welcome. Would love to. Uh, this is, yeah, mainly the finance club is the main flagship club. I used to hold my rooms when I helped build the uh, the longest running room in Clubhouse in a former club that I built from about forty to one hundred thousand followers. But I, I've been opening up my own rooms in the past two months in my in my own club. So you're always welcome. This is the flagship club. I got seven other ones, but most likely it'll be here. So. Thank, thank you, folks. Stay tuned. That's going to be really cool next next Friday night. All right. So, Ryan, some more questions. Um, let's start with let's start with uh, Mike. If you're around, Mike, are you available? Okay. Or Jack? Oh, no. Jack? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay, I'm here. Mike. Uh, well, <clears throat> so again, I'm I'm uh, super excited. You know, Ryan, that you're here, and I just like I had mentioned when I first talked earlier. I don't know if you guys heard me, but I just um, I continue to learn from you. I, I admire you from afar, all the way out here in Boston, and. What you're doing now with Alter Call is just uh, is just awesome, and and so I appreciate you. I wanted to ask you, <clears throat> you know, you're probably one of the most connected people that I know, and and what I love about you and your background is how you can connect with, you know, still active gang members now, and then you you have billionaire friends. 
what what has been uh, you know if you could explain how how relationships and the relationships that you have throughout your life and how they've impacted your life and your growth. Well, I've been blessed to be mentored by some very great people and I'm a student, I'm a learner. And so I, I have a lot of relationships that I'm, that I'm privileged to learn from. And those are the ones that I covet the most when I, I really look forward to spending time with someone that I can learn from. And oftentimes I'm able to also, you know, convey some wisdom as well but i'm i'm there seeking to learn new information or new perspective or you know just take one one gem away from a conversation and you know my whole life has changed you know i'm always trying to extract people's principles their values and you know and 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 when i do have an opportunity to meet someone i i really do my best to take advantage of it and if there's a person that comes into my my worldview or my purview that, you know, writes a book or is doing something big in the world, I'll reach out to them and attempt to, you know, to create a relationship. It doesn't always work, but, you know, I'm pretty persistent and I tend to find a way into uh, meeting the person. So I I do have a a pretty strategic approach to this. Um, Most of the people that I, a lot of the people I should say that I know have come by way of the work product that I've put into the marketplace. Many people have read my books or watched my movies or are familiar with my companies or my investments. And so I've been privileged to meet people through my work product, which is probably the primary way that I bring on new relationships. You know, I'm, I'm a very focused person. So I, 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 I really believe, you know, that I, I don't spend much time with people that aren't my customer with the exception of me learning from people. So I really spend a lot of time with my customers and I put a lot of my energy on building my customer relationships. You can only have a handful of relationships at a time that you're maintaining while you're running a, a company that also has a couple handfuls of relationships as I am at this point and growing. You know, I'm hiring new people every day. So not every day, but every month, I would say I'm hiring new people and I'm going to be accelerating that over time. So I really have to spend the majority of my time uh, cultivating the relationships on the inside of my walls and in my customer base. And then on the outside of that, I, you know, cultivate relationships that I believe there's a strong mutual exchange and I can really learn something from. I don't really care about if they're a billionaire or how much money they have or the status that they have. You know, it actually uh, strikes a nerve with me when people are uh, talking about, you know, the status of all the people that they know and, and getting really caught up in that game. I've done my best to detach from status seeking. I'm not perfect at this by any means, but I think the whole status seeking drive is a big problem with our society. And, and it, I know where it leads. It, it leads to a place of emptiness. So I've done my best to detach from that. I'm not perfect by any means. Um, and so the relationships that I covet the most aren't necessarily with those people that have the most status. It's with those people that have you know, the most insights that I can learn from and that I can experience and, and with those people that I can give the most to. That was an answer right there, my friend. <laughs> Thank, I, 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 you can hear a pin drop right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. That was an awesome answer. Mike, awesome question. By the way, folks, Mike Alden is one of the top podcast uh, hosts out there. If you want to check him out, the guy's interviewed pretty much everybody. All his friends are, are superstars. Kevin Harrington, all the way. He had Tim Story on recently, which I thought was really cool. So, so yeah. I've had Mike, this Mike, other guy uh, that you might like as well. His name's uh, Ryan Blair. He's been on twice. That's oh, amazing. <laughs> that, is, that is super cool. Well, thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. All right. All right. Let's 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 keep going. Jackie. Jackie is helping us out. Jackie is uh, uh, Ryan Ryan's uh, executive. So, welcome, Jackie. You want to ask a question for Ryan or maybe talk about the link or anything you want? Yeah, yours. so, um, you know, luckily being around Ryan, I'm going to be of service right now because I know the answer to this question because I've watched Ryan on a, on an interview recently, and I just want everyone in this room to hear Ryan's heart and learn more about Ryan. So, Ryan, I'm going to ask you, Ryan, what is your greatest fear? Hmm. Well, I, my greatest fear would be that I I didn't fulfill my life's purpose. I didn't. I didn't leverage the talents and the assets and the, the, you know, the gifts that I've been so blessed to receive. You know, the, the view that I'm looking out at right now is 
amazing. And I'm, I'm blessed to have, you know, beautiful home and, you know, a wonderful son. And, and I just want to be able to take everything that I've been given because I, at one point in my life, I thought that, you know, it was over. Like I thought I was heading to prison or I was going to be murdered or I contemplated suicide at one point. And so now I just, I'm in such a place of gratitude that I want to do everything that I can to serve. And, and so the only fear that I have is that I won't be able to maximize my capacity for service. Now I augment that fear by working every day, surrounding myself with great people like you, Jackie, and being a constant student and, and, you know, doing the work that I, that, you know, that I possibly can to make the world a better place. And there you have it, guys. <laughs> Ryan Blair, he really embodies everything. Thank you. For oh, that, thank Ryan. you. Thank you, Jackie. Appreciate that. And Jackie, I, I just got to say, um, when I was talking to you back and forth with emails, and then I, I, it just snapped, like clicked in my head. I'm like, wait a minute. I know Jackie. Jackie's from Clubhouse, folks. Jackie, you, you do you do such amazing rooms. Uh, I know you're you're always in a lot of amazing rooms here on Clubhouse. So I'm an on, honored to have you here. I'm glad you were part of the Clubhouse community already, which made this transition for this room a lot easier. As folks know in the community here, they've seen me run stages with people that don't even have clubhouse accounts. And I had to, you know, two two landlines and <laughs> an iPad later, like we, and, and, and all my team, hand, full hands on deck, like we pulled it off, but having someone like you help has really made a, a, the transition a lot smoother. So I appreciate you, Jackie. Yeah, we're on the back chat. We understand how it works, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie, appreciate that. All right, so we got uh, Noah and Diamond that is going to ask questions. But Diamond, I don't know if you're in the right place yet. If Diamond, if you are, you're more than welcome to unmute, or we can save it for when you, when you're when you are. Diamond, are you good for a question? Okay, we'll we'll get to Noah, and then Diamond, whenever you're ready, just flash the mic and we'll let us know. So Noah, you have a question for Ryan? Yes, absolutely, Ryan. I I love your story and all you have created in your life it's so inspiring and may god give you a long long life so you could keep sharing your gifts with the world it's it really is needed um in the world and my question to you is how has mindset played a role in your life and how do you create a strong mi mindset any tips or anything you could share with us yes m mindset is everything you know i my as an entrepreneur in particular and a leader mindset is the most important uh you know, part of the equation. Skill is learned when you have the right mindset. And, you know, you, yes, you need skill, but if you have the right mindset, you can learn any skill or you can hire anyone that knows the skill. So mindset is, I would say, 90% of the equation in my book anyways. Um, now, some of the, the, the tools and tricks that, that, I've, that I utilize to build mindset, and probably the most important one that I'll teach you that I've learned more recently is this thing called restriction. Restriction is a force of nature. When I restrict my desire to react, I'm actually building self-control. And by building self-control, I build willpower. Or when I restrict my desire to you know, hit the snooze button or stay up late or go have too much wine, you know, I don't drink, but I used to, and I didn't know how to restrict that stuff and I paid a price for it. So I think the best mindset builder that you can utilize and it builds discipline and discipline is a mindset is this thing called restriction. It's like a micro challenge. It's saying, it's saying no to something so you can say yes to something that's even bigger. Nothing wrong with having a glass of wine or two, but when it comes to three or four, that's going to cost you your workout the next day, or it's going to cost you, you know, your vitality and your energy that you bring to your work the next day. And so I utilize this thing called restriction to build a mindset of, you know, self-control and a strong willpower that I then apply to focus and concentration and mastery in a variety of areas, not a variety of areas, but in a, a couple of areas. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. No, appreciate that. All right, folks. So I'm going to just allow just one question per person because we got a full stage of incredible, it's a million dollar stage folks. We've got incredible people here and I want to get everyone to at least ask one question. So I figure about one to two minutes, each question, um, just state your name, go right for the question, say my question is, and let's let's start um, with those who've been here chronologically. I'm, I might, you know, skip around from time to time, but let's let's have a good start from chronologically first. So uh, if you can flash your mics, let's see, flash your mics. Okay, we got Tracy. All right, Tracy, Fred, and Katja. And then after that, I'm, I might skip around a little bit. So go ahead, Tracy. 
Thanks, Dr. Bonnet. Hey, Ryan, this is Tracy. I'm over on the east coast of Australia. So blessed to be listening to you. I just, you've alluded to it a little bit about um, spirituality in, in your entrepreneurial shift. I'm in a spiritual entrepreneurial space and I'd love to hear you just maybe give us a little bit about how spirituality for yourself plays into your current, um, I guess, the way that you see entrepreneurship and, and your future plans. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. It's very important. My, my faith has always been what has got me through the difficult times and the dark days. You know, I went through the dot-com bust, the dot-com boom and the dot-com bust, the great recession, COVID, and my spirituality just leads me through these times and my faith leads me through these difficult times. So I, I would say it's, it's so important to, you know, to my approach as being an entrepreneur. The other thing is that, you know, by, by the fact that I'm spiritual, and I do believe that I have a purpose and I believe that my soul is here to make an impact and that I'm supposed to leave the world better than I found it. I believe that that is my duty and to pass on the wisdom that I've learned to my son and to as many people as I possibly can. That's my driver. Like I don't have to worry about time management because when I waste time, my purpose speaks to me and says, is this on purpose or is this off purpose? I'm not perfect with my time, but my time is is different. It's it's an activated state because I believe the work that I'm doing is deeply connected to my spiritual purpose and my reason for being here. And my reason for being here is to make an impact. And so, you know, I that belief is what powers me through the dark days or the difficult times or the letdowns or the rejections or the fears. It's because I believe that I'm I'm intended to go through these challenges because that's part of my spiritual journey. Love that. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate that, Tracy. And then we got Fred next. But before we get to Fred, folks, I just want to pause for a second. So folks, you're in the Finance Club. We got a lot of new people coming in here. You're in How to Be a Rockstar Entrepreneur. We got Ryan Blair here, folks, number one New York Times bestselling author, and also a very highly successful entrepreneur that came from nothing. And he has billions in sales. Give give Ryan a follow and everyone on stage, part of the Gold Badge Mod Squad audience. Love having you here. Thank you for the support. Um, I also want to uh, let you guys know, if you can, please follow everybody on stage. But hit that plus sign, ping in your friends. And that little arrow at the bottom as well, if you can hit that arrow and just share it with, with your friends, share it with your community. Hit, just type in Ryan Blair is awesome and, and just hit share, folks. We got 80 people here. I see that America's super mom has shared. It's awesome. Inspiring story. She said, no crane shared. Sally Cologne shared. Thank you, Sally. Dr. Finance and Ryan Blair are killing in this room. She said, Sally Cologne, folks, she is awesome. She's one of the top directors out there. So definitely give her a follow. Samantha Williams said, said, shared this. Mike Alden shared this. Dan Roth, Dr. Roshnick. We got so many others. So folks, folks, if you can keep sharing that, we'll make this room a lot bigger and give Ryan the respect he's, he deserves. So thank you. And uh, all right, we got Fred up next. Go ahead, Fred. Thank you, Dr. Finance. Thank you. Ryan, uh, I, I love what you've been discussing tonight. And there was, <clears throat> there was one word in particular that you used that really made my ears perk up. And I wanted to ask you to go a little deeper, uh, talk, talk about that. And that word was creation. I'd love to hear your thoughts about creation, about how you you go about getting into a mode of, of creation and and about how it's it's a way of being a way of feeling mm. that's a beautiful question you know we are all creators every human being is a creative human being it, it, and don't believe anyone who tells you otherwise so we all have this within us now the question is is how do we activate that and there are certainly times where i'm not as creative as others and there's times where i procrastinate we you know, as human beings, there's there's times where I allow my distractions to get the better of me. And, you know, all of these things are what attack creativity, the distractions, the procrastination, the lack of inspiration, right, our environment and so forth, all of these things attack it. And so the way that I get to creativity is I remove those distractions and I remove those time wasters. I remove the things in my environment that aren't inspirational. And I do my best to foster a creative environment so that I can step into that environment and my output is the most creative it can be. 
But to go even deeper on that, really creativity is your output. So in order to have a high degree of output, you have to have a high amount of input. And by input, you have to spend the time in contemplation. You have to do the self-love related things that are going to build the self-esteem so that you can step into your creative genius and you can have an output that you're capable of. Input might mean you have to make the time for study and for reading, which I do every day, or meditation, which I do every day, or breath work, or you know, the uh, walks in nature or physical fitness or input might be the food that you put into your body or might be the water that you drink or the substances you put into your body or the content that you listen to. Th those are input items. But you might overput, you might put too much in and therefore you have too much input to output ratio or you might not put enough in and so you don't have enough in your tank to have an adequate output ratio. And so each of us has an input output ratio and if you dial that in correctly, you will have the energy to be creative every single day of the week and your creativity will grow each day. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. That was, uh, that was fantastic. And uh, I, I agree with you uh, with so many of those, so many of those uh, inputs, as you said, that's exactly what they are. And that's what affects the way, the way we are, the way we feel and the yeah. way we show up in the world. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Fred, appreciate that. All right, folks, we're here with Ryan Blair. We're taking some questions, folks. I've reduced the amount of time I'm gonna ask questions for my interview. If you wanna check out the full interview, go to Dr. Finance Live podcast. It's all over the place. It's on YouTube, uh, all the different major podcast directories, over two hours, and hear Ryan's incredible story. But in the meantime, I deferred this time for your questions from our Gold Badge Mod Squad here. And we got uh, Kaja up next. So Kaja, uh, now folks, we got a stage from all over the world. So Kaja, Kaja, if you want to tell us where you're from and then ask Ryan his question. Of course. Hi, I'm Katya. I'm from Italy, but I'm Croatian by origin. And I want to say, Ryan, I have met today not only a rock star entrepreneur, but a beautiful human being. So I feel so blessed. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And my question is, what was the hardest decision you had to make while transitioning from where have you been to where you are today? Mm, there's been a lot of hard decisions. There's been some on the transactional side. You know, I canceled an IPO the day of the roadshow. I write about that in Rock Bomb to Rockstar. That was a, a, a pretty difficult decision to make on the business side. On, on the personal side, the hardest decision was I made the decision to take two years off and to go deep into an inward journey because I'd spent the first 20 some odd years of my career totally doing it for status and for attention seeking and other, uh, other purposes. And I decided that I was going to make a change in my life and it happened after my mother transitioned. She'd passed away. And I just made the decision. I was going to walk away from board seats. I was going to write off investments. And I was going to, you know, just basically take all of my energy and figure out this thing called the self. I went deep into meditation for hours a day. I journeyed into nature every single day. I journaled. I wrote. And I did a lot of deep work. And I wasn't sure that I would ever return to entrepreneurship. And during that period of time, I came into revelations and I would receive wisdom and, and I would just see synchronicities and I would see, you know, my, my, my higher power intervening in my life in so many beautiful ways that I made the decision that I was going to enter into the field of entrepreneurship again, which was also a tough decision because I'd left a pretty established company with a, a large, you know, um, uh, employee group, a, a wonderful team that was amazing. And I had to start all over again as an entrepreneur. And so I had to, you know, make a tough decision to do that as well. There's been a lot of very difficult decisions to be made, but those are some of the, you know, the most uh, dramatic ones, I would say. Thank you so much. And, you know, all the inner work that you did on yourself, it shows completely, completely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kadya. I appreciate that. All right. I'm going to bounce around a little bit. Thank you, Ryan. You're doing awesome. 
And uh, you know, we're just getting some questions from our Gold Badge Mod Squad. I, w I just want to bounce around a little bit. We got some incredible superstars in here. Um, I don't know, C Rock, if you're available, I'd, I'd love for you to uh, jump in. I want to introduce you to Ryan Blair. You guys are also uh, very great superstars. C Rock's awesome. He's part of the Grant Cardone's um, 10X family, and we also have uh, David Hill was here. David, if you're if you're available to speak, I'd like to hear from you and. Uh, yeah, so let's let's start with that, David or or C Rock. Any of you guys available? Want to ask a question for Ryan Blair? Okay, yeah. got it, C Rock. So first, yeah. before, before you speak, I just want to introduce you. So so uh, C Rock, I don't know if you know Ryan, but Ryan's awesome. He's number one New York Times bestselling author, over billions in sales. I mean, just an incredible spiritual person, Ryan. I'd love to talk about that on the stage a little bit because you really do have some cool stuff going on in in the spiritual world with a lot of your mentees. Uh, but C Rock is, you know, he's doing some amazing, amazing things. He's close to me actually in Philly, and uh, I'm gonna we're gonna go out to a ball game one of these days. But but C Rock meet uh, Ryan. Ryan meet C Rock. What's happening? Nice to meet you. What's happening, Ryan? What's happening, Doctor Finance, or as I call you, Ant? <laughs> What's happening? Hey guys, uh, listen, I just popped in, so I want to catch up a little bit before I really ask a question. Except for Ryan, uh, I just would love 15 minutes of your time on a zoom call later on. So that's the question I'll ask you right now, put you on the spot in front of everyone. Uh, but that's how I connect with people. So. Yeah, really. I, it depends on the intention of the call. Well, yeah, no, no. <laughs> if I, I don't say, rock, by the way, just, you know, I don't say date, yes to, to 15 minute dates with people. I don't know. No, I'll, I'll, so I'm, I'm glad you guys, we, we got two straight up people here. I mean, that, that's this. <laughs> C Rock doesn't hold any punches either. Ryan's the same. I love way, it, so. man. No, I yeah, love it. And my intention is always to cause and create futures for people. So um, that's what it's all about. Yeah, you're gonna have to be more specific with that to get 15 minutes of my time, brother. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, we'll talk more. <laughs> Let me catch up in the room here and hear more, and then I'll have a question. Thanks for having right. me, Ant. Thanks, C Rock. All right. So welcome. And uh, okay, we got David here. D David also. Uh, uh, David Hill, if you're available, David, you want to say hi? Hey, Dr. Finance. Good to see you, sir. Yeah, Ryan, um, I've been listening. I've been listening, but I've also been, you know, working at the same time. So a little bit in and out. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I loved what you said about uh, your, you know, your intention. And I would say if there's anything that's kind of on my mind that I'd love to get your thought on right now it's and i don't know if you guys maybe already talked about this before i popped in but like crypto the that that whole space like what are your thoughts on like cryptocurrency and meta and all that stuff have you guys talked about that no we we haven't talked about it i'm i'm not an expert in the subject so <laughs> i i defer to someone else who's more familiar with it than i am i I, I I have a diversified a portfolio approach, and there is some crypto in it, but it's not something that I put a lot of energy into. And the reason being is, I really only want to allocate my energy into the things where I can make the biggest impact. And there's plenty of other people in the crypto space that are they're putting their energy there. I'm putting my energy into helping entrepreneurs make the biggest impact that they can on the planet. And I do so by teaching them the principles and practices and the methods and technology that I've learned along my way, and then mentoring them to help build and scale their businesses. And so I'm, I'm not focused on NFTs, although I, you know, I think it's very promising or crypto or, or, you know, a bunch of other different things. When those things show up, I really see them as shiny objects. And as Steve Jobs once said, and it stuck with me forever, his focus is saying no. And so I have to say no to a lot of great ideas and a lot of great opportunities in order for me to say yes to the ones that I believe that I can affect the greatest change with. I love it. Brilliant. Thanks, David. Appreciate Thank that. You, awesome, sir. awesome question. Thank you for, for your question. And uh, Ryan, thanks for awesome response. All right. So I, uh, Ryan, I want to introduce you to a couple more other people on stage that I think would be incredible to ask you a question. Um, first, I, I'd like to, if Lindsay Brooks is here, I'd, I'd like for her to uh, ask you a question. She's a, she's probably a good contact for you as well. And Sal, Sally Cologne, if you're interested in getting into the movie business, Sally is incredible with that. I, actually, I know you're already in the movie business. You've got that documentary. That's right. So, Sally, if you want to ask a question, just flash your mic. And Or Lindsay, Lindsay, you want to ask a question? Flash your mic. 
Let's see. You guys might be busy. I understand. I if you do, just flash. I saw Sally flashing. <laughs> Oh, she did well, I was Welcome, I was gonna say I don't really have a voice, so that's why I haven't asked the question. <laughs> that's okay. I was here two weeks ago. <laughs> that's awful. Sorry. That's okay. Well, well, welcome, Sally. Appreciate it. And Sally, yes, if if you can, definitely give me a follow. I'm following you. I'm fo uh, if you want to follow the club. I want to get you in here some more often, especially on Friday nights, because I know you you do some really cool things in the background. Um, really major superstar, a uh, producer, director. So welcome again, Sally. Thank you. I'm following you now. You're awesome, Sally. Sorry, Appreciate I thought you. I was. Okay, no worries. I know you come in here a lot. We've we got mutual friends. All right, uh, and Lindsay. Lindsay, welcome, Lindsay. You got? A, you want to ask a question for, for uh, Ryan? Lindsay, if you're there, or say hello. All right, well, Lindsay Brooks on stage, so I, I'll introduce you. And by the way, uh, Ryan, for C-Rock, um, I think a good opportunity for you guys to start. I don't know about going all into the 15-minute thing, but the podcast. <laughs> I think that's a great thing because C Rock actually does run a great podcast, and he has a lot of major uh, people on there, um, like Mike as well. Mike Alden also runs that podcast, so that'd be a cool thing for you to, you guys would probably to start with going on his podcast. Um, incredible, Grant Cardone, you know, is his partner. So, got it. I know Grant very. I, I know Grant for many years now, so I'm, I, I definitely am familiar with him and his organization, and I, you know, I know Elena and so forth. That's awesome. All right, thank you, Ryan. All right, let's go back to um, we're going to go chronological order again. We're, we we jump back. We had uh, let's see, Kat, Katya, and who was who was after Katya? All right, so flash your mics after Katya if you want to ask a question. We're doing. Uh, let me pull and refresh. I want to pull you folks. If you pull down and refresh, you'll see who was here chronologically first. That's how I can I can go here. Um, all right, so we got Roland and D. Roland D and Stacy. Okay, go ahead, Roland. Hi, Ryan. I wanted to. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, oh, man, your story is so inspiring, and there's so many things I can relate to. I also left home at 13 years old. And uh, yeah, the question that I have for you is what was the turning point, or, or, you know, what was the catalyst for you to discover your spirituality? And, and, you know, yeah, was it a person or was it an event? Well, the, the first person that, that taught me my spiritual values was my, my grandmother. And she taught me those very early in my life. And then when my parents got addicted to drugs and then I wound up on the streets, I completely strayed from them altogether. But I always had them within me, but I, I strayed from them, you know, in, in major ways. So I always had a spiritual seed in me. But that seed really didn't start to grow until after my mother had passed away. And when she passed away, that event awakened me. It, it completely changed me. And, you know, it was a very difficult thing for me to go through. I, I love my mother so much. And, you know, and we had a very difficult relationship because, you know, she never loved herself nearly as much as I loved her. She loved me a lot, but she couldn't love herself. And so it was a very difficult thing. And when she had passed away, all the love that I had for her that was unexpressed just came pouring out. And that's when I started to really look deeply at my spiritual roots. And, and I've also evaluated a number of different wisdoms and cultures, and I dove into different practices. And my objective is just simply to extract the best practices from a variety of different wisdoms and then apply that to my life to have a more spiritual life. But I would say the, the big event that broke me wide open spiritually and and created a, a very strong spiritual connection was when my mother transitioned. Wow, thank you so much. I, you know, I really appreciate that answer because I often think about what it will be like when that happens for me, you know, when my mother passes away because I didn't have a good relationship with her and, and I actually didn't talk to her for 25 years. Now I talk to her once a month, a couple times a week, uh, a month sometimes. But yeah, I, I often think about what will happen when that happens. And, and thank you for that answer. That's really deep. Yeah, you know, the best thing that I'll tell you, and this is, we're going to go deep here, is do forgiveness exercises. You know, we, we as children are not perfect. There's plenty of things that we should be, we need forgiveness for, and we need to forgive as well. And if you do a forgiveness exercise with your mother, whether she's present or not, 
that will change your entire relationship with her. I had a difficult time forgiving my father. And after he transitioned, I did this exercise. And now I, I have nothing but love for the man. And I have total compassion for him, as I do for my mother. And so really go deep into the into the modality of forgiveness if you really want to clear a channel between you and your mother. And I suggest you do it before she elevates because it'll make the connection even more special once she does. Thank you. I really appreciate that feedback. Yeah, if I can help you in any way, I'm here to help you, my brother. I'll reach out to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Roland. That was a very good question. Thank you, Ryan. Awesome answer. And see, see, Ryan's a regular guy. You know, he's he's connecting here. He he knows what it's like to experience a lot of loss, and that's what I like about Ryan. Like, you know, you ask him a question like Roland did, and it's just it's incredible the, the feedback he gives you. So, thank you, Roland. All right, we're going on to D. We got D up next. Welcome, D. How are you, D? Hi, Ryan. Yes, yes, yes. I'm here. Hi, Ryan. As a former teacher, I'm really interested in this answer. Uh, speaking of children, if your, or your son approaches you and says, Dad, I want to be an entrepreneur just like you, what advice would you give him? Thank you so much. I, well, I'm already uh, teaching my son how to run a business. I, I invite him into conversations. I share with him my company dashboard. I take him through the metrics. I, I believe that it's a much better career path to be an entrepreneur. You know, there's much more freedom within it and much more opportunity than to be a worker. Now, if my son chooses to go the working path, I'll support him in that. If he chooses to do, you know, whatever he chooses to do, I'm going to support him in that. But I've exposed him in, to entrepreneurship and we're already dreaming about businesses that he'll one day start. And of course, I'll be his first investor. And, you know, right now he wants to do a parkour course. I'm not sure it's a viable model, but you know we're working through some of the details, and we'll see what happens. You know, a few years from now, when when he is ready to start his business, if he does choose that path. That's the perfect answer. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Dee. Appreciate that. All right, so we're gonna do. We're gonna get one more question from Stacy. And then Lindsay, you're, you're up after Stacy because I want to introduce you to to Lindsay. I think you guys are be a cool contact too. So Stacy, welcome. Thank Stacey. you, Doctor. Stacy, by the way, is one of the top uh, publicists in New York. Oh, Doctor Finance, thank you. <laughs> so great to so great to meet you, Ryan. And I'm so inspired by you. And and it's no doubt your deep work has so paid off. You are probably one of the most highly self aware people that that I've come across and, and you really know your why. And interestingly enough, my question, I guess, is going to be a follow up to D. Clearly, you know, the pandemic has accelerated entrepreneurship. And what blows my mind is the surge in teen entrepreneurship. And I'm just curious, you know, what are some of the resources needed to level up skills necessary to succeed as an entrepreneur and are you um you know especially hearing your story with with your son do you think entrepreneurship should be taught in high school yes and in fact you know unfortunately the way society is going is not unfortunately fortunately or unfortunately most jobs are going to be replaced by computers over the next 20 30 50 years so there's going to be a massive need for new entrepreneurs to innovate new industries, new ideas, and to solve problems that are not being solved by the present marketplace. So I'm predicting a trend toward entrepreneurship, and I believe that it should be taught, you know, as a, a primary, you know, as opposed to being taught to be doctors or lawyers, we should be taught to be entrepreneurs who employ doctors and lawyers. And so I'm teaching my son and I'm developing curriculum to teach others. Now, specific to your to your question around skills, you know, the, the skills of being an entrepreneur outside of, you know, learning and developing an entrepreneurial mindset, which means that you have to be more risk adverse, which means that you have to break through some of the employee minded thinking that, you know, that, that we're conditioned to think as a result of our industrialized economy. So you have to learn the mindset of an entrepreneur first and foremost and become acquainted with that mindset and test that mindset. 
And then secondly, the way you develop skills is by experimentation. You know, yes, we want to read and we want to understand the theory behind it. And, and we want to, you know, read good books or take courses or, you know, master classes or whatever it may be, but we want to experiment. And so we want to do a number of experiments without attachment to success or failure, but rather attachment to learning a result or learning as a result of the experiment. So experimenting with, you know, having a child try this business idea or that business idea or, or you know, attempt this concept or build this product. Those experiments are what are going to build the ultimate skills that will one day lead to a successful enterprise. Love it. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. Thank you, Stacy. Appreciate it. That was an awesome question. Ryan, you're doing awesome. Appreciate that, man. We got some very special guests that I told you it's a million dollar stage. It just became a billion, billion dollar stage. We got three basically <laughs> very successful people on stage that have produced billions in, in, in company sales. Ryan, Alec, and now we got Grant Cardone. Grant, big fan of yours. Welcome, Grant. How are you, sir? Hey, great, guys. <clears throat> Love the conversation. What's going on, Grant? Ryan, how you doing, brother? I'm good, man. It's good to uh, good to to see you. Always good, to, always good to hear your voice, man. Thank you. Welcome again, Grant. Appreciate you being here, Grant. Um, I'll give you the honor if if you don't mind. Would you like to? What we're doing is we had Ryan's story earlier, and then we moved into the next segment. So we're taking questions from our amazing Gold Badge Mod Squad here. And Grant, if, if you're up to it, maybe uh, would you like to ask Ryan a question or just a comment or, you know, we're talking about a lot of really cool stuff here about how to be a yeah, rock star entrepreneur. I, I, just got, I just got in here, so I'm just listening. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Grant. Just flash your mic whenever you're ready and I'll be happy to, to take that for you. So thank you, Grant. All right, folks. So we got an incredible amount of people here. Um, let's, uh, I, I think Lindsay, Lindsay, are you still, yeah, Lindsay's still here. Lindsay Brooks. So Lindsay, would you like to ask Ryan a question? Because let me first, I want to introduce you to um, to Ryan. Ryan Lindsay is uh, one of the infomercial people that dragging on Dragons Den and Clubhouse. She calls it, but she actually did a lot of great things in the background. So Lindsay, you want to say hi to Ryan and 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 maybe ask a question? Oh, I, I'm actually me and Ryan go back to the uh, Law of Attraction room. I think I've written into him there. Uh, but no, no, awesome, awesome stuff. Love, I love your your book and your, your whole vibe is great. I mean, I think like uh, the whole uh, entrepreneurship being taught in school is awesome. And I, I love what you're doing with your kid. We do the same thing here. And um, I just, I like the story. I think the, the traditional, you know, method of everybody go get a job and, you know, try to make it work. I also was high school dropout too. Same thing made my way myself been an entrepreneur since I was 17. And um, I think that, I think that, you know, your message is really inspiring and encouraging, and I'm just glad you're here. I'm just here uh, enjoying enjoying the conversation. So Thank thanks you. so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. Appreciate that. All right, folks, I think it's time for a reset. We're going to take some more questions. Before we do that, Diamond, are you around? Are you in the right place? Would you like to do a quick reset? And also, Diamond, I don't think you got to ask Ryan a question. So uh, your, your call, Diamond. Just flash your mic if you're ready. Right. This is Diamond, and absolutely, I'd love to ask Ryan a question as well as to do the reset. So I'll reset the room for those of you who are just now joining us. Welcome, welcome to the Finance Club. Click on that green house and join the club today. And today we are discussing how to be a rock star entrepreneur with Dr. Finance and our special guest interviewee, Ryan Blair. If you haven't joined that greenhouse, click at the top. And we also ask you to take a look at a very special offer that Ryan has shared with us today. There's a link for the advanced activation altar call.com. Click on that link and join a special event that is complimentary from Ryan on January 29th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So thank you so much, Ryan, for offering that gift. And we also ask you to tap in with Ryan if you PTR. You will see he's on the second row in the middle position. Make sure you're giving him a follow, ringing his bell, and sending it to always. So you can always be notified when he's in this room and all the great rooms throughout the week as well. But don't just stop on Clubhouse. Make sure you're connecting on his Instagram and his Twitter that is linked as well. We also like to acknowledge the club's founder, the curator of this space, Dr. Finance himself. You'll see he's in the first position. Make sure you're giving him a follow as well, ringing his bell, and sending it to always. Dr. Finance now hosts 
multiple rooms. So you want to make sure you do not miss those rooms. Friday being the main event. So make sure you have that bell set to always. You can always be notified when he opens the room. You also want to connect with him on his Instagram and his Twitter and follow him over on his Facebook as well as his YouTube channel where you can subscribe there as well as to the Dr. Finance Live podcast where you can get that in-depth interview with Ryan Blair, our special guest today. We also encourage you to tap in with Noah and Jackie and Mike and Alec with us today, our special guest moderators. Make sure you're following each and every one of them, as well as the Gold Badge Moderator Squad. Each and every one of them been hand-selected by Dr. Finance because they bring the absolute best value. We also encourage you to tap on that plus sign. Invite some more guests into the room. We're not done yet. We have a few more questions, and then we're going to open up the panel to the rest of the stage. So we encourage you to tap on the plus sign and invite in the guests, as well as use the new function here on Clubhouse in the lower left-hand corner. You will see arrows pointing opposite directions. We've had 88 shares of the room. If you tap on that button, you can share as well on Clubhouse. You can leave a comment, share via Twitter, Facebook, through Messenger, and you can use the link and post link everywhere that links are accepted. So welcome, welcome everyone to the Finance Club today. And I have a question. This is Diamond speaking for you, Ryan. Uh, my question is regarding your mindset. Uh, my background is in mindset. I'm a mindset coach and hearing your story was absolutely incredible today. Um, you know, your resilience, your creativity. And I'd just love to hear what is your daily mindset routine look like? How do you stay grounded? How do you stay centered? And what would you offer for those in the room who are looking to create that rock star entrepreneur mindset as well? Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for the question. I, my, my mindset is developed by way of meditation. I do a deep meditation practice every single day. And that's the most important thing I do because when you meditate, you train your attention. And when you train your attention, you can focus and concentrate on whatever it is that you have at hand. And a lot of entrepreneurs, they just lack the ability to concentrate. And that's a skill. So I develop meditation and I utilize meditation as a way of, of developing the skill of focus and concentration. And if you apply focus and concentration with a level of skill, you can get to a level of mastery. So I would say the most important thing that you could do to develop a mindset is meditation. This is Diamond and thank you so much. And I absolutely agree with you. Uh, when I first started on my mindset journey, I started out with affirmations, uh, which helped me to really shift my mindset to a more positive mindset. And the thing that really took me to the next level was meditation and visualization. So yes, very, very powerful tools and skills that can be learned. So thank you so much, Ryan. It's absolutely been a pleasure having you here. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Diane. Appreciate that. Oh, uh, before we go any further, uh, uh, I just want to introduce, we've got, we got a lot of crazy, cool people here. This amazing stage. We've got Tom Chenault here. we got Ricky. we got Paulina. we go to Ray, Elena, William, Shelly. And actually, I skipped somebody. Lindsay had, had mentioned Ted. I, I hope hope I say this right. Ted Mahigan, who owns an airline in Canada, is here. Another drag on Dragon's Den, uh, Den on Clubhouse. So welcome, Ted. And we also have uh, Farah and Elena William. We got Shelly. We got Sarah. We got David. Coach Lee, Doctor uh, Roshanov. We got Denise, Sally, Cologne, Gary, Pauline, folks. Oh, wow, this is incredible. Jude, we got Anita and Elizabeth, Kamakaias and Georgina. We got Edna. Edna is awesome. She's big in energy, has, has a huge energy business. So welcome. We got Rex here. Uh, we got Sergio, Jennifer, Michelle, Lindsay, Nune, Joanne, David, and the list is going on. I think Grant has broke the scale here when he came in. I'm getting a little dizzy. So I'm going to move to the next person. Uh, we're, uh, let's see. We had, who was next after this? We had a list. Stacy, well, actually, we let's flash your mics, folks. If you have a question, we're gonna leave off where Stacy was. So flash your mics, and I'm gonna put you down for a question. Um, so go ahead, flash your mics. I see Nune and Michelle. Nune and Michelle's flash. Go ahead, Nune. Oh, Joanne, Nune and Michelle. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Joanne. Yes. Hello. Hopefully, I'm not in the matrix. Matrix this time, but um. Yeah, my question would be, if you had to start at ground zero again to build any business, what would it be and why? Well, the, the business that I'm building now, I I started as a day one business. I, I didn't invest a significant sum in it. I wanted to 
create an ethos of profitability. And so I'm, I'm in the middle of a startup right now. I have 13 full-time employees or team members, I should say, and I'm continuing to expand it. And the, to answer your question about where I would start is wherever you're most passionate, we are most qualified to serve the person that we once were, and we are most qualified to create products that we've experienced the need for. And so whatever product or service that you're going to create, create the one where you have established a complete understanding of the need for it and build it based on that spirit and that passion. Wow, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Joanne. Appreciate that awesome question. We got Nune. Before we go to Nune, folks, don't forget to hit that share button at the bottom. Okay, where it says 93. I want to see everyone hit the share button. That's right, folks. You guys in the audience, too. You don't get a pass. You, you, you got to hit that share button. Hit that share button when there's two hours are at the bottom left. And let's see. We got, uh, we have Deborah has made a share. Remarkable. She said one to one with Ryan Blair. Melissa has made a share. We got Noah has made another share. And Nune. Uh, this is awesome, folks. Kamakaiism. Thank you for the share. And Alexis. So we got a lot of people who have made a share. Folks, we've got up to 94 shares now. And what that does, folks, is it, it helps to share with your whole community. This was added as a new feature to Clubhouse a few weeks ago. And it's really dizzying the way Clubhouse has made their new calendars. So the best way to get it out to there to all your fans and let them know that they should be in this room is hit that share button. Okay, so we got 94. Thank you um, for sharing that. William, do appreciate the share. Jennifer has just shared. Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, all right, great. So back to the next question from Nune. Welcome, Nune. And what is your question for Ryan? Remember, one question per person, folks. Okay, one question. Um, I have many. But the question I'll ask is, uh, Ryan, you mentioned um, in your podcast with Dr. Finance yesterday and today again about what, what your successes um, early on and not knowing you were breaking certain rules as you – were experiencing things for the first time how much of your success and you can measure it however you want how much of your massive success do you contribute to not knowing that you were breaking rules and breaking them because you didn't know and succeeding because you broke them i'm handing over the mic <laughs> um well i i've always been a rule breaker so I've never been one to ask for permission. I'd much rather beg for forgiveness. So I would say that a significant portion of my success has come from you know me just realizing that the rules that we live by were made up by people no smarter than you. And all these things that construct our society, these rules, education system, all of this stuff is, in my opinion, a lot of it is weak and most of it is nonsense. And so the objective of, of being an entrepreneur is to question everything, question every rule. And if you can find a better way of doing things, do it as long as it's, you know, within, you know, the legal structure, uh, you know, and, and you'll put yourself in a, you know, a situation where you go to jail, for example, I recommend you break every rule you possibly can. And that's the way, you know, businesses uh, you know, shift industries, for example, is by looking at the way the rules are played in one particular industry and saying, we're going to do it completely in a different way and establishing a new way of doing business. So I would say it was heavy in that. My success at Vaisalis, you know, we innovated in the business model. We were um, uh, one of the very first people to bring challenges to social media. In fact, we were the first to commercialize a challenge on social media. And and that was a completely different way of doing business. It broke every rule in the traditional direct selling space. And as a result of that, we were the first to market a challenge on social media. And, you know, we had a viral challenge and roll over 3 million customers and do over a billion in sales as a result of a lot of rule breaking. So break all the rules. Just keep yourself out of jail. <laughs> do it the legal way. <laughs> yeah, break, break. But, you know, you, you got to look at these rules and the way the game is played. And, you know, the best way to win in business is to create a new game and then get everybody else to play in your game. Well, hey, Ryan, you. Sorry. Yeah. In hindsight, do you remember any rules that you broke and you didn't know you were breaking it, but you figured out that if you hadn't done it that way, 
you would have had a different take outcome. the fifth ryan <laughs> yeah um there were plenty that i knew i was breaking and there were plenty that i didn't know i was breaking and yeah the the uh that would the outcome be different the answer is um you know i i don't i don't know i i, I can't give you an answer to that that's a bit of a hypothetical that i haven't really thought through but you know, I would tell you that I've had success in a number of different companies, and all of those companies were revolutionary to their respective industries. In the broadband wireless space, I was breaking the rules of the way that the local carriers played, and I was bypassing them and bringing broadband wireless direct to their customers without all of the, the tariffs and fees and costs and structures. And so I was revolutionizing broadband wireless. And, you know, every industry that I've ever built in, I've wanted to revolutionize. So I've, I've never thought about the rules. I've thought about how I'm going to change the industry. And, you know, I've, I've created new rules for those industries to the best that I can. So I don't really have a great answer for that question. Um, I've never really thought about what life would look like had I not had a revolutionary's mentality. Sorry, I got stuck there in the matrix. Appreciate that. All right, thank you, Nune. Appreciate it. Excellent question. Michelle's up next, and then we're, we're going to reset. We got some really cool people here, folks. Folks, I just want to let you know there's a lot of new people just came in the room. We got Ryan Blair here, folks. If you haven't heard his story, you should check it out on the podcast. Just look up Dr. Finance Live podcast. It was the episode went live yesterday. Um, over two hours, he tells the whole story. He basically came from the hood in L.A. and rose way, his way all the way to the top, became a number one New York Times bestselling author and a highly successful entrepreneur with billions in sales. So we're taking questions here and we got uh, Michelle up next. Welcome, Michelle, how are you? Thank you so much, I'm fantastic. Good evening, Ryan, here's my question. I'm really curious about the fact that when you were in the gang, you were already exhibiting these high performance capabilities. You had these qualities of drive and ambition and you said you were a top recruiter in the gang. So this differentiated you from perhaps, I don't know how many siblings you had, but I know you had a sister. Do you believe that you were just born with these qualities? There's this ongoing debate, are entrepreneurs born or made? So what are your thoughts on, on those topics? <laughs> well, you know, I, I would say I was definitely born with certain attributes and traits that that lended themselves well to the sport of entrepreneurship. But, you know, entrepreneurship, everybody can be an entrepreneur. There's everybody. I, I just happen to have some high risk taking um, nature to me. Now, as a spiritual person, I believe that that is a product of my individual unique calling on my life. Um, but I, I have helped countless entrepreneurs that, you know, that, that came in a very conditioned employee style uh, tradition. I've helped them break from that and become successful entrepreneurs in my journey. So I, I don't think that they're necessarily born or made. I think that they can be both born and made. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Something caused you to push harder than everyone else was in that gang to be the top recruiter. Yeah. And that that is always curious to me. What is the difference between, you know, the people that contract and the people that expand? And yeah. Michelle, uh, I'm sorry, Ryan, I just want to jump in real quick. That's a great point you made. I actually asked Ryan this question in detail in a different format yesterday. I said not only what you said, but let's take it to the family level. OK, let's say you have five siblings. Why does one kill themselves and why does the other one become a billionaire? This happens, right? Like what? why in one same family can can someone rise from from ashes all the way to the top i mean it's it's a, it's a big question I, I don't know what do you think right well the, you know the answer on that particular question is 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 what you learned so in life we are constantly given challenges and what we extract from those challenges is what builds our code base so to speak and so i just extracted from every negative thing something positive and as a result of that i built a positive action taking mindset now specific to wanting to be number one and, and having a very competitive nature that that has been with me since i was uh, a toddler like my my siblings would describe me you know 
constantly trying to win in every sport we played. And I had an innate competitiveness inside of me since day one. And if anything, I've had to temper that competitiveness. And, and that competitiveness has actually had, you know, in many cases been a detriment because, you know, being overly competitive, you know, doesn't win you a whole lot of friends in life and can um, drive behavior that isn't necessarily the most uh, compassionate and conducive to relationships. So, you know, I, I would tell you that the reason why I wanted to be number one recruiter and so forth is because I was extremely competitive at a very early age. And prior to my family disintegrating, I was very competitive in sports. And I would probably have gone on to be a high performer in sports. Certainly, I could have played at the college level had I not, um, you know, had, you know, all of that taken away from me at the high school level. Thank you so much. Yo, yo, Dr. Finance, this is C Rock. I have a question now. Oh, good. My man. <laughs> hey, hey, Ryan, Ryan, what do you think about this? Like, you know, we're in the tech startup world and, you know, we get haters, we get people discouraging us, all this stuff. But we just know, and I think this is what separates to answer that question. I want to hear your thoughts on this. We, we push the pedal down harder when we get that stuff. If somebody doubts us, we don't introvert and pull back. Like we, we take that as a sign that we need to go harder, faster, bigger. And I think that's what separates people as well. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's a great question. And one of the approaches, so I, some people I know, and you and I know some people probably share some friends that really it fuels them. You know, they love it. They're like, yes, give me more of that. And that's a, that's a rare breed out there. For me, you know, when, when the criticism comes in, as it does, when you, you put out your work as, you know, in, as a public figure, you're going to get a lot of people that are just going to hate you. You know, for, for me, I tried to receive the lesson from it. I say, okay, maybe this criticism is designed to humble me a little bit. Maybe, maybe they're correct. Maybe I should, you know, write a better book. Maybe, maybe I could have done better at this company or that company or as a CEO or whatever the criticism is. I try to receive the lesson from it and I attempt to do my best to have that build me stronger. So I'm taking in the negative and I'm transmuting it into positive. And so the negative energy actually creates more light within me because I filter it in the way that I do by learning the lesson from it. So when negativity comes at me as it does, and the more successful you are as an entrepreneur, the more you're going to experience this. I simply just say, yes, I'm, I, you know, bring it to me because what they don't know is they're actually making me stronger because of their criticism. They think they're tearing me down. They think that they're going to limit me or, or pull me down. And what, what they're actually doing is building me up because I'm using their criticism as a building block. And the more that I'm able to transmute their negativity into light, the further that I go. So that's my approach anyways, to dealing with, you know, with, with, unjust criticism, but there are, there's plenty of just criticism out there. And from that, I attempt to extract the best lessons that I can from it and just get better and stronger. And, and I move on. And the last thing I'll share with you in terms of a framework on this is you got to let it go. You know, you can't allow the opinions of others to stop you from your mission. Thank you for the question, C Rock. Yeah, I'm, love I'm that, ready man. for our love 15 that. minutes. I'm ready for our We're going to go a little minutes. longer than 15 now. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Thank you, C-Rock. Appreciate it, Ryan. Awesome question. Ryan, I just want to ask you a question real quick. Um, so, you know, I know you promised us to the hour at nine, which would be a full two hours. Um, so, but we have a full stage. We got 150 people here right now. We got almost a thousand. We're in the room. Grant might come back. I mean, we, we got billionaires on stage. Would, would you... Would you be able to, to spend more time? I want to check your time. I'm totally yeah, no pressure. I, I, I'm, totally I'm, I don't need to shut it down right now. Let's, let's keep going. If there's more questions, I'm happy to answer them. You got a whole stage full of people who are loving you right now and just have tons of questions. Totally up to you, though. Let's go. Right. Let's do All it. Right. Let's do it, folks. We got the green light from Ryan, folks. You got Ryan Blair here, folks. Top uh, number one New York Times bestselling author. He actually had five. He had a royal flush. He had the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and several others for his first book called Nothing to Lose. Check that out. Matter of fact, I want to make a little pr pr proposal for you guys, folks. Whoever buys uh, whoever buys his book, uh, you buy as many as you want, but the, the proposal is at least one. Buy the book, take a picture holding the book, okay? And then send it to 
Ryan's uh, website, CC me on it. So, okay, we got Facebook, uh, social media all, of all sorts, Twitter. If, if you guys will send it to me, the best one, I will repost on my own page on Facebook. I got over 800,000 followers. The best one, what is most books, the best looking picture, I'll repost with your name right to you on my Facebook page. You got to take a picture of Ryan's holding his book, or you, and you do it with my books too if you can. That'll, re, that'll really look cool. So Ryan's book, this is all about Ryan's show though. So Ryan with his book, Nothing to Lose or Rock Bottom, The Rock Star, take a picture with that. And we'll get and, and I'll repost it over 800,000 followers on on Facebook. Okay, so let's do that. It's a little game for everybody. All right. Other than that, folks, we're gonna take some more questions. But before we do that, I have to honor the fact that 103 people have shared, and I want to see some more. We got Farrah has recently shared. Thank you, Farrah, for sharing the room. Tom Chenault has shared. Thank you, Tom. He says he's all grown up. Good to see you. Rex Sykes has shared. So I don't know, um, Tom, if you're around. You know, I want to introduce you to Tom Chenault, one of the top uh, radio guys out there. We also got Rex Sykes in the house. So, so Rex, Rex, you want to ask a question? I know, I know you usually have questions, Rex Sykes. Or Tom I do. Chenault. I got him. Hey, Ryan, I've oh, known Tom, you for a Tom. long. Yeah. I and here's what I'm going to tell everybody. I don't know what he's doing with the 13 employees, but you buy the jockey, not the horse. And I've known Ryan since he was a little kid. And he walked in and we sat down, had a cup of coffee, and he had the confidence of a Grant Cardone in those days. And I knew he was going somewhere. I counted him out twice, which was, I saw him sell that company to Blythe. I mean, this kid grew up. And what I loved about him was not only his net worth grew, but his spirituality and his, his humility went with it. And I watched him get married. I watched him have that little child. And I just want to tell you right now, Ryan, I'm very, very proud of you. And it's just, it's with great joy I see you and listen to you with so much humility telling these people to play it as big as they can. So just thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm proud of you, buddy. Oh, thank you, Tom. I, I I feel like you're the father I never had right now, my brother. Thank you. It's been a long time. Yeah, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. All right, that's awesome. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you. And by the way, Tom has beat the record, Ryan. I want to let you know on my podcast, three and a half hours of interview. And you thought two hours plus was bad. <laughs> Tom is three and a half hours. It was incredible, though. Like, we learned so much. So thank you. I appreciate that, Tom. Tom and his son, Adrian, awesome. They might be here on the stage one day soon, too. So thank you again, Tom. Appreciate that. Hey, Dr. Finance, can I, can, I'm with a friend. Can I ask another a question to, to uh, Ryan? D David, we can't hear you. It sounds real muffled. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm here with a friend, and I just – so the question was, if you're not really sure on, like, your calling, like – how how would you how would you figure out what what your calling is? Can you hear me or no? Yeah, I hear you. You know you're you're gonna you're gonna have clues through your life experience, and you really have to do some introspection and look for the pattern. Look for the times where you came alive, like the times where you came alive in the work that you did. Like for example, I came alive when I wrote that judge a letter. And he told me I should, you know, write in college, not in prison. I came alive when I'd write to, you know, uh, I'd write articles and show them to friends. And, you know, I'd see them, you know, emotionize, get emotional as a result of it. And so, you know, there's, there's certain clues that have been left along the way. And you want to go back and look at your memories and look at the times where, you know, you were lit up with the work that you did. And that will let you know or that will lead you to the work that you should be doing. Each and every single one of us, in my humble opinion, has a calling on our heart. And when you find that, and you find that way to express your soul, you're literally expressing your soul. And so there's each and every one of us that has a pattern of work in our, our background. You just gotta go back through and look through that pattern and then extract the gold from it. And then that will help you, you know, find the path. Does that help, David? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, a friend of mine had asked me about that. So there's, you know, this kind of struggling with direction on where to go and 
you know, just so that that's helpful. I'm going to check out your, uh, your site too, man. That, that link looks awesome. So I'm going to send them yeah. there and also get a copy of your book. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, I, I have some frameworks I developed on, I've developed on this subject because I've thought deeply about it, but the short answer, you know, is your soul leaves clues. But we, once we discover our soul's intention, and one of the things I'll share with you about this, and this is getting spiritual, is that, you know, you start your journey at the furthest point from where you want to wind up. But we often get stuck. We get stuck by, you know, taking a job somewhere or, or get stuck by taking on too much responsibility or get stuck by distractions or laziness or some of these other things. And so we oftentimes don't go far enough on our journey and we get stuck in a particular place, but we intended to go a long way on our journey. We, you know, our, our intention is to have a long journey where we learn a lot from this journey. And so when we get stuck, we just have to find out what that soul's journey is and then stop doing the things that are holding you in place, learn the lessons that that particular season is intended to teach you and then move on to brighter lessons from there. I mean, is there, is there a, like, how do you, like, how do you do that though? Like, is there a process or is it, a, is, is it a journaling? Is it working with somebody? Like, where does that start? I guess. It's, it's a combination of, of all of the above. You know, I, I really got to my soul's journey knowing specifically what my purpose was on the planet through the process of prayer and meditation and doing the deep inward work. But in retrospect, I can go back and look at the pattern of my, my life and I can see one pattern. It was always, I was always here to be an inspiration and to serve you know, humanity in my highest capacity. And I had a lot of missteps along the way. And when you're off your soul's journey, you're going to suffer. And so when you're on journey and you're on the path, you're not gonna suffer, you're gonna feel alive and you're gonna feel energized when you're out of alignment with that journey, you're going to feel suffering. And so that's what suffering is designed to do is to nudge you back, you know, to where you're supposed to go. So if you're suffering in your job, it's time to, you know, look at new career aspirations, or if you're suffering at the current place that you're at right now, it's like that is the signal that it's time for you to make a move and to make a shift in your life. I highly recommend, you know, any of us that are doing transformational work, you know, we are the ones that can, you know, we're trained and, and have developed programs and curriculum that help people get out of that blocked point. And so whether it be a program that I run or one that many of the esteemed colleagues on the stage run, I highly recommend doing transformational work when a person is experiencing suffering because they're blocked. And I know people that have, you know, significant sums in their bank accounts that have that same level of suffering. They may have made money you know, on Wall Street or made money doing something. And then they've discovered that that wasn't what their soul's journey, you know, should have been. And now they're suffering without purpose, even though they might be making a ton of money. So, you know, transformational work isn't just for those people that are, you know, that are that are yeah, at the beginning stages of their journey. It's, it's for people oftentimes at more mature stages of their journey as well. Okay, thank you, David. Appreciate it. That was an awesome question. Actually, I'm glad that you brought that up because I wanted to hear the spiritual side of Ryan, folks. Ryan does really cool stuff. I, I know he's an entrepreneur, successful, and he's got books and all that stuff. But the thing that I was pulling out the most from my interview with Ryan, that he's really tapped in to a high level of spirituality. And I mean, he really knows a lot about, and Diamond, you would appreciate this mindset and all that stuff. I mean, he's had some of the best mentors in the world. So thank you, David. Awesome question. Appreciate that. And Ryan, you're doing awesome. All right. So folks, we're going to get some more questions. We've got some amazing people on stage. Hello, Dr. I want to hear from... Yes. It's Rex. <laughs> oh, Rex, there you go. Yeah, I was calling you before. Thank you, Rex. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's always great to follow Tom Chenault anywhere I go. If I can follow him uh, in person, down the road, or on a platform, it's a good thing. It's a good day. Hey, Ryan, I, I first found out about your 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 book nothing to lose about seven years ago i got into the bathtub to read it i thought i'll read a chapter i didn't get there i didn't did, didn't get out of the tub until i'd read about three quarters of your book and i got out of the tub immediately bought books for my children and for a few of my friends and sent them off uh just an a standing story and a standing book and then i got your second book so 
Uh, I'm just very happy to have this opportunity to say, hey, on the platform like this. I have two questions. They're both brief. The first question. Um, just one question, Rex. Come on, we got a whole stage here. <laughs> well, it, because the first question is, is they can be short answers, but one, okay. is, All right. one, is, one is, what should people not do? We know what people should do. We always get told that, but what should they not do? What do they need to avoid or or, or not do in order to move forward. And last, and the second question would be, if you lost it all, then what? How are you doing? Um, so the first the first answer is, you know, the, the biggest hindrance to success in our society right now is 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 distractions. There are there are brilliant minds at great big companies like Facebook and Google and Apple and, you know, a variety of others, YouTube and so forth that are trying to monetize your attention. And so if you don't build the skill of training your attention, you're going to be in trouble in this society. So you have to learn how to train this, you know, train your, your attention and you have to stop being distracted, but you have to build the skill to do that because it is you against a, a, probably a hundred thousand engineers and psychologists and brilliant thinkers that are trying to steal your attention so that they can monetize it. And so you have to do the work to steal your attention back. The second piece of uh, your question was around what would I do if I had to start all over again? And, you know, I have to tell you that once you have built the skill of, of being successful as an entrepreneur, and there's a number of skills, there's, you know, sales skills and marketing skills. And you know, some might argue one skill is more important than the other, but once you've built an adequate skill level, you can you can create. And so I don't have much fear of that because I know that I can create because I have built significant skills as an entrepreneur through my 25 year journey, you know, doing so. And that's that's the most important thing that I can tell the people in the audience is build the skills and build skill every day. And you never stop building skill. I'm I'm still learning new skills. You know, building uh, a business that's virtual is a new skill for me. I built a business that was, you know, highly social and dispersed through a worldwide distribution network. And now I'm, you know, learning Zoom and learning these new skills. So you're constantly learning skills. And the more skills that you build in the subject of entrepreneurship, the more confidence that you have that you can weather any storm. I just want to say beautiful answer. Couldn't, couldn't be a better answer than the both that you just gave. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rex. Appreciate it. Awesome response, Ryan. And Ryan, Rex is a, a multifaceted. Um, how do I even explain him? He's, he does so many things, including a film film director. He's he's a legend in that area too. So um, awesome. Thank you, Rex. Appreciate that. And um, I would like to just turn it to Jackie real quick. Jackie Min Minsky is our our help, our honorary co-host tonight. She's helping out. She's Ryan's executive, and uh, she wants to talk about this um, altercall.com link we have at top at the top. I know, David, you had you had asked the question about how do you get to the next step? How do you, you know, if you want to learn more about like fixing, you know, all those kind of stuff that you talked about? Well, well Jackie's going to lead you guys. If you had the same question as David, she's going to tell you about the event tomorrow. I think that's the first step. So go ahead, Jackie. Okay, so I'm feeling called to do this. Are you guys ready? I want, I want, you have to make some noise though for me to take my next step. So let's unmute and make some noise for Ryan. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's make some noise. I don't hear anything. Okay, okay. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. I'm feeling called to do this. So if you guys register for tomorrow's event, we're going to have breath work, sound healing, meditation. If you guys register and if you come to tomorrow's event and you take a photo and you share it on your story, tag Ryan, then DM me your address. We will send you a free copy of either or Ryan's book. So why don't we try that? So again, guys, all you have to do is register for tomorrow's free event. Tag Ryan in the story tomorrow while you're at the event and then DM me your address and we will send you a free book. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, Jackie. That's very kind of you guys. So so check it out. And that's the link at the top, folks. We're going to leave it up there for about another maybe 10, 15 minutes or so. Then I want to actually put the, uh, the podcast interview because I, I know a lot of you want to hear the real story behind Ryan. Ryan tells it all and he talks about his documentary too, folks. And I made a bet with everyone. I, I bet the 50% in this room who watch his documentary, Nothing to Lose, I guarantee at least 50% will walk away with at least one tear from the end of that show. 
So it's called Nothing to Lose. Check it out. He's got it free on YouTube. It costs him several hundred thousand to do, but he's doing it because he wants to get the message out. That's what kind of guy Ryan is. So thank you, Ryan. All right, I'm going to get some more questions. I got some back channel questions um, from some of the senior members of the of the community. Uh, first, uh, John the Bomb has a question. So John, go ahead, John. Hey, what, a, what an incredible room as always, Dr. Finance. Um, John the Bomb, building others means business. Ryan, uh, you know, it's it's interesting, your story, and I'm going to definitely listen to the podcast with Dr. Finance. One thing I'm always intrigued with is the momentum that successful people have and the momentum that unsuccessful people sometimes or really always lose. And that's been something of a struggle for me. Like uh, there's been times I, I sold uh, a company in 2009 and then kind of got into what you just described a little bit earlier, stuck in some things in, in finance and stuff like that, which is fine. But it's I'd love to hear from you when you started to feel that true momentum. Yeah, I little, heard a little bit earlier, obviously being 13 and kind of describing that, what it did to you and, and then running into a mentor. But where was that inflection time for you of momentum? And how did you keep it up so that you could discover that, that big payoff? Well, there, there's a, yeah, I appreciate the question. There's been a couple of times. One, one key time was when I was just starting out as a technology uh, executive, or I was first a data center operator, and then I worked my way into you know, the executive level. And I watched a documentary, it was called Pirates of the Silicon Valley, and it was about the founding stories of Microsoft and Apple, and, and Elon Musk had a little, buy, a little, um, uh, little uh, you know, role in it, and as did a number of other notable entrepreneurs. And at that point in time, a spiritual thing came over me, and I just knew that I was going to be an entrepreneur. And I then made the decision, a very difficult decision, to leave you know, a $100,000 a year job and start my own business. And I did so having a mortgage at the time. I, you know, I'd done well in, in that job and I had a mortgage and a lease payment for my car. And I just said, I got to be an entrepreneur. And so I made the leap to becoming a full-time entrepreneur. And I haven't looked back since. And I've been a full-time entrepreneur now for 25 years. There's been a number of times on that journey where I killed my own momentum. Uh, Self-medication, living a decadent life, being you know, egotistical, a lot of these things kill momentum. And I've killed my own momentum many a times and self-sabotage my own momentum many a times. I've also had times where I've been able to create a significant momentum. And I've done it enough times that I now know how to build momentum and I now covet momentum. It is the most valuable thing that you can have going for you. It makes everything in life easier. It is like having the wind at your back. And it's difficult to get it. You know, at AlterCall, my current startup, for the first two years, you know, I was, I was working hard to get any level of momentum going. And it was, you know, it was really difficult. Now we have momentum and, you know, our sales are skyrocketing. We're up like 60 plus percent this month. And, you know, we're, we're growing by double digits every single month. And we're going to do that in a compounded way. And we're innovating in technology and doing a lot of things that you won't be able to tell by our website. But, you know, behind the scenes, we're innovating and we have momentum. And the thing that I'll tell you is once you get momentum, that's when you should work the hardest. Most people get momentum and then they quit working and then the momentum falls and then they're, you know, they're in a place where they're stuck again. When you have momentum, you should work the hardest. When you don't have momentum is when you should work the least. That's when you do the contemplation, the strategic thinking, the reading, the, you know, the analysis, that type of stuff. But once you have it, you got to run with it. It's part of the reason why I'm, I'm on this call right now and, and we're going deep is because we got momentum. And once you got momentum, you don't drop it. That is Love it, brother. Well, thank point. you. Good, John. No, hey, look, wow. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, I think uh, many of us that haven't hit the success levels of the Ryans and the Alex and stuff like that, that have had our own success at, at, at different levels, you know, just mm -hmm. wonder what's it going to take? What, like, where, like, what did I miss? How you know what and i try to go retrospect on it and that's some of the things that i think i keep on contemplating uh and looking at so those are things that uh you know hearing from something like that and where you kind of keep that momentum up and you're right i mean <laughs> it's very easy sometimes to get uh um uh, i don't know not satisfied no, are you but... at the supermarket i hear you checking out 
<laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm in you the can't car fool us. We got good ears here. This, we're, this no, is a I'm clubhouse. We're audio people. I'm, I'm backing up in the car. But uh, <laughs> no, anyway, I, I don't want to steal anybody else's time. I mean, phenomenal share. And that's the thing I, I think that's really interesting that I'm super curious from a high level is, you know, how, how, you know, what are the little tricks of momentum keeping? Because, you know, the, comfortable is what I was trying to say is I think at, at some points when you become – uh, decently successful, you know, comfort can steal your dream, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you, you know, so it's it's really interesting to to not have gotten to the levels that you guys have had, but having had my own success, and I know many people that have had, and, and we're all kind of like, like, man, what, what does it really take to kind of go to that next stratosphere? And I feel like for me, it seems to be the, the word that keeps on creeping into my soul, which is, John, when you get that momentum, like, like go full force. So I appreciate those kind words and, and inspiring words, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah. The, the, the solution is, is, you know, moment, the way to keep momentum is not, to not do the things that destroy or, you know, limit your momentum. And there's many things that once, you know, that are, that, that we all can do that sabotage momentum. And you just have to make sure that you don't have any of that in your life. And believe me, I've, I've had momentum fall apart, so many times that I've just studied this and now I live a lifestyle that, you know, that doesn't involve those things that sabotage momentum. And that is uh, heavy to do with the inward journey. You know, the the things that sabotage momentum, you know, becoming uh, complacent, as you mentioned, you know, self-medication, grandiosity, indulgence, there's plenty of things that, that can limit your momentum. And you have to be very conscious of that. And you have to, you have to make sure that you covet momentum so much so that you'll eliminate the things that are going to uh, remove you from that. Thank, thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. Awesome, John. Awesome, awesome question. All right, I just want to bounce real quick. We have um, we have several other people in here that a lot of people that still have questions. So, folks, last I left off, I'm going to jump back on track. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do a quick reset. So, folks, you're in the finance club, Jackie. Jackie, you are our co-host. How could I not give you the opportunity? Jackie, would you like to do a reset? I have to be honest. I am not good at room resets. Otherwise, I would love to. I know my strengths and my weaknesses. (laughs) Okay. All right. I would ask. Actually, Mike would be great with a reset. Mike Alden. Mike, you want to do a reset? I don't know if you're around, Mike. I am here. Sure. Why not? Let's give it a shot. So, man, I'm super excited to have been here. We are in the finance club that was created by Dr. Finance. He's bringing some of the greatest minds in the world into this club. I've learned so much, and I'm just also very, very you know, happy to be a part of it. We have my good friend, Ryan Blair. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's a number one New York Times bestselling author multiple times over. His companies have literally generated billions of dollars, and now he's giving back to the entrepreneurial world. He's giving back to the entire world itself with Alter Call. So if you want more information about Ryan, Click on that altar call. I know he has an event coming up. And also here in this club, make sure you're following the club. Click on that little box up top, the little house there, that Monopoly looking house. Make sure you give it a follow. Give everyone on stage a follow as well. And then lastly, again, this is a great connection tool. If you want to connect with anybody here on stage, you can certainly do that in the back channel. You can certainly do that on Instagram as well. My name is Mike Alden. Thank you for letting me do this, Dr. Finance. Take it away. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that, folks. Give Mike a follow as well. Mike is an awesome podcast guy, among so many other things. Do you know how successful Mike is? He actually at one time spent, uh, I believe you told me on the interview, $700,000 to wrap a NASCAR with his book <laughs> on the book. So if you go dig up, you can you can look Mike Alden. I saw the car, Mike, by the way. That's pretty cool. He actually, yeah, not a very good way to market a book, but it was certainly fun. <laughs> Yeah, and he basically put put his money where his mouth is and put his book on a car. I mean, I think it's the the coolest the coolest little trick to get the the marketing. But he did good, so thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. And all right, so we're gonna take some questions. Frankie actually had um, a question in the background. Before we get to Frank, uh, I just want to say thanks, Renee. Uh, Renee, you're, you're I know you're in listening mode, uh, mode, but if you wanted to ask a question, you're more than welcome. Renee is one of the top speakers out there professional speaker. So Renee, just flash your mic whenever you're ready. Let me know. Well, we got, uh, we, we have uh, Frankie in the background, Frank, Frankie Ferger. He's, he's uh, also a very successful entrepreneur as well as a co-author in this new 13 steps to riches book series that has uh, uh, my mentor, Sharon Lecter in her and several 
many others. So welcome, Frankie. You want to give a quick uh, question? Remember, one question per person, folks. We've got a lot of people on stage. Go ahead, Frankie. Hey, everyone. Yeah, this is Frankie. Thank you for the opportunity. You know, I really like the flow of the conversation. We've gone from mindset to mental toughness to momentum. So I really want to ask a question about how this mentality shows up in our strategy and tactics. Uh, in your book, From Rock Bottom to Rock Star Ride, you talk about how an entrepreneur needs to own their image. But along those lines, you also say that it's a mistake to outsource our problems because it actually can make the problem worse. But one of the things that we always hear out there is, you know, focus on your strengths, outsource for your weaknesses. And so how do people balance that dynamic of taking that personal responsibility, but also rounding out their business so ultimately they can fulfill the mission? Uh, this is Frankie. Thank you. Great question. You have to have a level of competency in every core component of your business. You can't just outsource this. And I've invested in companies. Oftentimes, um, the entrepreneur might be great at product and they're playing calls for them just to you know, hire a, a salesperson and they're just going to hire a salesperson and they're going to do all the sales. And the entrepreneur doesn't engage in the sales process and the understanding of how they're going to build their sales force and all of the details around that subject. And that's a mistake. You have to have a level of competency in each of the categories so that you can identify those people that are talented in those categories. Now, once you've developed the skill of identifying the talent, you know, you can outsource that. So when I'm dealing with a vendor, I will interview the vendor, I'll talk to the vendor, I'll assess the vendor. And if they're competent and skilled and they have the you know right values and we're aligned, then I'll engage with that vendor. But I have to have developed enough of an understanding of what they're doing in order for me to be able to identify those people that are talented and that are capable within the space. A lot of mistakes are made when you just hand off a core function of your business to another company and you later find out that they're not performing or that they're, you know, they're, they're not uh, to the level and quality that you need for your business to operate at the level that you desire it to. So to, specifically to your question around, you know, outsourcing your weaknesses, I don't believe you just outsource your weaknesses. I try to hire those people and surround myself with people that are complementary, you know, meaning that they, they are strong where I am weak. And so I'm strong in my particular area. And then I surround myself with people that are strong in their particular areas. And together, we are a combination of skills and strengths that is a broad spectrum that covers the main quadrants of, of, of characteristics necessary to have a functional culture and a successful team. And you know those quadrants are analytical thinking, execution, relationships, and influence. And so my team is assembled to fulfill those core quadrants. And I'm not great at all of them by any means. So I hire people that are great where I am not. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. And thank you, Frank. You awesome question. I just want to pivot for a second. Um, I want to also introduce you, Ryan, to a good friend of mine, Forbes Riley. She's actually a permanent co honorary co-host uh, to the stage because she was here the first night of the longest running room. She's the reason that millions of people were impacted because she came and I manifested her. I actually said, I said her name like three times on the stage. I said, Forbes Riley's coming. I have no idea where this came from. And she shows up in a room from 12 people, turns into 500 that went for 84 days straight, 24 hours a day, seven days a week because Forbes Riley actually showed up. I mean, it's like talking about hitting the lottery. So Forbes and I became good friends. So I want to, I want to introduce you to Forbes Riley, who's actually now on because of Clubhouse, she's on stage with people like Damon John and all kinds of famous people. So, and she's she's one of the top. Um, uh, actually, you know what? Why am I introducing her? I think you know her. Welcome yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? That is the cutest introduction I've ever experienced because you don't know the the past, but I just back channeled Dr. Finance and said, you know, it's a funny thing about Ryan Blair, but about fifteen or eighteen years ago, that man actually put me on stage to speak and he was one of the first people to do it so ryan nice to see you my brother thank you thank you it's a pleasure to see you too and i remember when you were on stage you had your brand new product and you got out there and i think we might have had maybe ten thousand people in the audience at that time or something like that it was a if i recall it was a pretty big room and you crushed it as you always do well i'll tell you what again for anybody listening in the beginning i've been listening for a little bit i had you know 
I had a dream, but I couldn't put all the pieces together. And I was in awe as I'm listening to Ryan talk about him fleshing out what he doesn't have. And he had two partners back then. And I was a, very much a lone wolf. I'd always done things myself, been on my own, been a spokesperson, could have used a few more mentors. And I remember when I first met the three of them, how well and how diverse your partners, I believe you took that company to a billion dollar exit, yeah? Yeah, yeah, my, me and my partners, uh, you know, we're, we were a, a beautiful combination and we're young and we started together and you were there back in our heyday. And it's been very nice to watch that. I will say it's been phenomenal. This particular stage that you're on, I was in Costa Rica with my daughter who I don't think you've met. She wasn't, a, well, no, yeah, she was very, very little back then. She just turned 19. She's running my company. She crushed it in her first year of business at 1.2 million. And wow. she and I were sitting on a mountaintop in Costa Rica. And I was turning to some one of the other guests. And I said, let me share this platform that I'm in love with. One reason is because this year, this is my year anniversary, I was saying there's not enough female speakers out there. There's beautiful men from Tony to, to we know all of them, from Les and Jack Canfield. And I said, I, I'm looking at this, this white space up there. And next day, I get a call from a thing called Real Summits, inviting me to speak. They reached about 7,000 or 8,000 people a month. And I became a headline speaker every month. Since then, we have been crushing it. We blew up the coaching business. And I, you know the funny thing? I just want to honor you. Because I love watching how you built what you did. How you let each other find their strengths. And I still talk to Blake. And you're amazing. Absolutely amazing. And so I've read your books. And your story, and I'm really happy to be in this room that my daughter and I were part of growing up, you know, a while ago. So welcome, and welcome. Wow, thank you, Forbes. Appreciate that. It's awesome. And Forbes, I'm glad you came here. We haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Uh, we had a lot of big uh, guest speakers on here, but you're always welcome to come in here. Um, hopefully, you can stick around and, and enjoy us. We got a great show coming up. And by the way, Forbes, I didn't even realize that you were. You weren't even following this club until now. It's my fault for not asking you. I apologize, but I, I made you the leader of the club as you as you rightfully deserve. So thank you for appreciate that. You know, I'll tell you appreciate what, it's the snowball effect, man. I am so busy between speaking and producing and doing movies and books and and falling in love and just loving that part of life. So you know, but I, I forgot it was Friday night. That's how crazy I'm like, oh my god, it's Friday. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's okay. And by the way, do you know look, you got Mike Alden. Like Mike Alden's right next to you. Did you realize that Mike is actually helping to co-host this stage tonight with Jackie Mansky? I know you and Mike had had a past as well, selling stuff on, on infomercials. Uh, do you know? Do I? Just, <laughs> nice to meet you know, you I think I'm the luckiest. Yeah, nice to meet you too, Michael. Um, I must be the luckiest little girl in the world because and that's how Clubhouse happened for me because all my friends were on it. Mike, by the way, not only this amazing lawyer, but he can. We talk about selling ice to Eskimos. Talk about a brilliant construct when it comes to the world of infomercials. And we've done tons of them. And he is just brilliant when it comes to writing books, being legal ease, and crushing infomercials. So I'm just going to hang out and listen to the boys. All right. I appreciate thanks, you, for it. I'm blushing. Ray, <laughs> you can't forget Alex Stern. I'm, I'm not going to go on how I know Alex Stern. Yeah, you're sitting next to Alex Stern. Too. That's what I'm saying. We got over a million dollars stage here. You're like, this is crazy. When you get to have, just look around, all these major people. If I was to assemble a stage, right? Now, Forbes, tell me, right? If I was to assemble a stage like this, what do you think? How much would the stage cost? Now, remember, you got you got directors down here. You got the fastest running man in the world that was here. We got Sergio. I mean, you know, all these all these Grant Cardone was on earlier. What do you think this stage would be worth? You know, it's funny in today's day and age, a million's not a lot of money. And you got Fred Moskowitz, one of my other brothers, on the other side of us. It's I think the information is you know how they say it's priceless. That's what you've got here. You couldn't put us all in a room and pay us enough to be there. But in this environment. How we lean on each other. I mean, I'm, I am I was on Grant's stage. By the way, Ryan, that's a cool thing. Two years ago, I was one of the keynote speakers with Grant and Ed Marlette and Bradley, and I watched him just crush it. Actually, so let me ask Ryan a question. Your longevity, you created a company, you then reinvented yourself. What is one of the secrets to your passion for continuing to do what you do? Mm, my passion, well, you know, it comes to my spiritual roots. I believe that I have a calling in my heart and I believe that I was 
I was, you know, I've, I'm called to be here to serve and to make the world a better place. And I would also say that you know, I have a 12 year old son that sees everything I do and models my example. And so that's the other key ingredient to my, you know, my desire to step up as a leader and continue to serve at my highest capacity is I want to leave him an example to follow and instill in him the beliefs and the values that I have learned by way of trial and error. And hopefully he can take my wisdom and take it to the next level and, and share it even further than I have. That's beautiful. Thank you. And thank you, Forrest. Appreciate that. And and by the way, I forgot this to talk about. So we got one of the best hosts on Clubhouse too. So we got Diamond Diva here. And in the in the audience, folks, we got Glenn Morshower. I don't know. I I know some of you guys on stage know him, but Glenn was here. He rocked the stage one night as a main guest speaker, I think back like six months ago. He can't talk right now, but Glenn, thank you for showing up and supporting the club. Glenn is you know, he's oh, a I'm, famous you know actor. What? I'm, I'm going to jump in real quick again. Glenn and I are old friends from my acting days. I know, right? Let me tell you something. Somebody said your net worth is what? Your net worth? How do I know all these guys? Glenn Morshower, not only a brilliant teacher, but I just finished watching him on Ozark. Oh, my God. When you crush that, if you get a chance to go to a room, even if you're not an actor, Glenn has a way that he approaches the acting business like a business. And he and I were on the TV series 24 together way back when. You were on 24 too? I didn't know that. Season three. Wow. Yeah, you didn't know that? No, oh, I didn't wow. know that. Wow. I play, the, I play the press agent to the president, and you want to hear what's really scary, and this is going back a, probably a decade. We were fighting a pandemic at that time. That's what season three was about, and I watched some of that. And, you know, L.A. was shutting down. The airport was shutting down. The whole world was going to die. And I'm afraid that we predicted, you know, the future. It's kind of weird to watch it. Wow. That's in- – <laughs> well – or maybe they, uh, what's it called, manifested it, right? <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, Forbes. Appreciate that. And Glenn, shout out to you, brother. Whenever you're ready to come back, love to have you back as a guest. Glenn is a, a famous actor, folks. He's right down here in the, in the audience. He can't talk right now, but definitely give him a follow. Ryan, it's your stage, though. Let's get back to Ryan. I want to welcome everybody who's coming here. we got Ryan Blair, number one New York Times bestselling author and uh, also a serial entrepreneur. He, One of his main businesses he sold out for almost 800 million dollars billions in sales ryan um want to respect your time just want to check you know we're, we're good if you if you got another you know 20 minutes 30 minutes it's totally up to you i definitely give you at least another 20 30 minutes for sure whatever whatever you feel is you're you're the expert at this i i'm happy to serve and i'm going to stop serving when you tell me it's time to wrap it up well, well ryan i really appreciate that and just to let you know, like for you and for the way this stage going and going back to your momentum thing, um, it, <laughs> the the record I ever did was 10 hours. That was the first night when I made the longest running room. For you, I would do 12 <laughs> hours. The problem is, <laughs> and believe me, it's it's dizzying doing what I'm doing. And I, I, I you know, I, Diamond will tell you, running these kind of rooms. Um, but, you know, the clubhouse, they have this new rule to keep the recording. You can only have it for six hours. So. I figure, yeah, I mean, if, if maybe another half hour, and if you want to chill out the rest of the night until we close the room, you're also always welcome for that as well. Yeah, half an hour would work perfect for me. Okay, sounds great. Or right, thank you, Ryan. So I figured we could probably get at least five more questions in. So, folks, flash your mics if you have a question. We're going to leave off where we left. We're going to start off where we left off. Um, I believe it was uh, – oh, Jude. I got to get Jude in here on um, Kamakaiism. All right, so Kamakaiism and then Jude. Uh, Jude is, is one of the top um, interviewers. She's, she has really good questions. But guy, Kamakaiism is awesome, too. She's very well-connected. Welcome, Kamakaiism. Oh, and then we'll go with Hello, you. hello, hello. Thank you so much, Dr. Finance. I do have a question for you, Ryan. It's um, I love the quote that you have. It's don't let anyone steal your milk. I'd love to hear your perspective of what that meant for you. That that actually came from when I was in juvenile hall. The kids would come up to you and they'd ask if they could have your milk. And if you wanted to be polite and you said yes, pretty soon they would come up and take everything from you all the time. And so I learned that when you allow people to take from you, they will continue to take from you. So you have to have some boundaries. You have to set your boundaries. You have to stand strong on your boundaries. And you have to make sure that other people respect those boundaries. And so that's the, the, uh, you know, the story behind I don't let anyone steal my milk is that I set boundaries and I hold my boundaries firmly. 
thank you so much. I do appreciate that. And my eight-year-old was listening to you explain that and he laughed and he won't let anyone steal his make. Thank you. There you go. We just taught boundaries with the analogy of, of school milk. Absolutely. Perfect. <laughs> thank you so much. Back to you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Kamakaiism. All right. We got, let me introduce you, Ryan. We got Jude here. Okay. So Jude, uh, her name is Judith Jude Jernud. She's actually really, she's been doing um, interviews and all kinds of media stuff for, for very long. So she's had a lot of famous people on her, on her show. So Jude, welcome Jude. How are you? One question. Remember one question per person. We've got a full stage here, but welcome Jude. Excited to see you. Dr. Finance. It's always great to see you and be with you, Ryan. This is the second time I've heard you. And we talked the other night about spiritual and your, your faith on a question I asked you. And, and this is a big word. And so maybe it won't, maybe it doesn't, you wouldn't think like that, but you know, Einstein did. Einstein believed that everyone has genius. And I know that's a big word. And, and I think it's God given talent or God given gifts. And when you talked about so many things, I've heard you talk about your spirituality, your comeback, your perseverance, uh, your your soul searching, your how you went so deep in your own transformation. So my question to you, when you look at everything you talk about, uh, the, your risk-taking abilities and, and persistence and staying with it and getting back up, but when you look at your life right now, what would you say is that one, whether genius or that one gift that makes you who you are? Great question. I appreciate that. I, I would say that I, I turn the negative into positive. And it's a, it's a mindset that every time that I've been hit in life with things that were very difficult adversities, I found a way to turn them into my own authority. And there are a lot of things that have come my way in life that I didn't expect. And there are a lot of things that I did that I take responsibility for, but everything, whether it be self-imposed or delivered otherwise, has turned into my authority. And I leverage that authority. And once you've overcome an adversity, it literally becomes your spiritual authority. So as opposed to looking at my adversities like a victim, which is the consciousness that many people have around their adversity, I look at it and I wear my adversity proudly on my sleeve. I mean, I literally put them in the bookstore basically because I'm I'm a, a battle-tested soldier of sorts. So that's the mindset that I have. And I would say that that is the key ingredient to the success that I've had thus far. Thank, thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Dr. Fernandez. Great to be with you. Back to you from Jude. Thanks, Jude. Appreciate that. Sorry, I got I got caught in the DM. Folks, I uh, got a lot of people on stage. Don't take it personal if I don't get back to you all. I'm, I just scammed through per, per, uh, important messages in order to make the stage function properly. So I have probably 100 DMs right now. I'm sitting at with the number. And, and uh, I, I have, um, you know, I'll, if I get back to you, uh, uh, if, I definitely will see it. If not, my team will see it within the next day or two. But I'm just looking for the emergency ones, okay? So thank you, folks. And uh, thanks again, June. Awesome having you on stage. Welcome. Appreciate that. And we got... Um, Dr. Christopher had a question for you. Dr. Christopher, I, I believe, would be very good to, to ask a question for your spiritual side. So go ahead, Dr. Christopher, if you're still here. Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I really appreciate everything you've had to say, Ryan. I mean, I, I really believe that uh, just uh, across the board, every, every statement you've made, it's so quintessential that anybody that's trying to dominate in business hears these messages because it comes across in a really... Uh, 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 assimilable way. And, and it goes deep. I love that. Uh, let my uh, adversities be, become my spiritual authority. That's, that's powerful. I'm going to tattoo that on me in some form or fashion. You know, I was the first guy to put the products at a Whole Foods. Imagine this, the first guy to hang the sign in Austin, Texas as a test case in 2001 that said raw superfoods. I was literally the first guy to put products in a Whole Foods. I had no idea what I had, and it all came from meeting a man on a bridge when I was five years old. Thanks, Anyways, Dr. Christopher. And, uh, yeah, please just get, uh, if you can yeah, go yeah. straight to the so, question. So, so the state. question is, it just uh, I, everything that you shared, people need to take it to heart. But my question is, is in building businesses, right now, our main focus, uh, my wife and myself, is making it about the actual farmers first, the employees second, 
and the CEOs and the investors last? And have you ever thought or have you ever seen like what, what, what is your thoughts about that? Similar to like how organic Valley is made with milk and we're working on two key amazing things that have never been done before. And it's so, it's so difficult to pitch the investors around that. And we're in such a time where it's about giving back, giving forward as we're progressing as a whole. And I'm just curious about your thoughts on that. Well, you know, if I was an investor, I wouldn't want you to say that I'm last. I'd want you to say that, you know, our, our priority is first the customer, in your case, the farmer, and that we're going to put all of our energy on that. But I wouldn't necessarily, you know, lead my investors to believe that I wasn't going to care deeply about them and serve them in my highest capacity. I do understand the strategy that you're, you're describing, and I think it's commendable to have a customer centric, customer first strategy. I just think that, you know, that, that, that you should definitely not tell investors that we're putting you last. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate that. All right, folks, we're going to get a few more questions in. If you want to flash your mics, let's see who has a question. So, oh, I want to welcome a few people to stage, by the way. So thank you, Alia. Welcome, Alia. Appreciate it. Alia was actually, uh, she's a senior member of the club. I'm glad you found it. We, um, so a lot of the members of the former club we used to be in, we had the rooms every Friday for about nine months. And about three months ago, I started doing my own club. So still trying to find a lot of people stuck out there in the metaverse. Ali, I appreciate you for being here. We got the rooms every Friday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Usually 6 to 12 is the room, but the guest speaker 7 to 9. Ryan Blair here. We have number one New York Times bestselling author, billions in sales. He's actually hanging out until 10 o'clock tonight. Incredible. So another 15, 20 minutes. So welcome, Alia. How are you? Everything good? I'm amazing. Thank you so much. And so, such amazing feedback. I completely agree with what was said and just incredible to hear your story. So kindred all the way around. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor Thanks, to be here. Thanks, Alia. Alia, did you, did you want to ask a question for, for Ryan? I mean, yeah, no, I mean, I just, I'm just enjoying listening and I think the questions so far have been good, but yeah, I mean, okay, I, I have one. How do you, for, for purposes of the room and, and just the, the conversation in your story, how do you, whenever challenged with your why of whatever it is, like, especially when we meet resistance in projects or dreams or things like, what is it that you enact within yourself? I mean, you spoke a little bit, but like, is in your toolbox, what's that key star thing that gets you going through and keeps you moving forward? Well, I, you know, I just see it all as a lesson, a lesson that's gonna make me stronger. So anything that comes my way that is negative, I'm going to turn into positive somehow, some way. And it's a mindset and it's a, it's a, pers a perspective and a level of awareness. See, challenges are going to come our way until we master them. And the same challenge is going to appear over and over until you actually gain a mastery over the challenge. And then it's not a challenge at all because you know how to handle it. So because of my accumulated experience as an entrepreneur, many of the things that I used to lose a lot of sleep about at night no longer affect me because I have mastered these challenges. You know, if a person quits or, you know, something is late or a project's not launched on time, those you, those things used to make me have sleepless nights. And now it's, it's you know, a challenge that I have uh, experienced and I have uh, mastered and I no longer allow it to affect me as such. So, you know, I, I think that just the perception and the perspective around negativity, I see it as a valuable asset for me to be able to build the strengths that I need to succeed as an entrepreneur. Thank you, Ali. Awesome. Thank you. Nice to see you and, and pleasure having you here. Yeah, definitely um, feel free to join us again every Friday. We're going to be doing these rooms. So we got Alex Stern actually coming up. He's sitting on the stage right now, uh, co-founder of Constant Contact, folks. He'll be here next Friday. So Ryan's here. Let's honor his time. Uh, let's get a few more questions in. Uh, if you can flash your mics. Oh, let's see. Yes, we got uh, Aurea and then, uh, oh, Coach Light. So Coach Light and then Aurea. Hey, uh, peace and blessings, uh, Ryan. It's been about 15 years. Uh, and I have a similar question evolved from when I first met you. In connection to 
youth development uh, from one troubled youth to another troubled youth who evolved ourselves. How do you make it work being a dad and balancing, you know, that uh, that that balance of running an enterprise and still being prime, you know, having your family being first, particularly raising a son? Yeah, it's a great question. It's good to see you again, my friend. My my approach is I integrate my son into the business. I tell him this is our business. You know, I, I let him know what I'm doing. I explain to him that, you know, the challenges, the things that I'm working on. I take him into the dashboard. I show him the accounts. I explain to him, you know, the different strategies that we're looking at. And I even go to him for advice. You know, I'll say, you know, I want to help serve more people. What are your ideas on that? And he feels ownership in it. And then we have a deal. And that is that he gets to, uh, you know, call a timeout on me. So in the event that my work is, uh, and I'm not paying attention to him because I'm paying too much attention to his work, he can call a timeout. And when he calls it, and he does, you know, I break and I say, okay, I'm going to put some attention over here and spend some quality time with you. So I've trained him that he has some power over the situation and he has some control over the situation. And if he does feel that I'm not giving him the attention that he needs, he knows to speak up and that I will, you know, break that pattern and, and give him the attention that he's seeking. So he's my partner in this business. It's, it's not separate. We're doing this together. And it's my hope that one day he'll continue my work. If he doesn't, that's up to him, but I'm training him and teaching him the business in the anticipation that he will one day want to pick up this business and continue to expand on the impact that I'm able to do through it. <laughs> and when he tells you, I told you so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, I told him that, so we have a deal. He, I get three strikes. So he'll tell me strike one dad, you know, because there, there are times where I get, you know, uh, caught up in my work, but I, I do try to be as conscious of a parent as I possibly can be. And I do, um, when, you know, when I have my son, I have him 50% of the time when I have him, you know, I'm dedicated to him and I make him my first priority, you know, and, and I, I do, uh, uh, attempt to be as conscious as I possibly can, but by no means am I perfect at it. But I, you know, I, he does get excited about, like, I'll explain to him the revenue for the day or the revenue for the week. And, you know, it's, it's really interesting for him to learn about that stuff. So he's curious about it. And so I really try to engage his curiosity and, and get him to advise me in this business. All right. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. that coach light. Awesome question. All right. Before we go on to Araya, she, she actually has, um, she, that's her question up next. Uh, Aurea, Emmy Award TV show host, and I believe Aurea uh, has so many, she has so many amazing qualities. I believe she was, Aurea, I think that you were the one who told me you were on the front cover of a magazine recently. Is that right? Uh, no, that's not me. My that's not you? Okay, I got a little confused. Sorry, Aurea. But you should but <laughs> Thank you. This is a great conversation. And Ryan, great answer. I love your answer about your son and, and raising him. That's so important. Well, Ryan, I just finished uh, tonight. I was hosting Atlanta Live because that's why I do host in television here in Atlanta. And I popped on Clubhouse for my long ride home. And here you are, Ryan. And <laughs> I remember you when I worked with Blake and Nick and you in Visalis when Blake brought me in and we were building the Atlanta area. And I remember great, great memories with you guys. So wonderful. I've always, you know, trying to keep up with you. So my question is, how did working with partners, running a direct selling company, impact you as a entrepreneur moving forward? Lessons learned from that experience. Uh, it's a great, it's a great lesson. You know, we, myself, Nick and Blake, we were really young. And so we grew up together and, and I have, you know, tremendous memories with them. And I have a tremendous amount of love for them. They, they're some of the most talented people that I've ever had the privilege to work with. And, you know, they, they're superstars and they're, they're both doing high level work and they've continued to, and I know that they're going to continue to, uh, you know, make massive change. I think the three of us needed to be partners because we were not fully developed in the respective skills necessary to run a business. I have, you know, since developed skills as of they in their respective areas. And, and so I, I don't have, uh, partners like I once did, uh, because I'm capable of capitalizing this company and building the company and developing the talent and so forth. 
I do consider my team members my partners, though. So it's it's you know it is a little bit different in that you know they're not necessarily equity partners with me, but they are partners with me because as a CEO, you know you're only as good as your team. And at Vicalis, I had a great team. My title was CEO, so I was the leader of the team. But I was I was supported by some great team members, of which Nick and Blake were some of the best ever. And I had a variety of other great team members as well that were a part of our organization that you know that we couldn't have built it without. Um, and I'm looking to do the exact same thing in the organization I'm starting now, and that is to bring on great team members, people that align with our values, people like Jackie, who's part of the room. And you know, people that have ambition and desire, and a real purpose and a calling on their heart to impact the world, and so that's what we're recruiting for and developing for now. And and it's the same approach that we used back in the day at Vicalis. It's just that I'm now a little more mature in my my ways and a little more structured, and and uh, and uh, I'm building it a little different this way, I'm building it with all of the wisdom and knowledge and experience and the trial and error. That we, you know, we went through it by Salas as young entrepreneurs. I'm now building this company, you know, as a fresh uh, slate, uh, and I'm instilling all that we, all that I learned uh, through that experience in this experience. I hope I that answers it. your question. It really did. Thank you. It's so good to catch up with you, and just that's fantastic. Yeah, we all we all learn and grow. Thank you for sharing that, Ryan. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Ray. Appreciate that awesome question. All right, folks, we're going to take two more questions because I definitely want to respect Ryan's time here. He's going overboard because he's he knows that this is an awesome, awesome room. So uh, we got a billion dollar stage here, folks. Let's check it out. All right. So before we do that, I just want to uh, give some respect to um, some of the people who have actually done the shares. So thank you, Noah. She has shared the room. Jenny Saunders has shared. Appreciate that, J Jenny. Michael Fedek has shared. Appreciate that, Michael. And Ken DeWano and Darwin Loriano has shared the room. Noah and, and Renee. So, folks, if you can hit that little those little arrows at the bottom and share the room. And if you share the room, then I would definitely acknowledge you if I can. And we got 121 people who've shared the room this far. What this does is it brings it into the community because Clubhouse has updated their system about two three weeks ago, and it's not like it was before. In order to get the people out there because the calendars are all weird. Sharing is, is, a, is a very effective m m method. So well, it looks like somebody else just shared the room. Oh, Iden Goley has shared the room. Thank you, Iden, appreciate that. All right, we're gonna get two more questions. I know that uh, Mari has a question. Mari, we'll get to you in just a second. Let's see if you can flash your mics, folks. I wanna see um, anyone who knows Ryan personally, if you have a question, let's go with that, because I want I definitely wanna cover if someone knows Ryan, you wanna come just say, even if it's just to say hello to Ryan, just flash your mic or just, uh, let's see. Okay, so Mary, your your question, Mary, you're up. Go ahead, Mary. Mary Sokomoto. Thank you, Dr. Finance. Hello, everyone, and hello, Ryan. My name is Mary from Japan, and actually, I listened to your podcast, um, Dr. Finance podcast featuring Ryan, yesterday. And um, Ryan, my question is: What are the specific hacks not to be doomed by negativity, causing just sleepless nights? As far as as far as mastering your challenges. What are the, is the, is the question, what are the specific hacks? Can you repeat the question again? Oh, yes. What are the specific hacks not to be doomed by negativity? Um, earlier, you mentioned about like how yeah. you have sleepless nights, but yeah, yeah. you mastered the challenges. So yeah. I wanted to learn like your specific hacks where it didn't cause you to fall into sleepless nights because the negativity happening yeah, I, I have to, I'll give you the best practice for that. And that is one, you have to examine the prior day, whether you do that at the end of the day or you do it the next day, you have to examine that day and examine every day and ask yourself, what did you learn? You know, what, what did that day teach you? And then you have to let go of anything negative that you're carrying. You don't want to carry the negativity from one day into the next day into the next day because negativity accumulates. And as that negativity accumulates pretty soon, you know, you are going to have sleepless nights pretty soon. You know, the way I like to describe it is each of us has a vessel. And in that vessel, we have a certain amount of mud and we have a certain amount of light. And the mud is negativity. The mud is bad decisions. The mud is, is trauma that's happened to you. It's culture, it's content, it's, let down, it's betrayal, it's all of these 
things that we experience in the human condition, they put mud in the vessel. And you have to utilize tools to get the mud out of the vessel. Otherwise, it accumulates and eventually your light doesn't shine. And I know this because for a period of time, the negativity was so high in my life. I had lawsuits. I'd made a lot of mistakes. I'd, you know, I'd gone through a custody battle. I'd had so many challenges that, you know, the mud had just piled up and my light wouldn't shine. And then I turned myself on to the tools of meditation and breath work and sound healing and all the things that we're going to teach tomorrow at our advanced activation and a variety of principles and practices. And I went deep into spiritual traditions and self-love. I mean, I did anything I could to get the mud out of my vessel. And when you do that, then your light will shine bright and you'll sleep like a baby. But the way to do that is you have to let go of that negativity. And there's various tools that we teach and and principles that, that I practice to do that. It's extensive. And now I can tell you, I, I have very little negativity in my life. And when it does arrive, I process it and let it go quickly. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you Mari. Appreciate that. Ryan, awesome, awesome question. Uh, Ryan, I think maybe we'll take, if you're okay with one or two more questions, because it sure. looks like, uh, first of all, I want to introduce you to somebody really cool. So Preston Weeks, a good buddy of mine, he just, he just came on stage, came a little late because he had an event earlier, an, an awesome serial entrepreneur like yourself. Um, he's also Mark Victor Hansen, you know, the number one nonfiction bestseller of all time, his uh, right-hand guy, like his, basically like his adopted son. Preston's, Preston's been on the show too. Preston, I want to introduce you to Ryan Blair. Ryan Blair, number one New York Times bestselling author uh, and billions in sales. And the thing that you guys both got in common also is that you both have a good heart, right? So Preston has his three kids and is an unbelievable dad, unbelievable dad. And Ryan also unbelievable dad. So I want to introduce you guys. You got all the right values together and you know, welcome Preston. How are you, sir? Thank you, brother. Thank you, Dr. Finance. It's a pleasure to be here, Ryan. It's fantastic to meet another like-minded brother who's trying to change the world, make the world better. And, uh, just live a happy life. I love it. So yeah, thanks for inviting me up here. And uh, yeah, it's great to see everyone. Pleasure to meet you as well, Preston. Preston, while you're here, you want to you want to ask Ryan a question? I know you haven't really gotten the story, but um, you know he basically came from from rags to riches. You know he's uh, in in the uh, L.A. gangs and all that stuff growing up, and basically emerged through all that and become a very successful person. But you know, just any question off the top of your head, if you want to ask him something that relates to your business, you just had an idea about, more than welcome to. Yeah, you know, well, I'd, I'd love to, I didn't hear everything you had to say, so I'd love to, you know, learn more. I'm going to dive into you, but, you know, what what's one, you know, I was thinking about this this week, and I, I think these people have these aha moments, right, in life. And I don't know if you spoke about this earlier or not, but there's a second in life where, you gain an understanding of something and you have a paradigm shift. It just clicks, boom. You know, and all of a sudden things just change. And I'd love to hear you know, what what's your paradigm shift thought or idea or moment in your life? I, that's a great question. You know, I've had a number of them, but the one that happened most recently was when I realized that my aha moments come by helping others create their aha moments. And at that point, I realized it's no longer about me receiving a new level of wisdom or a new divine experience. It's about me helping facilitate and bridge others to that level of new awareness that you're speaking of, because it is coveted. Those are the things that, that you know, we will hold with us for the rest of our lives. And those are the most cherished moments that I've had. I've had many of them. And now it's my mission to help as many people as I possibly can have their divine moments as well. Amazing. I love it. I love it. Fantastic answer. Fantastic answer. Thank you. Thank you, Preston. And thank, thank you, Ryan. Ryan, that, that would be the last question for sure. I know we got to get you rested. You got an amazing event, event tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jackie will be very concerned if you don't get your rest. So you have folks, this is the event at the top. This is the event we're talking about, the advanced activation. So if you're interested, click that link. That's Ryan's event. If you want to get to know him better, Ryan is truly a rock star. I mean, he's from every level. So um, also, I don't know, Ryan, if you want to, want to, I'll introduce you real quick to the fastest man in the world. And uh, well, maybe not. He just disappeared. <laughs> Curtis Mitchell was just on stage. He was that was fast. For a long time too. Yeah. He's that right. fast. 
that he is that fast. That's so funny. I said that and he disappeared. That's very funny. But he'll be back. He was sitting here for a long time today. Curtis is awesome. If you ever want to come on, uh, and again, if, he's, if you guys are in the room, I'll introduce you. But any last thoughts, um, any concluding remarks, um, anything you want to say, basically, Ryan, appreciate it. The floor is yours. You know, I'll, I'll just tell you that there there is a heaven on earth. If you do the work, if you do the inner work and you commit to it, you're going to live heaven on earth. You will not have suffering. And when suffering arrives, it will not stay very long. I'm a living testament to that. I've I suffered my whole life through many experiences, even when I was, you know, making big victories and big paydays and doing big deals and things like that. I was still suffering. And now I can tell you that as I've gone deep into the journey inward, I've been able to really understand the nature of suffering, the purpose of it, and I've been able to release it. And I literally live a life like it's heaven on earth. So do the work, commit to it, and be an example for others to follow. We need to change the world right now. The world needs more light in it. And so for each and every single one of you, if there's anything I can instill in you, is just be the light in the world that it needs right now, and let's change the world together. That's it for me. I'm complete, Dr. Okay. Finance. That's it. Thank you, Ryan. I actually, I, I jumped in like three seconds ago and my I, my microphone was off. So I guess, I guess you weren't complete. <laughs> I, I'm complete now. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. Hey, it's Friday night. We're having fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ryan. All right. And, and Jackie, um, again, thank you so much for your support in this process as well. Jackie, as a, club, a clubhouse uh, superstar as well, would you, would you like to add any last moment comments or... Um, I, I know you were saying a few things in a DM. You're more than welcome to uh, anything you want to say, Jackie. The floor is yours. Well, first of all, I want to thank you and I want to thank everyone here that came to support Ryan, to support all of us here in the room tonight. And again, if you guys are interested and want to be part of tomorrow's great event, again, we're going to do sound healing, which is so beautiful. I love when we do these events, I have to say. <laughs> Selfishly, I love these events. We do breath work. We do live meditation. And if you guys tag us tomorrow we'll tag ryan at the real ryan blair on instagram if you tag him tomorrow while you're at the event then send me your address we will send you a free book so again i just wanted to say thank you so much for having ryan and myself tonight wow thank you so much jackie appreciate that and folks before you go as well so that was the event like we left it up here the whole night you can catch it in the replay too so um this is the i'm also putting the link up here to the podcast with ryan it tells this whole story, including everything we're talking about, how to actually get, you know, about information about his books and all that stuff. Um, and Ryan, you're up to 21,000 views already. That's incredible. So I guess people really are resonating with it. Um, so, well, thank you, Ryan. And uh, before we go, a, a, you any any other last minute thoughts or uh, are you? By the way, are you are you going to start coming these fr ne next Friday? Maybe to see Alec or any other Fridays. We'll love to have you back here into the club. You're always welcome. You know, I would love to, and I appreciate just making the acquaintance with so many new people. And you know, it, it's a blessing to be able to be on this stage and to get to know some of you. I know I haven't got to know you in depth, and I hope to be able to establish some relationships with those people that have had some brilliant questions. And for those of you in the audience, you know, if you have a question, reach out to me. I I'm on DMs, uh, generally on Instagram DMs. If you DM me there, you know, I can uh, definitely reply to you if, you know, if, if you have any specific questions that I can help you with. But it's a pleasure and an honor to be on this stage with such esteemed colleagues and for you to just embrace me and, and, and just the, the wonderful experience that I had. You guys made my night. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. All right, folks, can we all come off the mic and just give Ryan Blair an incredible round of applause for Woo! everything he's done tonight? Woo! Hooray! 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Way to go. Awesome. Ryan, you're a superstar. And as Thank the title you, says, Ryan. You're a rock star. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Ryan. All right, folks, so we're going to pivot into our next segment. Uh, before we do that again, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, let's let's keep in touch in the background, uh, Ryan. Anything I can do for you and serve your community, just let me know, and I'll I'll reach out and try to help you out. So, thanks again. All right, folks, we're gonna pivot. Oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna pivot to our next segment, folks. So stay tuned. We're gonna have some awesome discussions. We still have an incredible million dollar plus stage here. I mean, look at the people that are still here. We got 
Diamond Diva, one of the top hosts on Clubhouse. Jackie, I'm sure, is going to hang around. We got Mike, one of the top podcast guys. We got Alex Stern here, folks, founder of Constant Contact, and so many others. So, um, yeah, let's do a quick reset. And I know Diamond was having um, some issues in the background today, so I'm not sure. D Diamond, I, I want to uh, welcome you again, Diamond. And let me see, uh, what's your thoughts? Are you going to be able to, to help out tonight? I just want to check with you. If you want, you're, you're more than welcome to do a quick reset as well. This is Diamond, and I'm here, Dr. Finance. Thank you so much for the opportunity. What an incredible interview today with Ryan Blair. And if you're just not joining us, good news, we're not done yet. So welcome. Click on that greenhouse and join the club today. So we are discussing how to be a rock star entrepreneur with Dr. Finance and our special guest, Ryan Blair, who literally dropped all the rock star gems for us today on mindset, spirituality, and what it takes to succeed. It was absolutely an incredible interview. If you missed it, we're going to have those replays on. Plus, you have the opportunity to tap into the Dr. Finance Live podcast to get the full scoop on all great things about Ryan Blair and how he's achieved his successes in his career. So make sure you're clicking on that link at the top. Um, subscribing to the YouTube channel, as well as the podcast on all platforms today. Also like to acknowledge the club founder, the curator of this space, and your host tonight, Dr. Finance. Make sure you're giving him a follow, ringing his bell, and setting it to always. That's important, guys, so you do not miss a moment of these ropes. Also connect with him on his Instagram and his Twitter, as well as on his Facebook platform, which has 800,000 plus followers. It's just incredible the growth that he's having there. So make sure to connect on all those platforms as well. Also like to acknowledge Noah, Jackie, Mike, and Alec, our co-moderators for the night. Make sure getting each and every one of them a follow, ringing their bells, and send it to always because trust me, these are the leaders that you want to know. And don't just stop there. Make sure you're connecting on their social media platforms as well. Also like to thank our Gold Badge Moderator Squad. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, all for your questions today. You guys are incredible. So make sure you guys are giving them that love right back and give them the follow as well on all their platforms, connecting on Clubhouse, on their Instagrams, on their Twitters. Read those bios. Slide into those DMs and make those meaningful connections happen today. And while you're at it, let's ping some more guests into the room. Tap on your friends. So if you see the button of lower left hand corners in the shape of a person with a plus sign, tap on that and all the faces that you see. They'll receive a special invitation from you to come join us in this room right now. And that's what we want to do. So we're going into the next round for the evening. Also, I'd like to thank the 130 shares for the room, guys. That's incredible. Let's keep it going. Let's keep on sharing the space. And for those of you who are new to this feature on Clubhouse, if you go to the lower left-hand corner, you'll see a button with two arrows in opposite directions. I saw one more share. Thank you so much. Make sure you tap on that button. You're going to see three options. One, to share here on Clubhouse, which I encourage you to do. Also, you can make a comment in the hallway, which is incredible. Number two, you can share on Twitter and Facebook and on Messenger, which is awesome as well because then people on other platforms can come join us. And number three, you have a link that you can use on literally every place that links are accepted. So thank you so much for choosing that option and for every single person here today. You guys are incredible and welcome to the Finance Club. This is Diamond and I'm complete. Back to you, Dr. Finance. Wow, thank you, Diamond. Appreciate that. Awesome, awesome having you here. And uh, yeah, thank you, folks. And by the way, yes, if you hit that that share button, the, the little arrows at the bottom left that says 132, um, just hit that, and you know you hit share, and you'll send it out to your community, and that'll help build the stage. So I, I want to thank uh, Preston has shared. Thank you, Preston. Preston says this is the best room in Clubhouse. I see Dr has shared. She said join the funnier. Thank you, Dr. Anthony Foster has said the room is heating up. Thank you, Anthony. Linnell, it's a billion dollar stage. Come on in. Thank you, Linnell and Dr. Roshnik Epic. So, and many others. So thank you all for sharing. I see some more just shared. So thanks folks. Hit the plus sign as Diamond said, and also to follow everyone on stage, a part of the Gold Badge Mod Squad. Folks, real quick, I just want to make the um, offer that I made earlier when Ryan was here. So if you guys can take a picture, if any of you buy or support Ryan's uh, books, by the way, it's really cool. Nothing to, lo nothing to lose. And the documentary is free, by the way, on YouTube. But if you, if you have his book, just send it to me, uh, share, share it on, let's say Facebook or Twitter. Um, and if you do it on, on Facebook and you can get my attention and just, just, just DM me, I'm sorry, not DM, uh, what do you call it? When you 
attach it to me, right? You send it to me and tag me, tag okay. me. I'm sorry, that's the word. Thank you. Tag me on it. Um, I've been on the mic for like four or five hours, but if you tag me on it, I will reshare it. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to find the winner. Okay. The winner, I will reshare it on my 800,000 plus followers on Facebook. Okay. So that's, that's the offer I'm making you guys the best one, with the most, most books, the best looking picture with Ryan's books or my own. As a fact, we'll make two offers today. So I got two book, I got three books out there, The Necessity of Finance, The Most Important Lessons in Economics and Finance, and The Survival of the Richest. If any of you read that, you snap a picture of it, and you tag me on it on Clubhouse, the best one, I will repost it or, re or share it to all my followers over there. And then I'll talk about it on this on the stage tonight, too. So thank you, folks. Appreciate that. With that said, I'd like to just turn into the next uh, popcorn style. We had a lot of great stuff going on today. I want to thank Alec Stern for sitting up here and and uh, hanging out with us tonight. Alec is the uh, co-founder of Constant Contact. He's actually going to be the main speaker next week as well. Incredible guy. I mean, his story is incredible, and um, the, his accomplishments are just phenomenal. So thank you, Alec. Appreciate that. Alec, what do you think of tonight? Did, did you have fun? Yeah, it was great. I, you know, I just uh, always love hearing the uh, uh, an entrepreneurial journey, but but it's not often that you get someone who's so, so real and transparent about, you know, really rock bottom to rock star. I mean, come on, that's, it's, you know, it's very moving to, to see somebody that can, can uh, take, take and turn their, their life, their life around first. And then second, really make something of it. So yeah, it was great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. All right, folks. So this is the fun part of the night. Um, just, you know, flash your mics. If you, if you want to say something or actually just, you know, basically, you can just come off the mic and say your name. Um, the the topic here is how to be a rock star entrepreneur. So, if you got any tips that you learned tonight, and he, I mean, he covered so many subjects. Okay, so number one, New York Times bestseller. Any any tips or any insights that you got from from hearing Ryan tonight, or just your topic, or your, just your thoughts on how do you be a rock star entrepreneur? And we're saying rock star entrepreneur. We're talking about how to be a great, successful entrepreneur. Who wants to go first? All right, uh, yeah, just say I'll, your name. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Stage is really big. Who is it? Hey, this is Preston. If no one else is talking, I'll speak up. Oh, go, go ahead, Preston. Yeah, absolutely, go ahead. Well, first of all, I, mean, I love entrepreneurship, and I think it's the foundation of progression. I think it's the foundation of you know, everything that we have, great uh, innovation. And, but, um, the, you know, really coming down to the human level of it, you know, is, is EQ, you know, it's that emotional intelligence, that balance of who we are. You know, we need to build the foundation of who we are as people. And if your foundation is weak, if your foundation is compromised, if you have things going on in your life that are distracting you, they take you away from showing up as who you are in any role that you have as a business owner, as an employee, as a spouse, as a husband, wife, friend, dad, mom, all these different roles that we play in our life. And so I think, you know, one of the most powerful things that people can build is the foundation of themselves, is that self-love, that self-appreciation, that gratitude for themselves, because if they can build that for themselves, then you can show up as 100%. Then you can show up as clarity. You can actually have the ability to not let things that happen in the world change you on the base, change you on the core, because there's always different circumstances that happen. There's always different challenges that happen in life. And you know, we have loss, we have gains, we have the economy crash, we have trends that change, we have someone that sues you, you have an accident that happens on the site. It's different stuff that happens, but if we can be strong enough to let those things not affect who we are at the core, the core of our being down deep inside, then we can actually be anything we want to be. We can overcome anything we want to, and we can be that entrepreneur, that business owner, that person that thrives and like like he had said earlier lives heaven on earth to be a real rock star i've seen successful people but you know it, and they're cool and they're rock stars but inside sometimes they're missing too and i think for me 
it's the whole entire picture. So those are my thoughts. My name is Preston. Thanks. Wow. Thank you, Preston. Appreciate that. And, and Preston is actually a living proof of what he's talking about. He's another rock star entrepreneur. Preston has so, has had several multi-million dollar businesses. And as I noted earlier, he's the right-hand man of, of um, Mark Victor Hansen, who has the record for New York Times bestselling author. So that's why I wanted you to come today, Preston, because I thought it would have been a perfect compliment um, to uh, Ryan's story. You have your own version of it, but, you know, having you guys in here more rock star entrepreneurs like alex stern as well it just adds to the, the overall discussion and just proves that like you can do it but it's not easy and every one of you you guys that are in here and ladies as well that are extremely successful um the entrepreneurial journey is filled with a lot of I'll talk about bumps you know so that's why they call it a rock star right you got to get over those rocks so yeah, <laughs> there's definitely bumps along the journey, you know, and, and you know, it, sometimes you take these little steps, but you keep at it and you keep at it and you keep living the dream. And I think, you know, one of the most, most important. Uh, Preston, you cut out there a little mm -hmm. bit. But uh, when you have, you know, these people that aren't in alignment with themselves, they have, they're doing something. Sorry. Preston, you're uh, cutting out a little bit. Yeah, sorry, I kept getting a phone call. But um, oh. uh, yeah, when you when people do these things that aren't their passion, it doesn't align, you know, with their core. Then they're not authentically being themselves. And so this last, you know, two years, everyone's had like a reset time, and I think a lot of people have been more aware of these things. But you know, finding that core and aligning with yourself. That gives you that ability to keep going and keep going and going. I started back in, I call it my past life, my car dealer days, with one $1,600 car. And I just kept reinvesting in myself and reinvesting in myself. And then I could get two, and I could get 10. And then I got a car dealership. And then I got 15 car dealerships. And then I had multiple verticals. But I stuck with it. But it resonated with me. I loved it. I lived it. And it was my passion. But now I've found my new calling of you know, helping people. That's what really lights me up. But if we can be aligned, with who we are, be aligned with our core, that's really what makes us flower and foster and grow. Those are my thoughts. It's Preston. Wow. Thank you, Preston. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. Always, you're always welcome here. And uh, yeah, love to build some big stages with you. Preston's on the, behind the scenes working on getting some big stars here. So Preston, looking forward to that. Preston was actually a main guest speaker last summer. So, and he, he was incredible. He stayed tall. I think midnight. No, actually, I think you were there till like two in the morning that time, which was really, really cool. This is during the longest running room. <laughs> yeah, we rock the house. Yeah, I, I'm I'm here to serve. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, unless, unless I got he family really stuff, you know, the family. But once I'm not with my kids, I'm here to help people. So awesome. Thank you, Preston. All right, folks. Uh, so we're as as we're pivoting here. I just want to um, just say hello to everybody. We got so we got Noah in the house. He's going to be helping out in a little bit. With Di Diamond uh, is is here to help as well. I appreciate Diamond. Diamond's got some things going on. So Noah will probably be stepping in in a little bit. But I want to also thank. Alec, as well, for being here. I want to welcome Tracy. I want to welcome Fred. Thank you for being here. Roland, we got Deborah. We got D. Can you flash your mics, by the way, when I call your names? I just want to see who's, who's here, who's rocking as a rock star. Awesome. And Feetree's here. We got Mary Kim. We got Vinny. John the Bomb is here. Frank, you flash your mics, folks, if I call your name. And Jennifer's here. We got Rex Sykes here. Awesome guy. And Georgina. Rex is going to come by the, at the end of February, by the way, folks. So stay tuned. We got Gary, we got Coach Light, Elena's here, Paul Ray is here, Stacy, and then we got, of course, Dr. Tom Tommy's here. So thank you, Dr. Tom. And Michael's here. Michael's awesome. Michael Fedek, I appreciate that. And we got Kai, Asia, we got Honey Shakur is here. Hey, Honey, how are you? Nice, nice to see you. All right, Honey, Honey's a superstar. Honey, when you, uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance, you want to flash your mic and just say hi. So we got Jill. We got Mary here. Mary's from J uh, Mari. I'm sorry. Mari is from Japan. Folks, this stage is completely international. I love it. Thank you, Mari. Mari always comes and asks great questions. Busy Work is here as well. Jay Curtis and Rachel. And Ka Rachel, happy Clubhouse birthday, Rachel. I just Thank you. That. Thank you. It's been a great year. That is awesome. One year on Clubhouse. Folks, when, you, when you're on Clubhouse for a year, you get the balloon like Rachel has. See that red balloon? That's super cool. So, Rachel, how's it feel to be on Clubhouse for a year? Oh, sorry. It wasn't unmuted. Um, it's been awesome. I mean, the amount of, like, 
business contacts, friends, lessons, learnings. Um, I've cried on this app. I mean, it's been crazy, but um, it's a great app and it's kind of like the more you put in, the more you get out. So um, yeah, it's been a great year. Thank you, Rachel. Appreciate that. And appreciate you supporting the club and showing up tonight. And uh, any thoughts what, while you got the mic, any thoughts on um, what would happen today? Ryan Blair, any feedback or on the topic itself? I, I joined late, but funny story. I actually met Ryan on a hike once. Um, I was with someone and, and he had a mutual friend with Ryan and Ryan and um, his it's not an assistant. I think it was it's a, one of his coaches, perhaps. Um, but yeah, I had actually... I had heard about him from my, our mutual friend, and then got to meet him just very briefly, um, just on a hike in LA. But um, I'm, I was looking at his his course tomorrow, um, like really, really considering it because, um, yeah, as an entrepreneur, like sometimes you get in these, in these little these little valleys, and uh, yeah, exactly what he was talking about when you feel like your light isn't shining. Uh, which I have a lighting product, so it's just kind of like a pun on, on a pun. But um, sometimes I, I feel like that on, on some hard days. So, yeah, I think I might check it out tomorrow. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you, Rachel. Pleasure having you here. So, Rachel, anytime you want to come here, we have these rooms every Friday night, usually from around 6 to 12 Eastern time, and the main speakers are 7 to 9. So appreciate you being here. And uh, also want to welcome, we got Carol here. Welcome, Carol. Of course, Preston Weeks is here. Uh, welcome again. And we got our pit. We got Beverly. Sylvia's in the house. Fly T's in the house. And we got Maya's here. Welcome, Maya. I've seen you in a while. Hope all is well. How are you, Maya? If you, if you can talk more than welcome to Flash Mike. Remember, folks, if I call your name, don't ever, you know, like, pick, don't worry about picking up the microphone. If, like, you're walking down the flight of steps, wait till wait till you get to, to landing first. I want to make sure everybody's healthy. Cause I don't, but how are you, Maya? Hey, hey. We're good. I'll, I'll give you a butter. <laughs> All right, welcome. And then we got Michael D here, Michael oh, Butler. Okay. Michael Dr. Z. Finance. How are hey, you? Hey, hey, great. I'm here with uh, Daniel Gomez and some other people. He's been speaking on stage with Dr. John Maxwell today and uh, I it's Epic cool. Event yeah. in Atlanta, Georgia. Great room tonight. Uh, yes. Dr. Finance with uh, Ryan Blair. Wow. Wow, wow, what a room tonight. Diamonds here, Alex Stern. Good to see Fred and everybody here. So, Dr. Finance, I appreciate you. You're on the East Coast. I'm actually on East Coast time with you. you know, normally, I'm on Central time and uh, East Coast time. Great room, great room, great room. From Atlanta, Georgia, Daniel Gomez is here and everybody else. So, have a good night. Wow, thank you, Michael. I actually, I, I pinged Daniel. He, he, we got to get Daniel in this room one of these days. I know he's a... He's a superstar. He's from the old, he's the senior community back in the day when we had the old clubhouse room. So thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Wow. John Maxwell. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. And we got Preston Weeks here too. So Preston, I know you, you and no Preston, Preston's here. Um, we'll, we'll welcome again, Michael. If you want to uh, talk or anything, just hit that microphone button. More than welcome to, to chime in, but welcome again. All right. All right. Anyone else want to make a comment or thoughts, feedback about this? Um, Go ahead. I do, Dr. Finance. Yes. Hi, Hello. everyone. This is D again. You know, I loved what he said about being focused. Imagine, you know, he stated that at 19 years old is when he started on that entre entrepreneur mindset. Imagine a 19 year old in today's day and age, guys. A 19 year old wants to party. They want to do things 19 year olds do, right? However, his mindset was that of business and he never wavered. He had so many things stacked against him. His, he mentioned his ego, his bankruptcy, his lawsuits, his negative attributes, his mother's coma the violence in his world, the trauma in his world, that that gangster lifestyle. But he pushed forward. He knew what he wanted. He did everything in his power to seek those opportunities and become successful. And not only survive, but to thrive 
And so Dr. Finance, I am so, so, so inspired. And I will definitely attend his, um, his uh, uh, what event. Is, what is he having tomorrow? Um, he has an event, yeah. Meditation, yes, meditation. his meditation. Mm -hmm. I am definitely attending his meditation tomorrow. Anyway, guys, this is D, and I'm complete. Thank you, D. Appreciate that. And D, you wanted to do a reset earlier, so let, I want to test your skills out. D, you want to try a little reset? Reset. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I do not want to take do, uh, Diamond Diva's job, Doctor Finance. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, it's one time. It's up to you. If you want to, just let it, let me know. All right. Thank you, D. Appreciate that awesome input. And uh, yeah, folks, welcome to the Dr. Finance uh, show here, Masterclass. This is the Finance Club. Definitely give it a follow. We're building the club out, folks. So let me just give you some, while I got the microphone, just let you know some things, some uh, things that are on my mind. I, I'm building up a great stage for you guys. I hope you're enjoying these events. You know, as you see what I did tonight, I only asked them a few questions. I turned the stage completely to the Gold Badge Mod Squad, let them ask the questions, because that's what I want. I want. I want this to be a community type of event, like, I, I have him when he's on my podcast. I can ask him a ton of questions. But here I want it for you guys, right? So, you know, Noah was congratulating me. Thank you, Noah. I appreciate that. But I want I want to say, really, I'm congratulating you guys because we got an awesome community here. So if we all just support each other, you saw how many connections we made on stage tonight, right? There were some major connections, folks. I bet you, I will bet you that money's going to be made from this stage tonight, from the connections that were made. If you pay close attention, that's what networking's all about, okay? The connections that I, that were made on stage tonight, there will be money made for sure, probably millions. So just stay tuned on that. But the point I'm trying to make here is that networking is a huge part of business, right? When you start to get to know people and get to know the right people, you never know what happens if you ask the right questions, okay? So thank you, folks. Appreciate that. We got some amazing guests coming up, as stated earlier. Alex Stern on stage will be the main speaker next week. He's a co-founder of Constant Contact. We'll also have um, a really cool stage. Len Lundy might be coming on pretty soon. He's on my podcast next week. So I'm just working out the date with him. Uh, Dan Clark also working out the date with him as well. Marie Diamond, she's a superstar. She's like the mentor of many celebrities. You'll check her out, Marie Diamond. She's going to be on. And uh, I think the end of, well, the first week of March, I believe. I'm just confirming it. Um, another one I want to mention is my friend John David Mann, five times New York Times bestselling author. Um, he is he wanted me to do a special show for him on Valentine's Day week. He just came out with The Go-Giver, which changed the lives of so many entrepreneurs. His new version of it, though, he did with his wife, not Bob Berg. It's the first time Bob Berg wasn't in The Go-Giver. And we're going to do a special Friday where he's going to talk about this new book. It's called The Go-Giver Marriage. So, uh, you know, it's going to be it's going to be pretty interesting because his wife's going to be on stage, too. So they're going to talk about The Go-Giver Marriage. If, if any of you read The Go-Giver, it's a major entrepreneur book, sold millions of copies with Bob Berg. Um, you know, that is uh, that's going to be a really good night, too. So and then Rex Sykes is the last last week of, of February. I also got Kevin Harrington in the works. He's coming on the podcast in March, and we'll try to get him on the stage as well. And there's so many more that I, I, I can't mention right now. I'm just trying to sort out the, the, the uh, details of it, which takes a lot of time, folks. And this is the part of building stages. I know I see people trying to create clubs all the time. And, you know, they want to build big rooms, but they don't realize how much work goes behind these scenes. Like, you got to make connections. That means you got to spend time. Like Ryan Blair, I was hanging out with him for several hours yesterday. And then I had to go and create the videos and, and do all this other stuff that started months ago. So that's just one person. So, well, thank you again, folks. Appreciate that. And any feedback on tonight or future stages, any way you can help this club or this community build future stages. If you know some mega superstars, I'm looking for Tony Robbins. I want them all. Uh, you know, I want, I want Oprah. Bring Oprah over here. Let's interview Oprah, right? If you got some connections, bring it to the community, make yourself useful. And you see what I did tonight, how I connected superstars. I'll do that for you too. That's how you make your, that's how you get in the right door. If you don't have money, as Grant Cardone says, well, then you serve your way in the door, right? You get, you just get in there. So any, any thoughts, um, open ears, the mic is yours, folks. Anyone on stage, say your name and, and go for it. Uh, peace. This is coach light. 
Go ahead, Coach. Uh, you know, I just kept taking away – one, I want to just acknowledge you, your team, and even all the people who support you behind the scenes because it, it takes something to make this happen. And <clears throat> and I think that's what Ryan was was constantly leaving the message of, of in the plight of us succeeding in our professional endeavors that we can never forget about our inner, right, our inner accounts and make sure that that's abundant from within. And, and you know, I just want to thank you, right? I want to just thank you for this, this opportunity because sometimes we don't know uh, what we what we may be seeking, no matter how, what what type of success we have, and no matter you know the difference we get to make, there's always a new opportunity for us to learn something new about ourselves. And like he had, he had shared about just you know resetting ourselves, letting something go from the previous day, um, like a daily audit, and then and just let's go, let's move forward. So um, and and keeping that optimistic you know mindset, which is essential. Any of us that's pursuing our dreams, um, we're optimistic, especially in this time where things are going on. So peace and blessings, and thank you for, for having me. Thank you, Coach. I, I appreciate that. Very, very good hearing that as well. And, you know, thinking about Ryan's story, for me personally, it, it's it's incredible because, and I was joking with him, but I was kind of serious. He's sort of the West Coast version of my own story. I grew up in a very bad area in South Philadelphia. And, uh, you know, back in the eighties and nineties, nothing but crime. We have our versions of gangs here. They call them, they call them street corners. And, you know, seeing a lot of that stuff had the same, same sort of th thing that he went through. And I, I emerged, I look at the face of death so many times, I can't even tell you. And, you know, came through that all the way to the highest level academia. And I don't need to, to brag about any of that stuff. You can look at my profile. The point I'm trying to make has nothing to do with me. It's the point that anybody can do it. I don't care how low on the bottom. You can come from rock bottom to rock star. You can definitely do it. It's about getting your 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 mindset right first, addressing yourself and seeing what your flaws are and ripping it up and then trying to improve on that. So I appreciate that, Coach. And, uh, you know, Ryan's story is incredible. So if you want to check out the documentary, um, it is called nothing to lose really cool stuff. Also, I want to, I want to acknowledge some people on stage that just came in and appreciate. Uh, so we got Edna and Dominique and we got Dr. Roshanak here as well. So remember folks, my offer earlier, if you take a picture of, of, uh, Ryan's books and just send it to me on Facebook, um, you know, just hit, uh, just tag me in it and the best ones with holding the actual picture of Ryan's books. And we're going to tag Ryan in it as well and get him involved. And then I will reshare it to my Facebook community. So that's the, the offer I have for you guys. Also, you know, talking about another point that you made, um, Coach, was you know, right now, great pandemic, depression. Everybody, There's a lot of people out there going through crazy times. Um, I mentioned this earlier. So Philadelphia joined the ranks of many other major cities. The city I'm in right now, Philadelphia. Um, I know this market, like, the, like I know the back of my hand because I've been involved with real estate my whole life. And I know the people that run these businesses, they're in tremendous trouble right now, especially the restaurants. With, and, and this is not a political room at all, so I do not talk politics. We keep it nice and safe. But the, the COVID card, regardless of, of you know, what you think, um, what side you're on, it, it, it will, from a finance side, I can say this, there's going to be, a lot, and I'm watching it already, a lot of the businesses are falling apart. And within the next month or two, we're, we're going to see probably 60 to 70 plus percent of these restaurants out of business. And it's just a trickle effect. The point I'm trying to make about is that entrepreneurs are struggling right now. And, you know, this is where people are tested. How do you pivot? How do you adjust to certain situations and, and go the right way? I mean, it, the, the, my best recommendation for everyone is to keep coming to these rooms doesn't matter what's going on outside. I keep a nice safe space so you can talk about it. You can learn how to improve your business, how to improve your lifestyle. Now, we don't give advice in there, but we do give information, and information can change your life. If you read any of my books that I dedicated my whole life to, okay, hopefully that will change your life. Ryan Blair's book has changed some many people's life. Nothing to lose. Someone actually read his book, many people. He was telling the story that people were ready to kill themselves. They read his book, Nothing to Lose, and it talked them off the ledge. Just the title alone. Books can change the world. So, 
folks, I'm getting off my spiel here. I want to say hello. Anyone else? Um, anyone else want to say hello or comment? Welcome, Edna. How are you, Edna? Oh, Dr. Roshanek, go ahead, doctor. Hey, Dr. Finance. I just want to say it's 4.30 in the morning for me. And the best thing I can do on my Friday nights is come into these rooms and listen to you and the guests you choose to bring in here. Because what you are doing is improving the human condition. And Lord knows we need it. So I just want to say thank you to you publicly and really appreciate and acknowledge you. And the words that you're saying are more powerful than you realize. People that you bring in here, the rooms that you hold, the spaces, even if you change one life, and for sure you're changing more than just one. And I absolutely, you call it the trickle effect. I, I also call it the trickle down effect, but also the ripple effect, where each person is like a, a stone in a pond. That's just basic nature, that's physics. And there is no way that each of us doesn't affect each other. And as a behavioral neuroscientist, I can tell you we have plenty of studies that prove it. And the state that you bring in and the way that you speak to someone else, all of us were born with everything that we need in a perfect state of love and joy and all that stuff. And then slowly but surely, the noise comes in and messes up the signal. And it's not that we need to gain things, it's that we need to lose that crap. And I really wanted to appreciate you and acknowledge you for helping people to see what they need to let go of so that they can rise to their highest expression of self. And the effort that you put in here, you don't need to do this. You absolutely don't need to do this. But you are a light bearer, and I acknowledge you, and I am so grateful for you. Dr. Roshnek, first of all, if you guys don't mind, I just want to pause. I want to appreciate what you just said. Um, so, so the past couple of years, you know, like since COVID, I, I lost a lot of people. I lost my brother-in-law. I lost several people in my life I call brothers. It's, it's just uh, it's just a tough time. And what I really find is difficult is to watch my city fall apart. And I know, you know, I've traveled when I was 19. If you guys heard my story before, when I was 19, I actually to escape from what I did. I got lucky. I got on a program called Semester at Sea. And I went, I actually circumnavigated the globe, you know, a little thug lost boy from Philadelphia when I was 19 years old. And to see this world in the shape it is, it really, you know, it breaks my heart. So this is why I am here. This is why I'm doing this. Okay, I'm doing this. You're right. I don't need to get paid. You hardly ever see me sell. What, I, what am I going to make off my books? I, I, I add, you know, I tell you guys about my books every now and then. You know, maybe my mastermind, if you want to give my book collaboration. I don't really care about that stuff. I mean, that's cool. I, I, I want you guys to just do something good. But I'm not here for that. I'm here to, as you said, I want to uplift people. I'm seeing society fall apart and we, we got to keep together. We got to keep everybody together and create this positive environment. That's why I'm doing it. You, you hit it right on the head, Dr. Roshanek. And, and this isn't about me. It's about us. So um, I'm glad you caught on to that. And, you know, I thank you. Thank you for showing up and thank you guys. You don't have to be here, but you're here. You're always here. And I, and I appreciate that. No one's holding a gun to anyone's head. You guys walk in on your own free will because you really want to be here on a Friday night. And we're all million dollar, this stage is a million dollar plus stage. Look at the team we had today. We had Grant Cardone in here. I mean, why, why, you know, why are you guys here? Because we all know. We got to stick together and help each other out. So thank you, Dr. Rush. Appreciate that. Can I just add one thing? Go for it. So there are so many intentional and unintentional forces. I'm just, I'm just going to talk basic physics, right? And all the different forces are, are moving people into whatever direction they're going, either with or without intention. And I'll tell you, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. There has to be a balance in the universe. And so all these forces that, and I'm a neuroscientist, and they hire nerves, so they, the best of us, to come in and figure out how to get what they want. And you know, we in our brains, we process all information coming in almost equally. You don't believe me? Ask yourself the last time you were in a movie and you were like laughing or crying or screaming. Why do we watch movies? Because they take us somewhere. They take us on an emotional ride. Yes, they're entertaining, but the more it connected with you, the more it moved something inside of you, the more you liked it. 
That is to say that even though you know it's a screen and there's a whole production team and there's a projector coming in and all of that, you still get caught up in it. In that moment, your body physiology is responding to what you are seeing. You are in fact experiencing that movie as your reality in that moment. The same thing happens when you get on social media. You may know Instagram is a bunch of people faking it, but in that moment, just like that movie, you're getting that message and your brain and your body are responding in like, and it's happening over and over again with the media, the social media, the movies, the whatever it is that you're exposed to. And so until and unless there are people like you, Dr. Finance and others coming in to rebalance that out, to bring us back to the fundamentals of, you know, we're all okay. Just eat, sleep, move and connect with each other and life will be beautiful. You, it is that simple that if we could just drop down all that stuff. And so again, for every action, there has to be an equal and opposite reaction. And so I appreciate you and anybody else who's in here, who is being that opposite reaction, who is being that opposite force, who is being that force that rebalances something as it's falling over, because we are all toppling over. There, and I will tell you this now as a professional, there was a global mental health crisis that I've been writing about and talking about and speaking around the world about for 10 years. Started long before the pandemic. I'm in an operating room working on people who have neurological and psychiatric disorders, depression, um, addiction, Parkinson's, um, you name it. And when you, the numbers are staggering before the pandemic, they were projected to be three in five, three in five. That's pretty much all of us. And the idea that we have these problems with the great resignation, burnout was reaching fever pitch before the pandemic and burnout comes from trauma. And the reason that trauma has become so popular is because everybody's been feeling overwhelmed. And so that's that force that I'm talking about. And you know, if you, if you work out just a little bit even, whatever body shape you're in, has to be sustained with whatever you're doing. And if you do a little to improve, then you know you need to do something to maintain that improvement, All right? Again, those are those forces, those are those efforts. And going to the gym is just pure maintenance or whatever it is that you do. At the very least, we need maintenance of that very little progress that we make back to ourselves, if not that push. So I just wanted to say again, that equal and opposite reaction, that maintenance, the support group, so either you're a force that's being pushed over, which means not much of a force at all, or you're being a force that's changing, like you are Dr. Finance, or at the very least, we come into this room and it's like going to the gym for maintenance. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roshnick. Appreciate you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Hey, hey Dr. Busy. Oh, go ahead. Oh, this is uh, busy. Thanks, Dr. Finance and everyone here. Um, I had a question for everyone here and their perspective. And before I get to the question, because Ryan uh, said something that was pretty accurate and right on time. So thank you for this uh, whole space is that he said when we we will constantly face the same challenges until we learn the lesson. And I think self actualizing or self realizing whatever the word is, I'm realizing that one of my flaws is keeping people around longer than they should be around because I think I can, like things will change or like I can change them. So I'm curious from everybody up here, your perspective on how to learn that lesson of, um, like what is the lesson I need to learn, I guess, from keeping people on too long to even to the point where it becomes, it harms me, if that makes sense. I'll take a stab at that if anyone else doesn't uh, mind. This is Preston. Um, you know, I, I think one of the most important things they say, you know, become, you become who you surround yourself with. And there's that saying, I forgot who came up with it. I think it was Charlie, uh, what's his name? But uh, they say the five books you read and the five people you spend, or are you going to be the same person in five years from now, except for the books you read and the five people you spend the most time with. And it's, it's so true. I used to believe that I was stronger than this concept as a younger kid. And 
I surrounded myself with people that I thought I was lifting up or I thought I could be an example to. And hindsight taught me that they were holding me back. And the moment I learned that and I removed those people from my life and I replaced them with the people that I want to be like, not even the people that are at my level, but where I want to be, the projection of the future, it changed everything. So those are my thoughts. This is Preston. Thank you, Preston. And, and Nune, I believe you had uh, a question as well. Th- uh, thank you. Appreciate That was a great question, Busy Work. Does that, does that help? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Busy Works. Nune? Hey, Dr. Finance. I must be the last person in this room to have discovered the treasure of your podcasts on um, YouTube. And I thought, and I still haven't made my way to Facebook, and I intend to right after this. And I thought your podcasts were the same, basically the same as the conversations in the Friday night room, but they're not. (laughs) And you have a vault of information by amazing heavy hitters. So if, if I am the last one, I feel bad for myself, but I'm glad I did discover your vault. <laughs> and um, if I'm not the last one, if there, if there are other people who haven't been there yet, I highly recommend it. And y- y- you won't be the same. Thank you. I'm complete. Thank you, Nune. Appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, I mean, basically everything I said earlier, and I extended to that as well. I mean, even go back to the books. The first time, I, my first book, The Necessity of Finance, I was a university professor. And, and I wrote it to help my students. That's why I wrote that book. And every other book after that, I started writing for different reasons, science or whatnot. But the podcast, I made that for everyone. Like, as I progressed through it, I realized that I have a duty. When, when people started saying that I have a skill set, I didn't realize I even had. And this is me figuring it out myself. Um, I'm like, okay, well, then I, I have a duty to do this. And people like, you know, Dr. Dennis Waitley, almost three hours. Les Brown, over two hours. Ryan Blair, over two hours. I'm here serving, trying to dig to the deepest questions because I want people to understand their story. And I want to get that message out. So that's why I do that. Thank you, Nune. I appreciate that. All right, folks. I'm going to actually, um, if we have maybe one or two more points left, and then I'm going to turn it over to Diamond. And if Diamond, if Diamond is busy, then we'll turn it over to Noah um, as, as well. But I, I want to just get maybe one or two more points before I turn it over. Any, anyone else want to want to comment? Want to add any other anything else to our discussion? Michael, yeah, Michael, you've been quiet. How are you, Michael? I love that background. Thank you. Um, that was uh, Dr. Laura. I'm oh, sorry, Laura Frank Bernard gave me that background. Thank you. Um, I was uh, like really impressed with the the conversation tonight. Like really liked Ryan. I mean, all of your interviews are amazing. Just like the lovely lady said before, uh, in Canada, no matter, you know, um, what I'm doing for my inner work, it's been really challenging, you know, and I don't want to bring up any politics or anything, but it has been challenging to function, uh, you know, in this environment to, um, to do things, to get better off financially. That would be the best way to put it. And um, so I really appreciate coming to this room because like I I am doing a lot of work on my mindset, but there's a lot of stuff going on still that I feel is uh, we don't talk about enough like that doctor talked about it a bit. And I think there are like unspoken things that are not dealt with that uh, like, you know, she talked about trauma. well, I think we're going through a global trauma and, uh, and, and to get that mindset on correctly and, and functioning in a positive manner and being proactive in a way that's contributing to the benefit. So it's win-win of everybody. Um, a lot of people don't see it like that. So I do, but um, and I, I'm, you know, trying to do my best and I don't even like saying the word tries, but, but some, you know, I, there's some things that we're dealing with we haven't talked about and so it's really good to come in this room and 
and just get reset in, with that mindset that we need to work on every day and become strong. And I think a lot of people are blind to what it is that they need to deal with. Or And the second thing is, um, I don't want to say the word how, there's a lot of solutions here. A lot of people don't do it. A lot of people don't do the things they need to do to to work through that. And it isn't easy. I would just say I'm just going through that process myself of working through the things, uh, sticking out in it. And, it. and I feel like it's like I'm getting hit with a lot of ton of bricks <laughs> as I'm going through it. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say. Thanks. I re really appreciate this room. Dr. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who, who's that? It's Rex. I'd like to respond. Oh, oh yeah. Just, just a second, Rex. Just want, just want to add to um, what Michael said. So, so Michael, I respect that. And I completely appreciate you, man. Yeah, I got a lot of uh, friends who are in Canada and they're telling me, you know, I, you think it's bad here in the U.S. and in Canada. It's just, you guys are, I feel, <laughs> I have a, my heart goes out to you. Let's put it like that. I know you're, you're a lot of you, a lot of you are in lockdown and, whatnot. I mean, there's they even got the five person rule they're enforcing in the house. So my heart goes out to you. And really the title of this room could, could, could also be relevant to today is how to be a rock star entrepreneur in the great pandemic depression. So how do you, how do you do what you do normally and then do it in this environment? Now let's see if you're really a rock star now. Right. So Michael, my heart goes out to you. You know, all I can say is just keep, keep your head up. I appreciate you being here and supporting Rex. You're up. Go ahead, Rex. Oh, thank you, Dr. Fine. It's, you know, it's, it's a, I would venture this, and, and it was a beautiful room tonight. There were so many impressive people in the room, and, and Ryan really brought, brought, you know, great game and added incredible value to all of us um, to address circumstances. Um, I've, I've studied Napoleon Hill since I was 11 years old. I've been teaching it for over 40 years, and other mindset leaders and, 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 and thing, and, and I'm sorry, and other leaders and from ancient times to present day. And what you heard Ryan say and what Napoleon Hill would say and what Robert Collier would say and what Neville Goddard would say is, is something that most of us today don't practice. And that's the reason why there's only one or 2% of the people who are truly, truly successful in the world. And I don't mean the 1%, the, the greeter, greedy upper echelon. I mean that far, far, far fewer people do what they need to do in order to get ahead in life. They know what they should do. A lot of them will say, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. I don't know where to get the resources or what, but, but we really typically do. That's why when I talked to him, I said, what, what not to do, because he's telling you what to do. So what not to do? Well, he said, don't be distracted, you know, focus on what you need to do and then pretty much do it. And that's, and that's always been the case. The inner work is the important work. The mindset work, the heart work is the, it, that's why he meditates. I mean, think about that for a second. He, he spends a lot of time. He talks about being working on himself and his inner work. But the one thing that you didn't hear too much come from his mouth were excuses, whines, complaints and stuff, you know, and he had incredible hardship in his life. And in spite of that, he did really well. And that's true for all of us. Our hardships, the circumstances, the world events, the politics, the religion, the parents, the whole school, everything, pandemic, is there for us to steal our will and to steal our mind and to put in place our heart so that we can move forward. If we look at every circumstance, event, or person as a challenge, as something that we just can't handle or deal with, we, will, we won't get anywhere. The lesson from Napoleon Hill was this, if you can, if you can con conceive it, and then bring yourself to believe it, you can achieve it. But he had something very important in all that. And that was, it's gotta be really, really important to you. And then you have to develop the certainty that you will do it. Not that circumstances will change and not that anyone will do it for you. Faith is not in an outer God or in, or in something else. It's the faith that you will accomplish what you set out to do and you will persist until you get it done. And in the book, he has story after story after story of people who encountered enormous odds or enormous circumstances, whether it's three feet for gold or the little girl who wanted 50 cents and the guy was going to beat her, you know, for it, or um, Edward Barnes or the Wright brothers or his own child who was born without any hearing apparatus whatsoever inside his skull. He has example after example of people who, 
who overcame hardship because they 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 essentially followed what he was telling you to do and that is is to develop your mindset and develop the feelings of certainty and passion to carry you through anything and everything that would be a challenge and to understand that inside of every hardship is opportunity and we all know and i'm going to wrap it up with this we all know that right now in the pandemic billionaires are being created and millionaires are being created and people are price gouging and people are doing all sorts of things and then there are the rest of the people who go you know what i don't know what to do and i don't know if i can do it and you know circumstances are tough he said something really important when i asked him i said so if you lose it all what what say you and he said you know what i've developed the skills so that if i lost it again i don't even really worry about it because i know i can do it again And that's what most other people who aren't in his position don't do yet. They don't develop that skill set. And that's what you need to do. You got to stop being distracted. Got to stop excusing and whining and complaining and blaming and all that good stuff. Focus on developing the skills that first, the mental skill set, the heart and will and and backbone, you know, skill set, those abilities. And then and then and then once you do that, you'll have a talent base that will last you the rest of your life. So come what may. If it's all taken away tomorrow, you can do it all over again. You might not want to or like to or, you know, but you could. So so the more we do, the more we can do. And if you just listen to what he said and you don't apply anything that he said, then nothing will change. Information doesn't change you until it's applied. The proper fruit of knowledge is application. So with that in mind, take to heart what, what's been offered to you from all the thought leaders tonight put it into practice and you'll transform your life. And with that, I'm Rex. Rex, that was an incredible summary and additional commentary. I, I got to say, I mean, and, and it's so true. Like it doesn't matter what Ryan said or what you learned. We had so many amazing people on stage. And I, if you don't use it, then what good was it? Right. At least take something and apply it. Walk away from the stage tonight and do something about it. Go change your life. That's why we're all here, folks. We're all here to help you guys. We're not giving advice. We're just giving information, but this information can change your life. So thank you, Rex. I appreciate that. If and change your life, if you let it change your life. So it's up to you to act. Thank you, Rex. All right. I just want to say hello to two uh, two new folks that just came in as well. We got Dominique here and Christine. I want to say hello to you guys. And then I'm going to turn it over in just a little bit. So Dominique, you want to say hi? How are you, Dominique? If you're available. And Christine, welcome, Christine. Christine's also from Canada. So welcome, Christine. Hey, Dr. Finance and everybody else. So wonderful to see you all. I'm so sorry that I missed your room. I've been uh, incredibly busy having lost a uh, co-founder in one of my businesses this week, but it was a very positive thing. It just uh, set me into a bit of a tailspin. I had to uh, amp up and uh, step up to the plate. So I'm glad to be here and I'm I'm getting that I really missed a, a fantastic room, but I'm I'm hearing everybody's comments and listening and, and so appreciative of all of you being here and sharing uh, the knowledge that you got tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Christine, appreciate you. And let, thank you for being here. Dominique, you're more than welcome to, to say, if you're available, you wanna say hello? Okay, whenever you're ready, Dominique. All right, so also Luz Deli is here. That's Michael Gerber's um, wife. Michael Gerber wrote, wrote the E-Myth, so she's Miss E-Myth. Luz Deli, I'm inviting you to the stage. I'm actually at the tail end, Luz Deli. I've been on this mic probably six-plus hours. We had a we had a little uh, show, pre-show before this, too, which I ran for a couple hours. Gave about half the podcast episode there. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm about to turn it over. But Luz Deli, if you ever want to come up to the stage, say hello. we got an amazing community here. Folks, say hello to Luz Deli. We also had Glenn Morshower in the audience today. Incredible. Glenn Morshower, we had, uh, nobody talked about it. John Ledgerary was here today. You know, uh, he's the CEO of Sprint and Grant Cardone and just so many amazing people. Alex Stern's still here. So uh, welcome, Luz Deli. How are you? I'm awesome, sir. How are you? I'm very well. I'm, I'm glad you're here. We haven't seen you in a few weeks. I was getting nervous. <laughs> I know everybody's <laughs> saying, where are you? What are you doing? Well, I just want to let you know, we've been working on our new product and we're launching it on Monday and it's been 15, 17 hour uh, days of creation with the whole team. So we've had to just everything and everyone is out of our sphere other than what we're doing. So I'll be coming back in the next couple of weeks, I promise. 
Okay, no worries. And Luz Del, and I'm, I'm sure you know, it's just remind me, we're doing this, we're doing the Friday night rooms in my own clubs now, but but the, the finance club became the, f- the flagship room. So most of the time we'll do it in here. Uh, we'll have these rooms. We, we got amazing speakers. We had Ryan Blair tonight, who's number one New York Times bestselling author. Um, I believe I believe your husband, he was a number one, uh, was he a New York Times bestselling author too? I, I can't remember. Michael, oh, yeah, Michael. two decades. Two decades in a row uh, <laughs> with the Emith Revisited. Wow. Folks, Emith <laughs> has changed the lives of so many people. Luz Deli and her husband's been here before on her stage. Emith, um, I actually met Michael through Ivan. Ivan Meisner, who's the head mm-hmm. of BNI, and he introduced us all. And and Ivan read Michael's book, and it changed his life. Talking about books changed his life. And the largest business network organization in the world that's ever existed from Ivan Meisner came from the mind of, uh, well, came from reading the book E-Myth, which was uh, Luz Delia's husband, Michael. So incredible how books can change people's lives. So, right, Luz Delia? Yeah, definitely. And you know, one thing, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, one of the things I met JB, actually, I believe on your platform, JB Owens, and uh, she wrote that book with Les Brown, who's one of my all time buddies. He used to be my reflexology client back then. Um, anyway, she and I are going to be working on a beautiful project called Creating a New Book called The EMF Experience, because as you know, Michael has touched the lives of tens of hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. There are a lot of EMF businesses out there. So we'll be writing amazing stories from all of these people that have these businesses. So if you know of anybody who has written a book uh, or who has created an EMF business, you should have them get in in touch with me. Thank you, Luz Delia. And if you don't mind, I just want to highlight something, folks. These stages have... So many things have happened here, connections of all <laughs> sorts that we don't know. Like, like, right? Like, I was introducing, you know, Ryan to some amazing people. Now, Preston Weeks is on stage now. Uh, Alex, well, Alex Stern, you know, you just don't know where these connections can lead. So, Luz Delia and JB Owen were, I believe, were introduced on my stage probably three mm-hmm. months ago. And here they are writing a book together. Incredible. <laughs> 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 yeah, she's, she's really great. And there are other amazing women that I have met here, like Diamond and uh, Terry and Angela and a whole bunch of amazing, amazing women that are Dimple. I mean, just Noah. I mean, just great, great, great women. Uh, and I love working with women and children, of course. So, of course, I am um, tickle pink to be able to connect with powerful women and women that are in their power and really committed to the transformation of this world, our women and our children. Love you, Luz. Who's this? That's Diamond. Diamond, (laughs) hey, Diamond, sweetheart. You'll hear from me soon. She's being quiet tonight. She's being quiet. This is Diamond. (laughs) I love that tone, I love that, I love that. Well, listen, I just had to stop for a minute because I told you I would come. I love you all and you will be hearing from me. Let me know where you will be next and I will be in touch with all of you and share with you where our webinar is going to launch and all that good stuff and just amazing, amazing different things. So I love you all. Thank you, Luz Del. Oh, Luz Del, they made some uh, um, updates on Clubhouse, so it's really confusing to find the rooms. I'm sure you probably figured it out with the calendar at the top. So the best way to, to find this room really is to just, when you click follow for myself or Diamond, just hit always, because Diamond runs her Wednesday shows. I've been supporting them there, so if you're ever bored, and you ever, if you ever want to come in on Wednesday night, you have free time, not bored, sorry. If you have free time on Wednesday, Diamond holds a ridiculously big room, sometimes over several thousand people. So, um, oh, really? Yes, yes. So uh, definitely, just hit the follow button always, and then and then when the room comes up, you you should get the notification immediately. That'll get you right into the room. So, well, I'm following all of you. I mean, everybody I've met, I followed. So just send me a ding or whatever you need to send me, and I'll click on it and I'll show up. Uh, really, in the next two weeks, you definitely will be hearing all kinds of good stuff about us. Awesome. Thank you, Luz Delia. And congrats Love you guys. Okay. Have a great Valentine's Day. It's coming up very soon. Remember your loved one. And more importantly, remember the love within you. Oh, Luz Delia, before you go. Um, yes. The week of Valentine's Day. You'll like this, okay? The Friday. Yes. It's the 18th of February. Mm-hmm. So we're doing a special thing here. I got my buddy, John David Manning. He's a five-time New York Times bestselling author. 
he just came out with the go give. He's the go giver guy, and he came out with the go giver with his wife. It's the first time Bob Berg's not in it, so you'll really like that. If you want to join us for that night, it'll be. Real, I think you'll like that. Yeah, send me the link. Michael is going to be actually uh, aired uh, on some radios and some just amazing stuff that's happening on the 14th. So send me a ding, and I definitely will come up and join you guys. You got it. Thank you, Luz Dahlia. Appreciate Love it. Love you guys. Have a magical day, a magical week, and a magical year. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, folks, I'm actually going to turn it over to Diamond if she's available, and then, and if not, then Noah. Um, I've been, you know, I have to rest up now. It's been a long time, probably five, six hours if you count the other stage. Uh, so thank you again, folks, for being here. Um, and one one last uh, play on, on the offer I made earlier. If you guys want to take a snapshot of this room, um, you know, or any of the books and just send it and reshare it. Excuse me one second. Dr. Finance, Dr. Finance, this is Preston. Before you leave tonight, I can I just say one more comment here real quick. Um, I... You know, everyone, we've talked about it a lot tonight, but everyone this last two years, obviously, we've gone through separation. We've gone through fear. We've gone through division. And even the toughest, strongest people out there have been through something on some level. You know, we've had this division with politics, with race, with gender, with health, with speech. And the whole world has been focused on that. And the string that holds it together is connection. The string that holds it together is community. The string that holds it together is that human experience that we can have together. And I love this song from Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror. And it says in the lyrics, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make that change. Dr. Finance, I congratulate you for being a man of change. A man who leads a community, who connects people together, who supports connection who overcomes fear, who dismembers division and unites people together on a common front to uplift each other, to help each other, and to do this together. Because none of us can do this alone. Doesn't matter how powerful we are. Doesn't matter how smart we are. Doesn't matter how rich you are. You can't do it alone. It takes a community. And so I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart your dear, dear friend. I appreciate you. I encourage everyone here, go follow Dr. Finance in every single social media aspect. Go buy all of his books. I have them all. They're fantastic. They're like a, a trove of information that will help your life. But I just want to say how much I appreciate you for what you stand for, what you create in the world, and the friend that you are to me. So thank you, brother. Preston, you are awesome, Preston. That's all I got to say. I, I thank you, sir. I appreciate you always helping out. So thanks for joining the community. See, it's people like Preston. I mean, think about it. He's, he's making millions a year. He shows up on a Friday night to help us out and just support the room. That's incredible. Thank you, Preston. All right, folks, but true true to form, I really am tired. <laughs> so I want to I wanna pass the mic to, to Noah. I thank you guys again. You guys are incredible room. We got some amazing stages com coming up. Let's keep the community tight. Just keep showing up every Friday night. And thanks again, everyone. Off the Diamond. Diamond's the best host uh, on Clubhouse. Thank you, Diamond. Appreciate you always supporting. Even you know, even on the hard times. You know, we've we've had a lot of hard times running these stages. Blackouts. The room's shutting down. Uh, you know, the, I had some connection problems many a times. We have people that weren't on Clubhouse. Diamond's always been here. So thank you, Diamond. Appreciate your support. We'll definitely be there every Wednesday to support you as well. Folks, you're all the best. Signing out. Diamond, all you. This is Diamond. But before you go, Dr. Finance, can we all just come off the mic and give him a cheer and a thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you, Dr.
Dr. Finan. Thank you so much. You are amazing. You are amazing, Dr. Finance. Yes, 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 he is. We love you so much, Dr. Finance. And thank you so much. You know, all your hard work does not go unnoticed. Um, guys, if you haven't tapped in with Dr. Finance yet, make sure you're giving him that follow and ringing his bell. So you don't miss a moment. I mean, he truly works tirelessly to make sure that we have nothing but the best rooms. And he has been on the mic literally for six hours plus now. Um, just giving and giving because he really wants to bring you absolutely the best content. Um, so also connect with him on his other platforms, on his Instagram on his Twitter, on his Facebook community, which is absolutely huge. It'll be a million by the time we meet next week. And also tap into his podcast, which you'll see that link at the top, Ryan Blair's interview, plus many more living legends on that podcast. Plus you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and to the podcast on all platforms. So really excited for that opportunity today. And if you guys are just now joining us, make sure you're clicking on that greenhouse at the top as well. The Finance Club, one of the fastest growing clubs on Clubhouse with the absolute best interviews. And I have to say, the best gold badge and green badge mod squad, okay? Like, we have the best people that come in here every single week. And it's all because of the hard work of Dr. Finance today. So welcome, welcome, everyone. Today's conversation is how to be a rock star entrepreneur with Dr. Finance and our very special guest, Ryan Blair. And we're actually moving into the third session for the evening and really excited to have everyone here. I want to make sure you guys are taking the time to connect with the Mod Squad. We got Dr. Finance. We got no, we got Alex Stern in the building. Wow, incredible. Make sure you're giving each and every one of them a follow. And don't stop there. We're going to connect with Fred Roland D featuring John the Bomb, Frankie Nune, Jennifer Rex, Anna Georgina Elizabeth. We got Dr. Roshanak in the building. I hope I said that correct. <laughs> Coach Light Stacy. We got another doctor in the building, Dr. Tony in the building. We got Michael, Asia, Jill, oh. Carol. Preston, Arpit, Beverly, Maya, Dominique, Christine, we got Luz, Delia, Tracy, and Marie. Make sure you give everyone a follow. These are the Gold Batch Mod Squads, the speakers. Every single person here is a rock star, literally. I love that word, too. And you want to connect with them because they hold the best rooms, and you're going to see all the value that they continue to bring this evening. And while you're at it, let's tap on that plus sign. Let's wake up Clubhouse and let everyone know that we are here. So you're going to see a figurine of a person in the lower right hand corner that's a new update by the way <laughs> you're gonna tap on that and then all the faces that you see and they're gonna get an invitation for you to come join us and i see the numbers going up so that means you are tapping on that plus sign thank you so much also in the lower left hand corner another update we get new ones like every day here on clubhouse is incredible there's a feature where you can share into the hallway so you're gonna see two arrows pointing opposite directions we had 136 shares which is Awesome. Thank you so much. Let's keep them going. And you can even add a comment when you share on Clubhouse, which is super cool. You can also share on Twitter and Facebook and through Messenger, which is also cool. And you get a link option where you can share anywhere that links are available. So welcome. Use all the options here. And don't forget to click that link at the top and join the Finance Club today. And so I'd like to open up the panel for a discussion and also have a brief confession. I've been a little quiet because I had an incident happen in the background. Not so fun. And it was one of those things where it puts your all your training to the test, right? And one of the things that really inspired me today is when Ryan spoke about all the hard times that he went through and how he was able to transmutate that energy and put it into something positive and be able to build momentum in that way. And I just thought that was really inspiring. And it was also a reminder for me. And when those things happen in our lives, one of the things that he said he does is he looks for the message in it. He looks for the good. And he even takes a step back and say, if there's some truth in this thing, you know, if someone's giving him some criticism or something like that. And that's one of the qualities that I had to adopt as well as I went through my process of the mindset transformation. And I used to be a perfectionist. I would totally freak out if things didn't go well. And sometimes that week wants to pop up in my subconscious mind uh, when events go like it went today. But then I remember, just like Ryan said, that the best thing I can do is to transmutate that energy into something good. And so I said, you know what? 
I'm going to show up here today with Dr. Finance and all these wonderful humans because this is where I need to be. And I'm so glad that I did. So I just want you all to be encouraged. If you're out there and you're listening, you're like, what do I do with all this negative energy? You absolutely can put it into something good. And one of the secrets is to find someone to do something kind for. You literally cannot feel sad when you're doing something good for others. Truly. I know it sounds simple. I know it sounds easy. And it really is. When you do kind things for others, you will feel better. And guess what? You get that positive energy right back. Another thing that Ryan said I thought was really important as well is he talked about the power of meditation, the power of meditation. And that's another skill that really took my whole mindset transformation to another level. And for those in the room right now who have never done this skill set before, or you feel a little uncomfortable about it, you think it's like super tricky. Well, one of the basic things you can do is this. When I have new clients and I work with them on developing this skill, I actually have them for the first few times just to sit still by themselves, quietly in a place where they're not going to be disturbed for about 15 to 30 minutes and just sit with your eyes closed in a comfortable position and let your mind flow naturally. That's the secret. You don't have to try to force anything. You don't have to think about any specific thing. When you're first starting out, it's just a matter of just having that quiet and peace. And you'd be surprised how doing something that simple can be very, very powerful for you. You know, oftentimes we don't take the time to slow down and do that. We're always going, we're always thinking, we're always planning something. But just taking that 15 minutes of peace and quiet and allow your mind just to settle. You'd be surprised what great things can come from that. So that'd be my first tip for you guys. If you want to look for something that can help you naturally reduce that cortisol, that stress, anxiety, hormone that we hear so much about, that's one of the effective ways that can do it. And then if you want to lift your spirits even more, go out and do something kind for somebody. It could be a simple thing, something that doesn't even cost money. It could be sending a nice note to someone saying, you know what? I love you. You're incredible. It could be holding the door for somebody behind you as you're walking through the entryway of a restaurant or a grocery store. Just little simple things like that can make all the difference. So that's my two cents on it. But what I want to do is I want to hear from the panel. I want to hear from the panel because you know what? There were some really great questions and shares earlier about, you know, people wanting some real answers of how can they boost their mood? How can they make the shifts? I mean, Ryan's does some incredible things in his life. So I'd like to hear from the panel today. What are some things that you do to have that positive mindset shift? What are some things that you do, right, to maintain your focus as an entrepreneur? Uh, I'd love to hear from you all if you like to chime in, flash your mic. I'd love to hear any tips or ideas any things that you do that can sustain you or that you would recommend for other people that you've seen to be effective. So I'm going to check the stage and my app is flashing all around. So you may have to unmic and state your name if you'd like to chime in. Would anyone like Alex to share all flashing. their feedbacks or takeaways? I hear a mic. I hear a mic. Alec is Go ahead, whoever's speaking. Alec is. Alec is flashing. Over to you, Alec. How can I miss you? The floor is yours. Oh, no worries. No worries. Thank you so much, Diamond. No, you, you guys are great. Um, yeah, so, so I mean, there's a lot of ways you can, um, you know, kind of go with, with what you just asked. But the one thing, you know, we often hear, and, and I, I do this myself, and I've done it before I knew the terms, you know, you, you want to manifest something. So you're setting these intentions, uh, you know, for, to, to look for a certain outcome. But I go, I go all the way to visualizing, you know, visualizing it actually happen, happening. So, for example, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm trying to find investors for, for a new company or a project, I'll actually visualize shaking, shaking hands, you know, receiving this, you know, the oversized golf check, you know, of their money and, 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 you know, bringing that to the bank and, and, you know, and then being on our way to, you know, to take that funding, to take the business to the next level. Or if it, if it's a, if it's a, a strategic uh, advisor, someone that, you know, you kind of set your sights on that got to be so great. If we could have this mentor advisor uh, come into the fold and help us, they, you know, their, their domain expertise or whatever it is they're bringing to bring to the table. And I visualize exactly, you know, uh, sitting down, you know, uh, talking to them and then completing a conversation and, and even go through the conversation. I visualize the conversation and think about what you know, we're going to talk about and then shaking hands at the end. And when they're saying, yes, you know, I would love to help you. So, so I, I think for me, that was always something that, and, and the most of the time it, it comes to fruition because I really take it all the way to that, 
to that point. And, and I think we don't, we sometimes lose sight of that. We just really focus about focus in on setting the intentions and, and, and sort of hope we, we get to the outcome, but, but I visualize it and, and make it happen from there. This is Alec. And that's a, just a quick thought. This is Diamond, and I love that so much, Alec. And it just gets me excited because, guys, if you don't know, Alec is an uber-successful entrepreneur. And I love when I hear from someone like you that you use the power of visualization because I will tell you my top three is affirmations, meditations, and visualizations. Those three techniques right there have completely transformed my mind. And during times like this, because I will tell you, my day was like incredible. I was at the spa. I was like, awesome. And then it wasn't awesome. <laughs> but you know what got me through it? I fell back on those techniques. And I had to remind myself, wait a minute. There's a message here. <laughs> Today is still a good day, you know? And like, I had to really fall back. And I was like, you know, this is what we what we train for. It's almost like, you know, you do all this training and then the event happens and are you ready for it or not? And so it just made me feel really good that even though I had to get myself together, I told Dr. Finance, I need a moment. Give me a moment. I'll be back. <laughs> I was able to use those techniques and tap into it. And then to your point about visualization, oh my goodness, there's so many studies and I'm glad we got neuroscience and ability. I hope she's still with us. There's so many studies that are coming out now that show that visualization has been the key to a lot of things, healing of the body, tapping into the blueprint of perfect health. That's one of the things that I work with my sons on with their sickle cell disease. I've seen amazing results with that and I'm still working on different modalities, tapping into visualization, tapping into that health blueprint. There's this whole new study called longevity that talks about how you can extend your life using holistic methods, some of which are the mindfulness things like we talked about in this room. And visualization is a key component to that as well. And so there are so many things that happen like physically to your mind when you visualize, plus it gives you that motivation, that drive and that clarity too. It's absolutely a super, super powerful tool. So thank you so much, Alec, you're incredible. And I saw Noah flashing over to you, Noah. I was just clapping because it's so true how often we forget to visualize uh, that we just get caught up in the situation or in what we're going through and we don't see the path uh, to the light and the path of moving forward. And visualization is just an amazing tool. And here coming from Alec, um, I love that you shared that because somebody who's already very successful and has created all these things with the visualization, uh, I think we all have to look at like, what are we seeing? What are we, look, what are we um, putting our energy towards, right? And uh, when we really believe in ourselves and we can see it, um, because imagination is free. All of us have imagination. And it's just about using that tool, quieting the mind, even going into meditation and, and visualizing. Uh, it, it's a free tool that we all have that we can totally transform our life 360 degrees. But how often do we not use it? So it's just such a great contribution to the room, Alec. And I think we all need to look and see how often do we use that tool and how often do we not when life gets a little heavy. So thank you for that beautiful share. You're welcome. This is Diamond. I love that so much, Noah. And you're right. It's it's one of those tools that, you know, is underutilized and it, it's so, so powerful though. And when you combine it with the other two steps, affirmations and meditations, guys, I'm telling you, that whole process is going to raise your vibration, put you in the right state. I mean, literally, if you look at Olympians and super successful people, is Curtis still with us? Oh, he stepped out. Um, but athletes often use this tool as well. They visualize themselves, you know, crossing the finish line. If you if you talk to super successful entrepreneurs uh, like Alec, of course, in, in the building, they talk about that as well. They, they see the win before it actually happens. And you can do the same thing, too. Uh, it's a highly, highly successful tool. And it's also going to put you in the right. Um, the right space to be able to create new ideas and, and really make that dream become a reality. Anyone else want to chime in? I thought I saw some flashing mics on the lower half of the stage. Anyone else want to share? Uh, I hear the flash. You can go. Oh, it's Lil Dilly. Go ahead, my dear. Yeah. So I love what Alex said. And um, I love what Noah also brought present. And one of the things that Einstein, one of my favorite um, amazing souls in the world and a gift that God gave me in order to marry a guy like Michael, right? Because they're both 
Einstein in their own way. He said that life is a two part gift and I'm paraphrasing it, that first you see it in your mind and then you see it in reality. So be careful what you think and imagine and dream because once you put it in that heart mental capacity and you envision it, you will realize it no matter what, no matter when you shall be. Thank you. This is diamond and I love that quote so much. I'm going to definitely look up that quote. That is so powerful. And that reminds me um, of a similar quote from Bob Proctor where he says, if you think it in your mind soon, you will hold it in your hand. And it's absolutely true. Those thoughts are powerful. And so there's three levels of manifestation. Since we're going there, I'm going all the way there, guys. It's your thoughts your words and your action steps. And when all three of those are in alignment, that's how you intentionally manifest things. But here's the thing, guys, and this is what Lowe's was alluding to. You can unintentionally manifest things into your life as well. And so that's why it's so important to do things like affirmations and meditation and visualizations where now you're being really intentional with your thoughts. But many of us think things or speak things and don't even realize the power of those thoughts, of those words, and those things guide what? Your action steps, even if it's just happening on the subconscious level. And so once you take a step back and start being intentional with it, you will see the results. You will see how you shift and you're going to see how things start lining up in your life as well. It's extremely powerful. Thank you so much, Lil' Dahlia. Always love and having you here, dear. <laughs> you're welcome, sweet. All right. May all I right. share? Hello. Yes. I would love to hear who is speaking. This is D Diamond Diva. Oh, there you are. Welcome, Dee. Over to you. Okay. So thank you, Diamond Diva. So I create a daily uh, goal. Uh, what do I want to accomplish that day? So then I meditate. I journal. And in my mind, I feel that when I write it down, then the universe sees it. I know it's crazy, but that's the way I, <laughs> I, I visualize it, right? Then I create, I like to create wishes. These are different from my goals. These, my wishes are just things that I might not have the power at the moment to accomplish. But if I put it down, or if I put it out there, then the universe helps me acquire these things. And it makes my life better. For instance, let's say I'm out of coffee. And I say, oh, my goodness, I'm out of coffee. And then all of a sudden, my husband gets home from a business trip. And he says, honey, I brought you coffee. Well, there you go. So that's a wish that, uh, um, that I'm talking about. So I create not only goals, but wishes. And then I love to balance my mind, body, and spirit with things that fill my cup, things that make me happy. And so what do I do is I write um, sticky notes with those positive affirmations all over my house. Like I have one right now that I'm looking at in front of my computer and it says, everything always works out for me. And in front of my refrigerator, I have, I am a badass. So those make me happy. And if, if, if I write it down, then the universe will bring it to me, will allow those things to happen. So see, everything starts with you. It's that mindset, right? Thank you. I'm complete. This is Diamond. And I loved your chair so much, D. And I just pictured you sipping your coffee, looking at your affirmations. I visualized you manifesting amazing things. And you brought up a really great point. And I believe Ryan touched on this as well. The power of journaling. Journaling is incredibly powerful. And I recommend that you all journal like old school with a notebook and a pen. Because when you write it out, 
amazing downloads happen. It actually happens on the neuro level as well. Your brain has a different level of connectivity when you actually put pen to paper. It's really, really powerful. And it will make your your visualizations more powerful. Even your affirmations, if you write them out before you speak them, that's incredible. And I also love what Dee shared about placing the sticky notes all over the house with affirmations. I do the same thing. And it's also one of the things I recommend my clients to do, to have those notes, those affirmations, positive quotes, things that are going to lift your vibration all over the house, everywhere that's going to see it. Why does this work? Well, you know, I'm going to go neuroscience for a second on it because your reticular activating system, the part of your brain is always scanning for information. And as you want to shift your mindset, reinforce a positive mindset, You want to have those literally reminders around so your brain can see it. So the more you see those affirmations, the more they're going to make a deeper imprint in your subconscious mind. It's going to literally be a reminder for you that these things are true. These things are manifesting for you. These things are present in your life. So wonderful, wonderful tip from Dee. So great to hear from you. Incredible. Anyone else want to chime in? I want to add something. Annabella, of course. Over to you. Oh, thank you, everybody. You guys are so nice. I love this club. I love this room, and I adore you, Diamond Diva. You're amazing. You, you, a powerful woman. Uh, what I wanted to say is that it's all starting in our mind. And I know Diamond Diva, I probably have bad connection because I'm driving in the hills. But um, can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you. Oh, wow. Okay, great. So I have on my mirror, I've always had on my mirror ever since I moved to the United States when I was 15 by myself from Israel, I have in my, on my mirror, it says with my red lipstick, if it is to be, it's up to me. What it means, I always see every morning and every afternoon, every night, I see on my mirror that my success is really depend on me only. I can be depend on nobody else, no boyfriend, no husband, no sugar daddy, none of that. The only success that can come to me is for my hard work and my dedication to my my business. And um, everything I wanted in my life, knock on wood, came to me because I believed in myself. I knew that I'm capable of reaching the biggest of the biggest. Like, I never limit myself. How far can I succeed? Because I always say the sky is the limit. And I, um, I just, it always worked for me. I manifest one minute every day. Every day, either in, before I go to bed or either when I'm in the shower, I just manifest. I close my eyes for one minute because I, I don't have time for more than that. And it works. I manifest things that I want instantly. They will come to me within a day, within a week, or even within a month. And I always have a plan. It all starts with my mindset. And my mindset gets me everything I want. I'll give you guys an example. I, I, this one wasn't a manifestation. It was a dream about me being on the set with we lost you annabella okay. yeah. i think you're in the metaverse <laughs> okay annabella once you get a signal would love for you to come back and finish your share. It sounds like you're about to bring us absolutely something brilliant. Um, I see Sandy has unmiked. Did you want to chime in? Oh, absolutely. Diving, you just sound so depressed all the time. My like, goodness gracious. <laughs> you're like the happiest person I know. It's just amazing. Thank you for this, um, this room. This is excellent. I believe, now this is me. I believe that when you're manifesting anything in your life, you have to walk the talk, live it, breathe it, and become it. So I like in my mirror, I have something that says, in my world, nothing ever goes wrong. And I live by that. Because there's no point, to me, there's no point of doing all of this creativity. It cuts you off. And you're cursing at them. If somebody does something to you and you allow those people to trigger you. And then you show your ugliness. Because then anything you want, it just goes to the way basket. I mean, it just goes bye-bye. I'll give you an example. I was driving down the road and I saw a truck two lanes over. Like wiggling, waggling in and out of the lanes. 
And I looked over, I could see him texting. So I continued driving, driving. Next thing I know, he's next to me. Next thing I know, I'm on the side of the road, almost flipping my car. But what I found amazing was that I started laughing. And I said to myself, today's not my day to check out. Today's another day I play the game of life. Because technically, it's not his job to take care of my life. And at the same token, that's the universe letting me know one day we're here and the next day we're not. So embracing every day in a place of love, loving everybody for who they are and for who they're never going to be, and accepting yourself for all the things that you can be. Anything can happen. Every possibility, every door will open. I take people out all the time. And I've been taking this lady out. We go out to dinner every other Friday. Kid you not. For four years. No matter what time we go, 6 p.m., 5.30, 7, 7.30, 7.15, everywhere we go, I park right by the door. She's like, holy cow, how do you do that? Because everywhere I go, there's a parking space waiting for me. But it becomes, for me, it's got to come from the inside and reflect to everybody. And I don't get involved with arguments. I don't participate in belittling or uh, judging people. And when people are doing that, I just love the sound of my feet walking away. Because no argument can continue unless you participate. And again... Writing things down is very important because writing things down, when you write and you spell things out, you create a spell. And with that spell, you can move mountains. And again, the most valuable thing that we can offer to every single person is standing for what you believe and never allowing anybody to take you off of that. Never giving your power to someone else. And with that, this is Sandy. Love this room. Thank you. And I land my. This is Diamond. Thank you so much, Sandy. I see Christopher flashing. He wants to chime right in. Go ahead, Christopher. Over to you. Oh, thank you. I I just I was applauding. That was an amazing share. I appreciated that so much. Absolutely loved it so much, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you. Incredible. And, you know, I love what you said, too, about conflict resolution. Uh, She talked about how it takes two to argue. And, you know, I actually just did um, a podcast on this recently about how people are not their behavior. And that's one of those controversial subjects. But, you know, one of the things that they teach you in NLP is that people do the best they can with what they have. And if you take on that perspective, it allows you to be able to deal with conflicts between people much, much easier when you take on that perspective. And another key to the conflict resolution piece is to not pass any judgment and take 100% responsibility in the situation. And just applying those tips really, really makes a difference as well. And I love what you said about spelling things out, literally, (laughs) when you write out in the journal. Um, That is such a game changer as well. Um, Can't say enough good things about it. And sometimes it's just good to allow yourself just to flow, like literally just allow the pen just and pad and just to write, 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 just let things out. That can be very, very helpful as well to release some of that stress, anxiety we talked about, and even open up your mind for creativity. Now, you'd be surprised how much we have that's literally like backed up and blocked because we rarely slow down enough to do these simple things. But if you incorporate just one of these tips we shared today into your daily routine, you will see a difference in your life. And for those of you who are just now joining us, welcome. We are in the Finance Club. Make sure you're clicking on that greenhouse and join the club today. We're having an incredible discussion about how to be a rock star entrepreneur. And this segment really got inspired by some of the great things that our special guest, Ryan Blair, shared about mindfulness. He is a whole mindfulness guru. He has a very strong spiritual sense and he attributes 
that whole state of mind to his success in a lot of ways. And it just shows and how he carried himself and his accolades um, that he's achieved over the years. And so uh, we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the club's founder as well, the curator of the space, the host with the most, Dr. Finance himself. Um, he dedicates so much of his time and energy to making sure this is a great space for all of us. So make sure you're giving him a follow. And if you PTR, you will see on his profile picture, uh, one of his amazing books that he wrote, Economics and Finance by, of course, Dr. Finance himself. So if you haven't checked out his books yet, they're absolutely incredible. He is a number one internationally best-selling author on, you guessed it, the topic of finance. So make sure you're checking in with him and going on Amazon and checking out those amazing books today. I also encourage you to give him a follow here on Clubhouse and make sure that bell is set to always so you can be notified when Dr. Finance hosts this room as well as the other great rooms he hosts throughout the week as well. And don't forget to tap in on his Instagram and his Twitter, both of which are linked in his profile so you don't miss any of that great content. He also has an incredible Facebook. Oh my goodness, 800,000 plus members over there and growing. And he has the Dr. Finance Live podcast, which you can see the video version of on his YouTube, which is linked at the top. Make sure you're subscribing there as well as his podcast on all platforms as well. So you don't miss a minute. He even has the Dr. Finance Live podcast interview with Ryan Blair available for us today. He did a pre-show. So those of you who saw that, he showed about an hour of what's on that interview. And then you get the full length interview when you click that link at the top today. We also encourage you to tap in with Noah and Alex, Fred, Roland, D, Featuring Frankie, Nune, Jennifer, Rex, David, Coach Light, Sir, Aria, Stacy, Dr. Tommy, Michael, Kai, Asia, Beverly, Maya, Michael, Dominique, Christine, Lil's Dana, um, Annabella, Sandy, Christopher, Benita, and Tracy. <laughs> Give each and every one of these speakers and moderators a fall on the panel. And I just had to shout them out because they're incredible. And you're going to see them in the great rooms throughout the week as well. So that's one of the hacks here on Clubhouse. You got to follow the right people to see the right room. So make sure you are tapping in on all platforms so you don't miss a minute. And while you're at it, let's go to that lower right-hand corner, tap on that figurine of a person in the plus sign, and invite all your friends in. And use that new feature. Thank you so much, guys. We're at 137. Can we get to 150? What do you think? Can we go to 150? I think we can do it. So tap on that lower right-hand corner with the arrows pointing opposite directions and share the room today. Share it on Clubhouse. We're going up. We're at 138. I think we can get to 150. When you share it on Clubhouse, you can leave a quote. We'd love to see it. You can also share on Twitter, Facebook, Messenger, and you get a link. So you can literally post it anywhere that links are accepted. And I just want to shout out to Noah. Um, Dr. Finance, leaving some quotes on there. I even left a quote as well. Um, so make a comment, make a share. Let's grow this room. And at this time, I'd like to thank everyone for allowing me to share with you guys today. I really need to come in here. My last tip for how you can have a rock star entrepreneur mindset is this. Surround yourself with incredible people. Because I will tell you, I had a challenging afternoon. My day started out great and then it went kind of downhill, as they say. <laughs> but I tapped into some of the things that we talked about today. I did some affirmations, I did some meditation, I did some visualization of me being happy and doing all those great things that I've been working towards in my life. And then I came into this room and I shared space with you guys. And that was the biggest game changer for me. And I'm just so grateful that I can come into a safe and respectful space like this. Get my spirits lifted and know that everything's going to be okay. I truly believe, and this is something I hope that you adopt as well, that everything in our life happens for us and not to us. And I do believe there were some lessons learned for me today. I hope you can find some great things for yourself as well and be encouraged, be inspired, and just apply at least one of the great tips, tools, anything that Ryan said that resonated with you here today. And on that note, I'm gonna close out my time and pass the mic over to our lovely Noah. Noah, flash your mic if you're with us. Noah, and she is here. And if you don't know Noah, she is an empowerment and transformation catalyst. She helps people find their unique gifts and life purpose in order to leave a lasting impact in the world. And that's what she does every single day. Every time she opens her mic, 
I just love hearing from Noah, and you will too. You're in great hands, and she's going to be handing the reins for the rest of the evening. So thank you so much for my time. You guys are rock stars. And as always, if you believe it, if you take massive action, you can achieve it. This is Diamond, and I am complete. Over to you, Noah. Let's unmic everybody and just thank Diamond. Diamond, you bring so much energy, so much love, so much light into the room. We just love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just love who you are. I love your energy. I love you. Just you just bring it to all of us, and uh, to be around you is so uplifting and brings you into high vibration that's just who you are in the world and who you are to all of us and just when you come on and you're like hi this is diamond you know you just you just your voice just it's got that energy about it so diamond thank you for who you are thank you for your beauty thank you for your light and we are truly blessed to be in it to be immersed in it and in your light so thank you so much and this has been an amazing, amazing night, everybody. I'm just so grateful to be here with all of you. I've learned so much tonight from Ryan Blair. I took so many notes. I don't know how many of you took notes, but I have so many notes. And what I love so much about this man is how he overcame adversity and how he overcame challenges and how he actually embraces uh, those challenges and those adversities. Uh, he actually sees them as a way to grow and become more more the man he needs to be in the world, how he's learned to forgive, to forgive the past, to forgive the people that have hurt him and actually really love them, truly love them with all his heart and soul, how he's learned to let go of things that don't serve them so he could stay truly empowered in his life, how he learned to accept things rather than try to resist things and go through them and get to the other side and be able to grow and change and bring more light and love to this world. I absolutely love everything about tonight and I hope you all just had the most incredible evening. It's been an incredible, powerful room. And I want to just continue this conversation. Uh, one of the things that he said tonight was the business is building me. I'm not building the business. I love that when he said that, because if we embrace the opportunity to be a business owner, if we embrace the opportunity of the challenges, the opportunity of the growth and the opportunity in every situation, we get to build ourselves into a greater being, into a stronger being, into a more powerful being. So I just love what he said and I want to keep the conversation going. There's so many nuggets. I could sit here and just read you all my notes because they're being amazing. But I want to hear from all of you. I want to hear what you have to say, what you want to bring to the conversation tonight. So go ahead and flash your mic and let's open up the conversation. Um, any of you that haven't spoken yet, or if you've even spoken, you want to add more, let me see who's flashing their mic. Um, and if I can't see your flashing the mic, just unmic and say your name and go ahead and add to the conversation. Nune, are you there, beautiful? Hey, Noah. I would I love to hear from my beautiful friend. Um, I, I would love to share a thought, and this is my appreciation of you, Diamond, and Dr. Finance, the community building aspect of this room is so special. And I, I'm, I'm emotionally touched by it. And I just wanted to say, I'm so appreciative of your friendship. And I, I, I feel because it started from this room that there, there is a level of understanding and like diamond use the word respect and I, I i would like to add maybe even admiration because there are so many amazing people who are in this room and i just i don't know i think maybe when the friendships are rooted in a culture that is solid and respectful brilliant rich with culture and dedication hard work and the money doesn't hurt but it's really an extension into the real world 
that's making a difference. So not just the conversations in this room or the podcasts or things on record, but things that aren't even captured that are lifelong. So I just wanted to thank you. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you, Diamond. Thank you, Dr. Finance. I'm handing the mic back over to you, Noah. Thank you, Nuna. Thank you so much. And I'm hopefully they're hearing you and your beautiful words and contribution. And thank you for who you are and what you bring to this room. So we couldn't do it without all of you. You all make a difference. And uh, it's so exciting to be together. Um, so he also said that we are here for the challenges, to extract the lessons from the challenge. Otherwise, it will keep showing up in your life. So we, ha we are here to break cycles. We are not here to continue creating the same things over and over again. We are here to, to shift, change, basically, and recreate ourselves. And that's the constant work that is exciting. It's, it shouldn't be hard. And that's, he also spoke about that suffering, when you don't do those things, you suffer more in life. So being able to have less suffering is by tackling those challenges head on. So does anybody want to speak on challenges and how to tackle challenges head on? I would love to hear from you that we have a bunch of people in the room. So just flash your mic and I'll go to you, Coach Latte. <laughs> I hope I'm saying it right. I, Welcome. I love it. Layette, Layette, Coach Layette. I'm a, Thank you. I'm a latte now. No. Yeah, <laughs> I've you're a latte. Been a light. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love it. everything. Love it. It's, coach, it's Coach Light, actually, and it's an acronym for Live Your True Expression. So I guess I'm a latte and, you know, one for everybody. But um, on a serious note, right, this is, this is actually a real-life example of what happened. Right, sometimes we can we can be introduced, and it may not be accurate what it is. And who are you in the face of it? Right, will you let that get you know get to your core? Right, are you connected with someone really like wanting to connect with you? Right, and we all have our own unique experiences. So I, you know, in this moment, I would ask everyone in here to like raise their left right their left arm as high as you can. Right, as high as you can. Right, if you could do that, just flash your mics. Right, flash your mics. Thank you. Well, well, personally, right, every, every moment, every, every moment since September 20th, 2020, I've been stretching to do that again, right, while actually recovering from a, a life situation, a car accident, and even standing. But it's like, one of the things that I heard Diamond share, she said about, you know, visualizing something, right? We all have these things, but being in action. So taking action, using our voice, right? We do that here on Clubhouse. So one of the things that I personally did as I was recovering from a car accident, I had internal injuries. I kept saying to myself, as a coach, as a speaker, how do you recover? How do, how do I build myself back? This app was here. So every day, right, I use the app, right? I use it with my club, Optimistic Mastermind, right? So to get the strength back in my chest, right? So, you know, you acknowledge it. Um, just to, to give someone a point of reference, I'm a practitioner of Aikido. You don't go against, you go with, right? There's no enemy, there's only yourself, right? And it's about being with yourself to be with others, ultimately. So, you know, I, I share with that as a rename, let me reintroduce myself as Coach Latte, right? <laughs> but um, I, I really wanna just, you know, thank everybody for this moment. And just remembering in the face of any adversity, any, right, any situation, it's really just a story. And what are we making it mean? And what, what are we allowing us to say about it? Peace and blessings, thank you. Thank you so much, Coach, Coach Light. What a beautiful share. And uh, that's funny that I got your name like that, but that was, that was cute. C Coach Light, I love that. That is very cool and very positive. And you're spreading the light in this room. So thank you so much for who you are and for your beautiful share. And who would like to share next? I see Sandy flashing her mic. Sandy, over to you, beautiful. Okay, so Coach Light was absolutely, that was amazing. I've also have injuries and I have also been um, 
physical therapist. I've also am a Reiki healer. And what I teach people is you have to embrace it. Acknowledge that the pain is there. Love it. And then release it. Like, I know you're there. I thank you for the moments that we've shared. I thank you for the lessons that you've shown me. But it's time for you to find a new home. And then just let it go. Like breathing. You know, we breathe every day. Breathing is the only exercise that actually, for instance, it changes all the time. When we are born, it's a different type of cry. It's a type, different type of breathing. When we're excited, it's a different type of breathing. When we're upset, when we're angry, when we're in the ugly part of ourselves, it's a different type of breathing. When we're loving and sharing every moment with every single person, that's the best type of breathing. And again, it's different. So with pain, you have to let it go. And let actually picture it leaving your body. And seeing, like I have like three screens. Be, picture three screens because I've also done uh, Mind Valley. Picture three, three screens like the size of one, you're dealing with the pain. You're dealing with what is prohibiting you to move on, like things that you could couldn't do and the, the the pain and the struggles that you're living through the next screen is you getting therapy um, stretching exercises releasing it and the third screen is what is your life going to be once it's released the things you're going to be able to enjoy bending lifting it will no longer be a part of your story and no matter how difficult things life in life could be, I'm 58. I'll be 58 in a couple of weeks. So if you think about it, in the moment that you're living your, what we may consider an ocean, because we turn the drops into an ocean, when you become to a certain age, like five years will go by, a year will go by, all those things that we told ourselves, the power, oh my God, this is my story. And people walk around with a story. And when you look back at them, it's just a dot. So when you can let go of the story that holds on to what you want people to walk around saying, this is what happened to me, then that's the only story people hear. They never hear how that story May you the person that you are. And with that, this is Sandy. Sending you guys lots of love and blessings. And I'm complete. I love that, Sandy. Thank you so much for your beautiful share. I like what you said about uh, thank you for the lessons. Let go of the story. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful share. Thank you so much for that. We're going to be closing the room soon because it's, you know, we have the recording that only lasts for six hours. So we have to close by a certain time. I wanted to end with a, what he said at the end was about doing the inner work to avoid suffering. Be the light and, and let's change this world together. What are some of your thoughts about that? Anybody that wants to add to that before we close the room? about being the light and doing this work to change the world together. Yes, go ahead. Oh, hi. Hi, go ahead. Yes, hi, Noah. Hi, hi everybody. Hi, Diamond and hi. Dr. Finance and everybody in the room. Uh, it's great to be here. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, allow me to speak. Uh, the question that you asked was how to be the light, right? To, to change the world and the the topic of this room is how to be a rock star entrepreneur. And I think uh, I will actually answer a question, but ask you a question. How can we not to be the light to change the world? How can we not to be a rock star entrepreneur? Um, my, my answer to this is to let God to be the rock star, to let God to be the light. 
let him to be the um, composer. And we just keep our head down, being humble, focus on playing our instrument. And while we focusing on playing our instrument in the orchestra, and always looking at a composer, which is God, and we will create a beautiful harmony, symphony. And that's how we um, to build a better, better world, better connection. Um, yeah, I think that's the way. Why, why, why see the, the, the word rock star. What is a star? A shooting star, right? I mean, it shines for a moment. It gives a temporary drip. Do you want to have a temporary trip, drip like most of the stars, uh, movie stars, celebrities? Or you want to have a forever drip that will shine forever? We come to this world and go in, in about 80, 90 years, sometimes 60 years, sometimes 110, but we'll come and go. But universe and God's are always here for us. So why try so hard to be that superstar, rock star, or the light when we're not? So let God to be the light, let God to be the superstar. And we just focus on what's ahead of us. The task was assigned to us and there will be a harmony and there will be a better world. My name is Kai, I'm your favorite tailor from New York City. And hopefully one day I'll meet you all in New York. And uh, I'm having a room being hosted by Kenny uh, from Sustainability Room. They invited me and created a room for me to do a fire chat style. So for those of you who want to get to know me, um, not only you can come to my room tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, New York Eastern Time, or you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, or Thank search you, me on YouTube, Deja Vu NYC, and you'll get to know who I am. And thank, thank you, you all, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Kai. Thank you for being here with us. And uh, I agree, we have to have trust, believe in higher power, and we are made in the image of God. So we all have to keep shining our light in the world, making this world a better place. I want to thank all of you beautiful people for being here tonight. This was just incredible. I so enjoyed the conversation and being here tonight with all of you. Um, please um, go ahead and on mic, just say good night to everybody. Give yourself a white uh, hand uh, applause. And uh, I love you all. We're sending you all love and light. Make sure you follow the Finance Club, Dr. Finance, Diamond, all follow each other on stage and stay connected to each other. Um, I want to thank you all again, sending you so much love and light. Um, good night, everybody. On mic and say good night to everyone. Good Namaste, night. everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Thank Namaste, you. everybody. Great job, Noah. We appreciate all you, you do. Thank you. Great job. Great. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.